Right, good morning, everybody. Sorry, I'm a minute late. I didn't realise that. Uh, hello? Right. Okay, uh, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second hearing session of the examination of the Horsham District Planning Framework DPD. As many of you know, my name's Jeff Salter. I've been appointed by the Secretary of State to hold the examination and to make a binding report to the Council. Uh, Programme Officer Claire Hughes-Jones is here today. She's at the back of the room at the moment. If you have any questions about procedure or documentation, please raise them with her in the first instance. Uh, today I'm going to take appearances and give a brief explanation of proceedings before we go into discussion of the matters that have been sent, set out in the agenda uh, which has previously been circulated. Before I do that, I think we've got some new faces here, so um, can the Council please uh, go through the usual safety, health and safety announcements? Yes, sir. Um, there are no planned fire drills today. If the fire alarm rings continuously, please leave the building via the nearest available fire exit. These for this room are the rear stairwell just behind the wooden dais or at the front stairwell which you have just um, used. Do not use the lifts. Please follow any staff instructions. If you have any mobility issues, please alert staff, go to the nearest refuge point which is situated at the lifts at the front of the building. Staff will then advise the incident manager and fire brigade. You will then be assisted out of the building. Once the all clear has been given by the fire brigade, staff and visitors will be allowed back into the building. If you should become ill, please alert a member of staff. Toilet facilities are at the front of the building by the lifts on the third and second floor and at lunch for those people if they, the, we extend all day, our refreshments are available from the Capitol Theatre next door or from the cafe in the park. And the inspector did ask us all yesterday to ensure that our mobile phones are switched off completely and not just in silent mode. Thank you. Uh, yes, I think that's helps for the, um, one of the matters I need to raise, which I'll do now, um, it, which is that the proceedings are being recorded. Um, the, um, it's just an audio recording. I don't think we've got the video link um, today because we don't need it. There's not, not so many people. Uh, does anyone who's intending to participate around the table object to their voice being recorded? Good. Okay, thank you. Um, there was no pre-hearing meeting for this examination, but I did send out a comprehensive note explaining the procedures to be followed and the purpose of the hearings. Uh, I'm not going to go through in a lot of detail every day what um, my normal opening speech, which I did yesterday, uh, but just to remind everybody, in summary, my role is to assess the soundness of the local plan, sorry, the, the district planning framework against the test set out in the national planning policy framework which I'm going to call the NPPF throughout the proceedings and those are that the, um, it, the, the, plan, the, the framework should be positively prepared, justified, effective and consistent with national policy. The next thing I've got to do is to apologise. I'm getting a cold I think. So uh, please excuse me. Uh, just come on. Um, so essentially we'll, we'll have a discussion which I shall lead based on these matters set out in the agenda. Um, I've tried to read as much, well, the representations and the, um, the, the further statements and some of the background documents as much as possible. You don't need to make opening statements. I'm not asking the council to make an opening statement either today and state cases and uh, please try and avoid repetition, if someone says something with which you agree, don't worry, I'll have taken that point down. Um, I'm not um, intending to hear supporters, that's another thing I need to mention, but if the council uh, wishes to uh, introduce someone who's in support of their case, for example, with regard to Liberty Trust in the uh, business park, um, that's they'll be appearing on behalf of the council from that point of view. If you think the plan is not sound with regard to any of the matters raised in the agenda today. We're going to deal with employment, economic development first, 
and then go on to retail development after a break where there's a discrete point. I need to know um, what aspect, precisely what aspect of the framework is not sound and what changes are needed to make it sound. I, I did spell out about changes yesterday. Any major changes would have to be modified to ensure fairness for all um, interested parties. Um, and uh, that would be a, a different process. I think uh, that's all I need to say. Um, we had a long day yesterday. Um, thank you for those of you that were here and your patience in helping to get through the business, but I think it was useful to sort of set the scene on, uh, with regard to the strategy. I'm hoping today won't be, um, won't be so extensive in the time needed to discuss these issues, um, and I normally would sit from 10 till 1 and then from 2 till 5, if appropriate. I'll certainly take a break before we go on to the retail development, uh, which might be this afternoon. depends how we go this morning. Does anyone have any questions about procedures before I ask you to introduce yourselves? No? Okay. Um, can we just... I'd like to just go around the table. Many of you were here yesterday, but not everybody, I think. So can we start with introductions, please, from the Council? Yes, so my name is uh, Barbara Childs and I'm Head of Strategic Planning and Sustainability at the District Council. Uh, Kieran Gunn Jones, Economics Director at Nathaniel Litchfield and Partners, and we were the uh, lead authors on the uh, Economic Growth Assessment prepared for the Council. Uh, good morning, Philip James, uh, Sporting Horsham Council. Good morning, Adam Walker, Director of Crickmay Chartered Surveyors, Commercial Surveyors based in Horsham. Good morning, Suzanne Holloway, Principal Planning Officer, Crawley Borough Council. David Moore, the Horsham Society. Uh, Sheila White, a member of the public. Harry Shutt, member of the public. Ray Butler, Rusper Parish Council. Fran <coughs> Francis Haig, Councillor, um, Lib Dem Group. Peter Ross, Consultant Surveyor to Vale Williams. Lee Shostak, Shared Intelligence. Both Peter and I are on behalf of Mayfields. Thank you. Uh, Hugh James from ECE Planning on behalf of Aaron Business Consortium and Associated Trusts. Daniel Gilmore, uh, co-owner of Bailey Total Building Envelope um, on behalf of Aaron Business Consortium. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't get your surname. Gilmore. Sorry. Thank you. Right, thank you everybody. Um, the first well, the question, I've just kept the same numbering um, for, as, as was set out in the issues um, that we, before the um, statements were, were called for. Um, and we're on to matter 10, issue 10 now of matter 4, employment, um, providing an adequate supply, will the HDPF provide an adequate supply of employment land? Now, um, there are conflicting um, opinions about this, but I think uh, one of the main objectors was uh, the Mayfield uh, Consortium, and your argument, I think, in, in a nutshell, is that they won't, there won't be enough employment land. Do you, would you like to just kick off on that and just give a you know, brief summary of your position, and, uh, and then I think there might be some questions for the Council to respond to as a result of that. Okay. Um, the document to which I refer you to is our written statement on matter four and we're respondent reference 793354 yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Okay. essentially we say uh, the, the plan does not provide enough employment land we'll also say when we come to matter six that the plan restricts the amount of planned housing growth but but which is material because that will uh, the planned housing growth is less than that necessary to meet the district's employment needs so that's a related point for, for the matter six discussion tomorrow yeah you weren't here yesterday but we just we, we had an initial discussion about that yesterday under one of the matters on the strategic direction so and it's coming up tomorrow and I appreciate the, the interrelationship between the two great yeah. And thirdly, 
the plan does nothing to meet the unmet employment or housing needs of adjoining districts. The way I would like to set out why we take that conclude, those, those, uh, draw those conclusions are as follows. Um, first, um, HDC uh, says in, in, in their position statement and their written statement that they have allocated sufficient land to meet the employment needs of the district. Um, and, and their position statement four attempts to provide a link between the economic growth assessment prepared by NLP and the HDPF. And we refer heavily to the yeah, economic growth assessment in, in making our argument. Yeah, I've seen, I've, uh, well, <laughs> I've, I've skimmed through it and read the parts um, you know, that have been referred to, but obviously particularly with regard to the Horsham there. So I'm familiar, broadly familiar with what's in that document. I, I think we're in agreement with HDC that the uh, Horsham is at the heart of the Gatwick Diamond, and the Gatwick Diamond is a very important growth opportunity for the nation. I think we're in agreement with HDC that the uh, NPPF highlights the importance of planning for economic growth. Um, and I think we, but we are not, and I think we're in agreement with HDC that the baseline forecast of some 8,890 jobs by 2031 is the minimum uh, objectively assessed needs. I've seen no difference between us on, on that point. And that 8,890 jobs was the result of, uh, is, is found in, in the economic growth assessment. Uh, I think our disagreement is whether the plan provides for that baseline or indeed for the higher levels of growth which HDC or the economic growth assessment identified as forecast of the economic potential. And I think we are in disagreement with HDC that they have considered the alternative ways of planning for that higher level of economic growth or economic growth potential. Um, and I think we're in disagreement with HDC about whether the employment land allocated at North Horsham is an integral part of Horsham's land supply as proposed in the, in, in the plan or is basically part of Crawley's land supply as well as the market appraisal suggests. Yeah, okay, can I just sort of, um, can I just ask a question or two about that? For you? I mean, um, the, you know, are you objecting, are you saying that North Ocean's not needed? No, we're not saying that at no, all. I didn't, th I didn't think okay. you were. No, no, so we're not. <laughs> We, we, we don't want to comment on the deliverability or viability of no. North Horsham. Okay, so your case is that um, that alone is not enough to meet the full needs uh, that Correct. have been identified in the EGA study, and therefore you're suggesting that um, the market town will provide some employment opportunity, you know, some employment Indeed. space and a new town centre or whatever um, to help meet that need. Yes, but on the, on the on the sort of um, the North Horsham point and Horsham's needs. I mean, I, I'm not. Um, is it, let's put it this way: Is it a strong point to say, uh, in, even more so in relation to economic development, that the the needs within the Gatwick Diamond are sort of uh, economic, not a housing market area, but economic development market area, rather than a purely Horsham based area. I mean, as you said in your opening comment, you know, they're part, Horsham's part of the Gatwick Diamond, it's a big growth opportunity, and really one should be looking at the needs of the whole 
diamond, you know, a, as a whole and what constituent authorities in, in, within that diamond can contribute towards it. We are indeed saying that, and I think it's important to emphasize that the Gatwick Diamond has been agreed for many, many years as an important yeah. growth area for the nation. It featured prominently in RPG 9, and it features prominently in the Coast to Capital Local Enterprise Partnerships yeah. Strategic Economic Plan. And indeed, I, I, I think we are in agreement with Horsham that the Gatwick Diamond is a very important economic growth opportunity. The, the, the disagreement is whether the plan actually uh, realizes the full potential of, of how Horsham or Horsham and Crawley could contribute to the growth of the diamond. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I'm just trying to flick through where your statement, um, I think in paragraph 1-7, that uh, you refer to the amount of land needed um, to meet <coughs> the job forecast between 36.3 hectares and 52.6. Um, now, I'm not, I can't remember exactly how big the business park is. Can someone remind me? It's uh, 500,000 square feet as set out in the plan and the economic growth <coughs> assessment refers to 15.6 hectares of yeah, land. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's one of your key points, isn't it? That, you know, that, that figure there in, in the one paragraph 1 1.7 that you've taken from the EGA forecast is not anywhere near being met it, by, it, the, by the business park allocation and it, that there aren't really any other allocations. That is a key point, and it's important to recognize that the 36.9 hectares is the EGA's calculation of the baseline land requirement, but the economic growth assessment also says provided sufficient land, uh, per, uh, th that there's growth potential for much higher levels of, of job growth and the 52.6 hectares is the land required in the context of the economic growth assessment to realize that full growth potential. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not going to stop. How much more have you got, did you want to uh, say on that? I mean, if that's the key point, do you want to, should we start with the council responding to that point and then you can... In Inspector, I'm happy to follow the lead however yeah. you want to conduct the discussion. It, it's fine. Was well, there anything else you wanted to amplify on that key point? Uh, on the 50... On, on the shortage of yeah, land... the land shortage. The second point is that the... From what we can understand to achieve the baseline land supply or the land supply to allow the, the baseline uh, job requirement to be realized, the council appears to be relying on 14.8 hectares of land already allocated for employment as identified in the economic growth assessment. And my, and, but the council recognizes that they cannot, there's no guarantee that that land will come forward for development. And I would just like to draw your attention to the, the, the final page of um, the economic growth assessment on this point. Um, and, uh, uh, sorry, it's not the final page, it's page 163, para 9.57. And, and page 163, para 9.57. In, in, in drawing conclusions, the authors of the economic growth assessment, we have the benefit of one of them being here today, um, 
Midway through that paragraph, there's a sentence, uh, these proposals, and that's referring to north of Horsham and Burgess Hill in mid-Sussex, will go some way to meeting the indigenous business growth needs of each authority. Sorry, can you just stop? Sure. Um, we're we're talking mean, about the 2014 April, Litchfield Partners Assessment, yeah? Northern West Sussex Economic Growth Assessment, Main Report, 22 April yeah. 2014. Paragraph, what paragraph? 9.57. It's on page 164. That's on page so. 164 on my. Uh, okay. Sorry, I thought you meant said 9.53. So yeah. Okay, I'm with you. And the the first uh, uh, sentence says they yeah, will yeah, require additional employment land, and then the second sentence refers to North Horsham and yeah. Burgess Hill in Mid Sussex. Yeah. Okay. And then the third sentence says these proposals will go some way to meeting the indigenous growth needs of each authority and some capacity for growth above this. And then finally, uh, and the, the, word, the words I would emphasize there are some way. Yeah. And then at the bottom, uh, the end of that paragraph, other allocations and policy measures may also be required taking account of the above. And so as one of the, the final concluding points in the economic growth assessment, it says North Horsham is basically a good start, um, subject to being deliverable and viable. We, we recognize that, but it's not enough. Okay, yeah, well, we're dealing with North Horsham in question 12, I think. Um, that's that particular issue. Um, okay, thanks. Um, well, that's a good kickstart for the, for the uh, discussion. Do, I'd like the council to respond to that point, please, and particularly on the, you know, the, sort of the alignment of the, um, the, the EGA study and what's in the plan. Sorry, the framework, I keep calling it the plan. Who's? Thank you, sir. Um, yes, the, uh, the question of, um, of whether it's meeting our own growth, the, um, the figures that we have um, before us in terms of the uh, North Horsham uh, contribution uh, of 15.6 hectares. Um, in addition uh, to that, so as we uh, understand our position in, uh, in, in the heart of the Gatwick Diamond, the, the position that is in addition to that are the um, other sites which are listed in the economic growth assessment, which includes our um, key employment areas where we are looking for intensification or smarter use of those areas. We also have um, uh, some windfall uh, employment development uh, which has come forward, which has been evidenced recently. And um, that was a, a local firm, um, to just give you one example, a local firm of Tesla um, who are situated in one of our key employment areas in Storrington. And they have um, enlarged their, they've extended uh, their site uh, outside the built up area, so outside the key employment area immediately adjacent to it, um, with an additional uh, 1.09 hectares, which is just over 2,300 square metres um, of use. Um, in addition to that, there is a, a further site um, at Brinsbury which is uh, an area which has been identified in the site allocation uh, document, which is um, core document reference CDSS 38. And some additional floor space has very recently been um, allowed in that particular location. Find my piece of paper. of um, just under 
um, 2,800 uh, square metres. Um, in addition to that, we were talking about neighbourhood planning um, at yesterday's session and the fact that we have been encouraging our communities um, to look at meeting um, a, a range of local needs, not just housing, but employment and community uses. And uh, we know that our, the communities that we're working with are looking at employment use as part of their neighbourhood planning process. So um, the council's case is that there would be a number, a different variety of mechanisms and sites right across the district which would be providing employment land. But I'd like um, Philip just to, to add to that, please. Uh, yes, please, yeah. I mean, what's, this, where the figure, um, what's the figure for commitments then? Uh, I think it was Mr. Shostak said 13.8, was it, hectares? 14.8 hectares. I think that 14.8 hectares refers to the first category of land. It doesn't refer to the windfall land or the, the neighbourhood plan land. Yeah, but so these are schemes that have permission but haven't been built, yes? In the main, sir, at the time of the, uh, when the study was carried out, obviously uh, uh, over the past months there has been some movement of those, but we uh, agree with Mayfield that's an accurate reflection on the, uh, on the position. Right. So that would still leave us, so that still leaves us, well, that's, that's a few hectares short on the baseline. Is that, 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 is, is that your point? So we've got 15 hectares in the in the business park or so and 14 nearly 15 hectares in elsewhere uh, on com in, in terms of commitments so on the baseline there's six or so hectares short sorry two two points there one uh, this is new new evidence the uh, windfall sites and the neighborhood planning sites so we would be grateful if we could See, see that evidence in writing and so we could respond. But there, there are really two, two points I'd put in response. One, the, the total supply uh, or, or the, the, the land supply proposed to meet the baseline requirement, not to mention the other, still presumes that all those 14 point, all the sites that comprise those 14 point eight hectares of land will definitely be developed and it presumes that many of those that that all that land is suitable to the needs of modern industry and many many of those sites as the EGA points out have been around for many 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 years and have not been brought forward because they're not particularly suitable to the investment requirements uh, and location requirements of, of modern companies. And, and the EGA and indeed Horsham District recognize this. Um, they, they are not prepared to guarantee that those sites will be brought forward for development. And there's significant uncertainty around them. So it's not simply that, that we're a few hectares short with these additional windfall sites. We're still very substantially short against the baseline requirements as, as proposed. Okay, all right. No, I, that's clarified the point. Okay, so it's time for you to uh, respond to that. I mean, I'd also like you to respond to the, you know, the, the point about, um, you know, we, we, we should be talking about net gains, net gains here. I mean, and there are also some sites coming out of employment use as um, has been mentioned somewhere else. So. Um, I think in the um, Howard Styles was it? There was a sort of an update um, document there, um, and on, you know Novartis. I don't know how many, how much, how big that is, but that seems to be quite a large number of jobs that's going to housing. So, would you like to comment on those points, please? Well, shall we take those in reverse order and um, talk about Novartis as it came up um, yesterday? Yeah. Um, Novartis is referred to in the economic growth assessment. Um, at the time, um, 
The site had been through, which is a long-standing site, first um, established in the 1930s as a uh, pharmaceutical site by SIBA. Um, over a longer-term period, uh, there has been some rationalisation on the site and job loss. This mm -hmm. has been a, a, a gradual process. Um, but subsequent to the EGA's publication, there was an, an announcement to say that they would uh, be leaving the site. Um, however, their stated intention, and they have been working cooperatively with the council on this, um, they want to leave an appropriate legacy in the disposal of their site. Um, and they are going through a process using a company called Pharma Ventures, who works in the um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, sector, uh, to provide uh, looking for um, this legacy employment use on the site to take matters forward. Um, there are discussions going on which are led by our chief executive. Our chief executive um, is confident that we will be uh, capable and able to work with um, uh, the landowners in finding employment uses on that site. I, I cannot quantify that at this stage. The announcement, the public announcement, um, may be available later in the year and that may be during the, uh, the period of your examination, sir. But um, <laughs> suffice it to say that uh, we have got um, the latest position, which is that there is a retention of employment use on that site. Any idea, well, you said you couldn't quantify it. I mean, how big is the site? Um, the site as a whole is 7.46 hectares. Um, it's within the existing built-up of Horsham Town. Um, it's located north and... Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, I've driven past you, it. I, you know I, I, I will go and yes. have a, I need to go and have a look at some of the... I've done some brief tours of sites, in, uh, um, in the, and I know the district to some extent, okay. but I, I need to go back and look at some of these sites uh, when I've heard the evidence in more detail. Um, yeah, OK, so we're not talking... I mean, is it going to be, you know, more or less than half... Um, the, the site does lend itself to some subdivision because of the, the nature of it. Um, and there's a calculation which was going to be available. Um, but if we, if, for the moment, if we could assume that half of it will uh, remain in employment use and the other half, um, if we're able to update you during the process of the hearing, um, then we're happy to do so. Okay. I mean, well, if you can, that would be helpful, obviously, to everyone. Let the programme officer know and we'll have it advertised. Okay, so that's, well, that's one of the, is that the, that's the main potential loss that I've heard about. Um, are there any others, any other losses before we go on to the potentially increased supply? Well, we are in a very fluid situation at the moment, and, and clearly with the um, current interim arrangements under the GPDO, where office space is, uh, is able to change to residential, yes. that's right. a process that um, is going on. We, we're not able to pick up immediately on these, um, but uh, I would suggest for the purposes of the inquiry and so on that uh, we're aware that that's taking place, but it, we haven't been told of any substantive changes that might take place on, other than in a small number of office buildings around the town centre. Yeah, so I'm just searching for the report, but there, I mean, uh, um, there's a prior approval process for that, isn't there? So yes, you right. should at least get some warning of what might be lost. Uh, it might be helpful at this stage if um, a college from the private sector gives us a, um, a view on this, if you... Yeah, sure, it, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. Good morning, Adam Walker from Crickmay, we firm surveyors in the town and uh, we sort of monitor um, activity and um, available stock over a number of years and have, have looked at the, uh, the impact of the um, general planning development order that uh, has, has recently been introduced. And, and it's had quite a marked effect on available stock um, in and around the town centre. And um, our latest audit um, showed that um, o over a number of years, I don't know if it's helpful if you want me to give a bit of background into the, into the, the state of the sort of the Horsham second-hand office market. Um, or are you it might, I've read some, I have read a little bit about it. If you, um, you're, I think one of the key points is that you know, saying that a lot of the stock's a bit outdated and doesn't really suit modern needs. Yeah. Um, but if you want to okay, amplify I'll, I'll, that I'll, a little I'll, bit. I'll, I'll be brief. I don't yeah. want to necessarily talk about the quality of the stock, but in terms of um, availability. I think that the, the, the town itself has had 
um, quite significant problems that have been introduced um, as a result of being over-dependent on a number of large occupiers, and namely Roland Sun Alliance, yeah. who, who, who downsized. So, I mean, according to um, my records, we had um, we, we have about a million square feet in and around the town centre of stock, um, and a, as a result of um, a number of major employers downsizing and leaving, um, at, at, the, at its height, we had about 45 per cent of that stock vacant. So we had 450,000 square feet vacant um, in 2007. Um, this reduced a, a, a dramatic inroad into that was when uh, the, the County Council came to Horsham and they um, effectively took 100,000 square feet of ex and Sun Alliance space out of the market. And in subsequent years, probably between 2000 and 8 to 2013, we had uh, probably on average about 250,000 square feet of vacant stock. Um, there was a slight spike last year in the uh, beginning of, uh, end, end of 13, beginning of 14, to about 325,000 square feet. And I'm getting to the answer to your question <laughs> in, now. That, That's um, helpful. As, as a result of the GPDO, um, I estimate that approximately 225,000 square feet um, has been uh, lost to uh, alternative use as a, as a result of the GPDO, which effectively takes the um, available stock down to just under 100,000 square feet currently. So in answer to your question, the, um, um, the, the, the net availability is, is, is now just under, uh, under 100,000 square feet. Of, of, of so that's, ten, that's, that's still a 10% sort of frictional vacancy rate, isn't it? Absolutely, but of, of that, the, the, there's probably only one uh, building that could be uh, described as being a, of any significant quality, <coughs> which, which is about 20,000 square feet. The, 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 the rest being sort of older obsolete stock. Okay. Um, right. Uh, so, <laughs> but still back to the council then. I mean, um, we've still, so there's some, there have been some losses there of employment floor space. Uh, your, so your case really is that there's, what, what about this point of Mr. Shostak's that um, uh, some of the commitments, you know, the 15 hectares or nearly 15 hectares of commitments, um, are quite a long-standing commitments that um, there's not been much sign of anyone wanting to uh, actually develop the sites because of the, um, the, the changing nature of the market, presumably, and uh, the type of floor space that was or originally permitted. Any comment on that? The likely, you know, that this, is there any, you know, in housing, one would sort of normally have, say, a, you know, possibly even a 10% failure to you know, failure to build rate, you know, an allowance for, for failure to build. Um, I mean, his point seems to be in, in this particular case in employment that, that allowance should be quite a bit higher than that. Well, sir, I would suggest that um, it's a mixed bag uh, that we have here that it will contain um, in, the nature of, uh, in the nature of it, it will contain some sites that are likely to progress well. Um, there may well be some consents there which have been around for a time because the formulation um, hasn't been right. Um, it's not normal in, term, in my experience in terms of uh, this sort of exercise to make um, a case for a substantial amount. If market um, signals are that uh, generally that there is a... Um, um, demand in the area for a variety of sites and we're dealing here with, a, uh, with an economy which has expanded um, over the past um, uh, few decades. Um, we're not dealing with a, um, uh, a more urban situation where there are large swathes of uh, um, redundant public authority land and so on. Um, so we have to have regard to the circumstances of, um, of Horsham districts, I would suggest. Um, so we haven't volunteered a, um, a, a frictional vacancy rate, as you've suggested. Um, that would be a more appropriate where there would be structural decline in the economy. And that's yeah, and I'm, well, I wasn't really suggesting that. I mean, I'm just sort of saying, just get, trying to get a feel for, 
you know, the, what the problem is, you know, uh, the extent of the problem as alleged by Mr. Shostak and, you know, what, how the council feels. I mean, this, and we are, we're talking about the baseline here. Indeed. Um, fr from your, your report and what you think, um, presumably, the council's aspiring to that, correct? From a correct. policy point of view. Um, um, our, our position is that the, the baseline um, is not just the minimum. It is bringing, we are bringing forward um, through the existing um, um, consents and so on, we are bringing forward uh, new land, so that we feel that this is, uh, new development rather, so we feel that this is uh, um, compliant with the intentions of the MPPF. But we do accept that there is, um, just on the basis of the table 8.6 and uh, 8.5 within the uh, growth study, that there is a gap. Um, it might be helpful if we quantify Sorry, what that. Sorry, what uh, this is give me that reference It was again. referred to, um, the EGA was referred to earlier, but I'm yeah. looking at, um, if you go to para 8.25, which on my copy is page 142, Yeah. Okay, that's where we're. Oh yeah. yeah. That's where we're talking about the available employment space. Mr. Shostak um, pointed out, uh, which is down to 14.8, uh, leaving to a shortfall of minus uh, 21.5 hectares. Yeah. Now, um, without going into detail on these uh, sites that um, serendipitously appear. Um, from time to time, which is the nature of, um, of planning, I would suggest. Um, if we take the 15 hectares or so, we'll, we'll, for the sake of argument, we'll call it 15 hectares um, that's available at North Horsham. Um, by my arithmetic, that leaves a, um, a gap of 6.5 hectares. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was... Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we're in agreement with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the issue is, well, what does that 6.5 hectares represent and how much of that um, can be um, reasonably um, accommodated through the action of the market and availability of sites like Novartis that come up? Um, there was reference to another site and sympathy with Mr. Shostak because he'd not heard of it before, but we're um, more than happy to provide information on the other sites that were mentioned earlier. But we're, we're in the order of 6.5 hectares and um, should emphasise that we are um, anticipating that neighbourhood um, planning will bring forward sites. The distribution of um, employment areas around the district um, are referred to earlier on in the EGA yeah. and um, it can be seen that there is a, um, a broad spread across the district. It's not all um, concentrated in any one urban area. We'd like to point out that um, in some of our smaller um, centres, which includes centres to the south of the, uh, the district, uh, there are sites uh, coming forward from time to time. And that neighbourhood planning and the early indications that we've had from our front runners is that they um, are uh, prepared to take, um, to take forward um, suggestions for the appropriate employment uh, offer in their areas, so we do expect to see uh, sites coming forward from that. Now that's not quantified by us, in fact it's the portion's position it would be inappropriate to do that, not within the spirit of localism. Um, but as I suggest, the early indications here, and I would suggest from personal experience um, in other areas, um, neighbourhood development plans are able to bring forward um, employment land if they're giving the general steer and direction through the, um, through the, yeah. the higher level plan. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, do you want to comment on that, Mr. Mr. Shostak? Yes, Inspector, thank or you. Or anyone else? Yeah, sorry, uh, I'll come round to you in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I, I'm reluctant to do this, but I feel I need to and that's to remind you of the relevant parts of the NPPF, most notably para 14, para 160, 161, 
in Para 178. And, and they set out that plans must be based on an objective assessment of local sub-regional needs, which we have in the economic growth assessment, and include an assessment of the employment land, which we have in the economic growth assessment. <coughs> and planning authorities, this is para 157, must respond by proactively allocating land to meet these needs. We'll come on to the cooperation matter later. Now, by, by any reasonable judgment, um, relying on 14.8 hectares of land, um, much of which is, is of modest quality, has been around for a long time, and we have no real evidence before us that that land will be brought forward for development because the council uh, has made it very clear that they can't. What the council has just told us, that some of that land will go forward for residential, will convert to residential use, and then relying on windfall sites and sites from neighborhood planning could hardly be said to be proactively allocating land to meet um, either the baseline or the higher growth potential uh, forecast levels of growth. Um, we would find it very helpful in order to see if, to understand the council position, if they could advise us or advise you um, uh, how much of that 14.8 hectares of land is currently subject to residential interest and we, it, I think it would be very helpful to find out um, uh, how confident that they are that that 14.8 hectares of land will be brought forward for development because when we asked the reply that we got and we mentioned this in our representations is that they were not, they could, they could offer no guarantees in the same way the EGA could offer no guarantees. Um, I guess, well, in a way, that's, I mean, I was going to say, I mean, a lot of these figures, I think, you know, need to be sort of taken with a bit of a health warning, don't they? I mean, it's, uh, it's not as precise a science as um, we make out. But, I mean, I take your point about the MPPF does say, you know, one should try and do it to the, within the best, you know, available margins of error. Um, I quite, where, where is the 14.8 hectares of commitments? Um, just remind me where I can find that. And is that in a in a list? That, that's in the economic growth assessment. Uh, I'm not sure which chapter, but, but that's where that work originally came from. And there is a long, ex, there is a long description of, of each of the of uh, those sites. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't read some of the detail of this. I, I might, I'll probably go back to that, I think, actually. Um. But uh, elsewhere in the country, sites like those, many are subject to residential interest. And if they're an existing office building, they can easily come forward for residential development. And so we hear from the council that within that 14.8 hectares of land, yeah. some of it is going for residential use. We hear from the council that they cannot warrant that it's likely to be brought forward for the kind of developments that will feature prominently in the, in the Gatwick Diamond. And, and I think, Inspector, you're absolutely right to say that the economic growth assessment forecast land requirements is, 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 is more of an art than a science not to put words in your mouth. Yeah. But that's why... That's probably a better way of putting it. Okay. That, that's why it's important to have the range which um, the authors of the economic growth assessment gave us with the, uh, the baseline forecast growth of 8,890 jobs and then the, the significantly higher levels of growth as well um, uh, as measures of economic potential. And so... Working in that range, um, I, I think it is sensible to say 
well, at least we should be confident that we can reach the baseline level of growth. And again, looking at the NPPF, we should be trying to plan for, for higher levels of economic growth potential and, and get ministers off the back of the planning system. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to comment on that, certainly. Um, uh, can the, would the council like to respond to this? First of all, can you, is it, uh, I think I'm nearly there. Where is this? This is Crawley existing sites. Um, which page of the, um, where's the list so I can have a quick look at some of these sites when I go out? Perhaps if I can uh, provide some clarification, Kerry Jones from NLP. Um, in terms of the estimated emerging supply of employment space within uh, Horsham, that's uh, based on the County Council's monitoring data and it's summarised at uh, Table 8.4 on page 141. And essentially, I mean, we'll all be familiar with the way that monitoring data works, but what that is doing is capturing uh, planning commitments um, as it stands in terms of either undeveloped employment allocations, so parts of allocated land perhaps from the current or previous plans that are still uh, available, uh, but it also captures outstanding uh, planning permissions for B-class uh, space. So yeah, is that, just to interrupt, sorry, uh, that's, uh, I've seen that. Is there a more detailed breakdown of where these permissions and sites are? Uh, it's not contained in the EGA, although we have the data that sits behind that, so that's, we can uh, certainly provide that. Uh, yeah, well, I think I'd like to see that, please. Okay. Um, obviously, I don't know how we're going to deal with that. I'll have to take written reps on this, I think. I mean, the examination will carry on, but, I mean, if, if the point's been made, I'd like to maybe go and see for myself, um, you know, what some of these permissions are, what they are, and some, look at some of the sites just to get us a feel for... I've got to, make, I've got to come to some judgment between you two that, um, as to how reliable a source of supply this is going to be. But just to perhaps pick up on uh, one of the points that Mr. Shostak raised, I mean, I, I think it, I mean, importantly within that, it's quite a large proportion um, of that available supply, committed supply, comprises outstanding uh, planning permissions. And the way that county monitoring systems work is it will only be counted if that's a extant live permission. So by definition, it must be something that has been uh, approved in the last few years. If, it, if that permission is not implemented and it lapses, uh, then it comes out of the uh, system. So I think to de describe, I mean, it, 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 it is a mixed bag because in a sense there are a range of different types of sites. I think to generally suggest that actually none of it would happen is a little bit of a disservice given that um, actually some of that relates to permissions that people have actually obtained for employment space in the last few years. Um, but to, to, to add to what Philip described, it obviously by its very nature is going to be a variety of, as I said, undeveloped parts of previous plan allocations that haven't come forward, uh, but also sites where, where, where owners or, or developers have actually got permission for uh, B-class space. Yeah, okay, I understand that. I mean, to be fair to Mr. Shostak, I don't think he was suggesting that, that not, you know, none of it would come forward. I mean, he's suggesting that maybe a significant part won't. I mean, that's why I'm asked for it. I'd like to see it, uh, the details of that, you know, the breakdown of that, please, um, probably as soon as possible. Um, and the examination remains open. I mean, obviously, that should be a public document um, uh, that, you know, should be put on the website or... Um, and paper copy available for people to look at um, and if you want to make any comments on it please you'll have to do so we'll have to carry on so okay I'll just have to log that as a sort of an area not of common ground that there's some dispute as to how much of that might come forward and I'll have to try and come to some judgment on that Inspector we would find it very helpful in particular to know uh, when, when the consents were granted for many of those sites and indeed whether there's been any effort to implement those consents because as I understand the economic growth assessment that would have been based on 2012 data uh, given the length of time that the economic growth assessment was being produced and the lag between monitoring data and, and, and the real world. 
And so if, um, in a very buoyant market like the Gatwick Diamond and Horsham, I think it would be reasonable to presume that uh, consents that were recorded in, in 2012, uh, there would be some progress on implementing those consents. Um, and it could very well be that that monitor, monitoring data was assembled before the permitted development rights allowing uh, conversion to residential uh, uh, without, without uh, recourse to the planning authority. Uh, so it would be particularly helpful to know uh, of, of, of that 14.8 hectares of, of land, whether how much residential interest there has been in the buildings on, on those land, on those sites. And, and I guess, Inspector, I just want to come back to the question while we're still in the quantitative bit of this, um, that what I think I heard from the council was that their, their position was that the baseline uh, forecast of 8,890 jobs was indeed what they were trying to achieve. And I, 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 I was somewhat surprised about that for two reasons. One, as I understand the way the economic growth assessment forecasts were done, that um, the higher levels of growth potential included uh, some of the sites, particularly North Horsham, that were now part of the plan. And so that the way those, those three scenarios were done, a baseline, a higher, and then a, a further higher, that at the least we should be talking about the, the, the middle level because that's one of the sites, North Horsham is one of the sites that's being promoted so that the baseline job forecast and land requirements um, is, is, is not. But the second reason I'm, it's not appropriate, the second reason I'm surprised is that, again, in, in the Gatwick Diamond uh, with uh, RPG9 and then the Coast to Capital LAP endorsing the importance of the Gatwick Diamond, and as we heard yesterday, Horsham is a relatively unconstrained area by comparison with many of its neighbors. Um, and at some point I would like to talk about Horsham's role in helping its neighbors out. Um, that, that we surely should be going for a, a, a much higher level of growth potential um, in, in a district like, like Horsham. So, I've not seen any evidence explaining why the, uh, uh, the local uh, Horsham district is treating the baseline as the, uh, as the, the economic growth target. I, I'm very confused about this. Okay. Um, I'll ask the council to come back uh, on that point, actually, please. Um, and I was saying, you've raised a point about other, other areas, and I was going to ask Crawley what, to summarise what your position was after that, please. But, um, base, you know, baseline or why not a higher level? Please. If one looks at um, Power 726 of the EGA, uh, there's an explanation there of the, uh, the methodology between the three approaches, and I don't think it's quite as has been described. The, um, the baseline scenario is, is not the minimum um, in our view. The Council's position is that this will um, produce um, additional uh, employment opportunities uh, within, the, uh, within the district. It's not a, a do-nothing um, type uh, position. Um, Looking at uh, the two other op uh, the options which were modelled across the economic growth uh, in the economic growth assessment across the, the area, um, there is reference quite uh, accurate to say that um, in the higher growth scenario it does mention um, some of the consideration of employment sites coming through the emerging um, portion district planning framework. Um, 
but it's also um, our case that it's uh, the North Horsham site in particular um, is required to carry through on the, the baseline scenario as well. So that's our position um, that there is economic growth in the area which we are making provision for with the one strategic site which is the North Horsham site um, but as we are, have been discussing there we anticipate other smaller sites coming forward. Yes but you've also identified I was just looking at table 6.5 on page 101 uh, where you've got some other potential sites actually with some quite large sites there which um, uh, you've ranked um, none of them well you've actually ranked Nutland North of Horsham as average <laughs> um, as a site <laughs> rather than a good site um, um, but that's and land at Ho Hoppo Southwater so um, uh, as well as Broadbridge Heath so there, there are others there which presumably would have the potential um, to um, go for the higher level scenario but they haven't been allocated um, where do we find and sort of the analysis of that why that's not taking place uh, there's no, no analysis has been provided in, in the plan um, we can cover the points now if you wish um, land north of Horsham at the time that the EGA was uh, carried out, there were um, no assumptions made there about the, particularly the access um, and infrastructure issues relating to the site. Um, the council will um, bring, bringing forward evidence that, which you've already seen to suggest how we anticipate that's going to be met. Perhaps if I can just yeah, we can deal with some of that uh, next week. If, um, I, if I could just yeah. add on the, the way the scoring works. Um, essentially, the site assessment process is based on, if you like, assessing the intrinsic qualities of a site as it stands at the moment without, in a sense, trying to understand what could change in the future. So uh, it's perfectly possible that with the appropriate infrastructure put in place and so on and so forth, that the, the, the score of land at North of Horsham or indeed any others could change but in a sense what the to do it on a comparative basis what the EGA does is assess the intrinsic qualities of the site as it stands at the moment okay uh, sorry you finished I was going to point out that generally the other sites um, um, have difficulties the next site down has uh, an ANOB issue which is a, clearly a, a constraint um, what south water no, um, I'm looking at um, Paris 6.64 which is land at New House, New House Farm oh right sorry well there were the table I've got there's Hoppo south water Broadbridge Farm it's the fourth item in that table. Yeah, the fourth so. item. Oh, right. Sorry, I thought you were going to go, go through them in all. In, um, I mean, is this a ranking or not? Effectively. This is, this or, or are is, they this just, is not a ranking. No, no they're just, no. that's what you consider. So, there's a very yeah. large area at Brinsbury <laughs> Centre, Chichester College. Um, I don't know that, but that seems. Yeah, can, perhaps I can, can help there, sir, because that was partly what I was referring to um, when I was given a specific example of a local brewery that um, have recently gained permission on that particular site. I think perhaps if I can just draw, draw back slightly, um, we're talking here about a, 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 a six hectare gap, possibly more, given um, the, the comments that have, have come from around the table. And the council's position is that we have three key ways of dealing with that. Um, through the, um, the, the intensification of uses, and we've, we've already talked about policy eight, the employment development policy, which is very positively worded in terms of retaining our key employment areas and looking at a, um, a, an intensification of those uses, um, looking at um, uh, redevelopment of employment sites and premises outside those key areas because we have a number of employment uses right across the district that are not necessarily identified as key employment areas. There is a presumption there that 
any alternative uses must demonstrate that the site is no longer needed or viable yeah. for employment use. So very, very sort of um, protective policies, but also flexible policies. Um, coupled with that, we've got the, the rural businesses, the, which is the, the businesses that aren't included in the key employment areas and the neighbourhood planning. And indeed, perhaps what I should have mentioned earlier was also the site allocation document, which we talked about yesterday, um, that has already been programmed. And some of the sites that are identified in the table on page 101, which you were just referring to, yeah. are, are, there is a flag there as to the sites that we have been looking at um, as potential employment uh, floor space. But certainly in the short to medium term, the Council's case is that it can meet its requirements quite properly and there are other opportunities which we're looking at um, outside of that process. Just to be quite clear for my notes, you've rattled through a few things there. Um, the first one was intensification of existing, of existing sites. So that's not necessarily new areas, but more employment on, on sites. That's um, what the, you've, the third one, I think, was the neighbourhood plan potential. And site allocations, that's right. Uh, well, site allocations through, well, is that... So the, the neighbourhood plans are going to come first, and then we, we were going to discuss this. We sort of, we sort of got a bit overlooked, I'm afraid, yesterday, that... Um, you're intending to do another site allocations plan if you feel that the neighbourhood plans aren't coming forward with enough sites, is that right? We're intending to do a site allocation plan in any case. There will need to be, um, I'm sure when we come to talk about gypsies and travellers, we'll, that, that will, will come up then. Um, there will need to be, uh, we'll need to look at other site allocations in addition to residential and employment is one of those. We were making reference in terms of neighbourhood plans and the, and the role that they might play, particularly with regards to residential yesterday. But um, yes, they will come forward. Oh, sorry, I still don't quite understand this. What, um, is the, are you intending to go ahead with a site allocations plan in advance of neighbourhood plans? If the neighbourhood plans don't, or is, is it going to be a district-wide plan or what? No, the site allocation document is programmed for 2016, which gives us the opportunity to monitor what comes forward through neighbourhood plans um, so through the next monitoring year, um, but it is programmed um, to start in 2016. And the neighbourhood plans can start any time? They're progressing at the moment. Somehow. We've got 60% we've got coverage already of, of our, our communities that are working out their neighbourhood plans. But yeah, I working up, not coverage of <coughs> adopted plans. We haven't got adopted plans at the moment, so no. No. Okay, and what was number two then, in between the intensification and the neighbourhood plans it, and it was, site allocations, DPD? It was all of the sites uh, that are outside the key employment areas um, where I've just given you uh, an, ex an example of where um, sites have come forward. There was the, the windfall that I just described of uh, Tesla oh, in right. Storrington so at Water Lane. The shorthand for that is windfall. Yes. So we've got intensification on existing sites, no, no additional areas, windfall area sites, and then neighbourhood plan sites. In, in, <laughs> in addition to the major allocation, so yes. Yeah, okay. Um, before you come back, Mr. Shostak, I'm going to go ask um, Crawley, please. Um, Mr. Shostak's made a point about um, North Horsham meeting Crawley's needs, but you're, you've, got, you've got a lot of sites, and I understand you've seen quite a lot of development over the last sort of decade or so. What's your... Um, can you just remind... I haven't read through your draft plan in full, I'm sorry. So can you just give me a sort of bullet point summary of your economic and employment position in terms of needs and supply? Yes, of course, sir. Um, we are currently at our draft submission stage, so we are very well involved in our emerging policies, and there is a lot of similarity in terms of Crawley's position in Horsham. Um, our plan recognises the interrelationship between the in-commuting and that Horsham and Crawley are at the heart of the Gatwick Diamond. Our policy position is um, based on the EGA and recent work that the Council itself has undertaken as a further evidence base on our um, employment land trajectory. And our land supply position is at the 77.2 hectares which are identified in the um, economic growth assessment. We believe we're able to provide 
approximately 44 to 45 hectares of that land currently. Sorry, the 77.2 is the, is the EGA. base, is that the baseline That's the baseline EGA. scenario, that's correct. Of which we believe we're, the EGA identifies 42 hectares of land supply and we believe um, following our recent employment land trajectory undertaken in September that we might be in a position to provide 44 to 45 hectares in the plan period uh, not five years. So our position is that in the early part of the plan period given our constrained position particularly in terms of Gatwick Airport and second runway decision that we would be able to provide for our first five-year plan period in line with the trajectory but actually year six onwards we've been working to identify key sites to see whether should safeguarding be removed what our position would be. Um, you're sorry so you, but you've got on those figures, you've got a shortfall of about 25 hectares. 35 to 32 hectares is our deficit, that's correct. Sorry? 35 to 32 hectares is our deficit that we're working on. Sorry, 35, my arithmetic's gone wrong. Uh, yeah, so where, where is that coming? I mean, if, is the 44 to 45 additional in years 0 to 5? We've, um, we have identified potential sites in the employment land trajectory that we would be able to provide up to, excuse me, to the trajectory. Is that in addition to the 42 hectares of supply? No. Can I, if I can just clarify, we, our employment land trajectory identifies that we may be in a position to provide uh, sorry, 138 hectares of land of the plan period up to 15 should safeguarding be removed. That includes the 42 hectares that we've already identified. Say that figure again, 100 and what? <laughs> 138 hectares. And you said something about safeguarding being removed. Is that Gatwick safeguarding? Yes, it is. We basically. And what if Gatwick safeguarding is not removed? Then, at the current position for our plan period, we only have 44 to 45 hectares of available employment land. And that's, is that likely to be forever? Well, <laughs> bearing in mind the constraints. I mean, it, it, you know, it sounds a bit of a simplistic question, but. Um, you know, we heard quite a lot yesterday about Crawley being highly constrained by um, the flexibility to allow for the second runway, if it happens, um, to the north, uh, the AONB to the south, so, and there's also mm -hmm. some residential commitments to the east and the west, mm -hmm. as well as tightly constrained boundaries. So, um, they, you know, it's not so such a dumb question as to sort of say well you know is that all that you can provide if if the land for the second runway is, is required we have identified the area that's currently safeguarded as an area of search to be also considered for housing or employment once we've had a decision yeah. on the airport so there is a potential for additional land to come forward in a runway scenario or a non-runway scenario but in our local plan we have a trigger that we are not yet oh, in a position well, all right, sorry, well, I don't I quite understand. If it's, if it's needed, for, it, there might, that implies that there's some other land that isn't potentially, it isn't safeguarded for the second runway that could come forward, but that you're saying if, if even if all that land came forward, you can only get to about 45 hectares. Yeah, our 45 hectares identifies land that's not currently restrained by safeguarding. Yeah. So that's our position, yeah. sorry. And there's not much scope for anything else unless the safeguarding is removed? Well, not, we're not in a position at the moment to consider that because of anything to do with the noise controls or the safeguarding, but there, there may well be addition if safeguarding is removed for additional land. But at the moment, though, there isn't a huge amount of scope because of what's happening with the airport. Hmm. I'm not sure that... I hope we're not at cross-purposes here. Um, I mean, you know, because one of the things we've, you know, one of the points being made by Mr. Shostak is that uh, um, if the second runway 
does go ahead or is sort of, even if it's kept on a back burner as an option and you can't release that employment land um, I'm sure he is going to say this to me Mr Shostak is going to say to me well um, there's a Crawley shortfall of uh, over 30 hectares of employment land needed to meet Crawley's needs based on the EGA study so where's that how's that going to be met um, if Crawley can't meet it and you know obviously in the local area what you know then we're talking about the equivalent of a housing market area but we're talking about an economic area now you've just considered um, Mid-Sussex, Crawley and Horsham in this study but presume there might possibly be scope for those needs to be met elsewhere other than just in those two authorities maybe um, those three authorities aren't a realistic economic development area as opposed to a housing area maybe that, that should be wide, more widely drawn um, but nevertheless there still needs to be some possibly planning or you know, or are you, is the Crawley's position well? We you know that we, we do what we can, um, and review that position as we talked about yesterday. If what the decision on Gatwick's known in a couple of years' time, but our policy position is um, that we will continue to work collaboratively with our neighbours and understand that there may well be a position where we're not able to. Um, provide all of the land supply that's required in terms of the baseline scenario. Our policy um, on major employment growth um, explains that the preference for Crawley is that any strategic allocation or that land is provided in the first instance in a hierarchical or sequential approach that it's at Crawley or that it's, um, sorry, that it's in Crawley in the first instance, that it's at or near Crawley in the second instance or that it's close to Crawley in the third instance. So we have written in a sequential approach into our policy and that all collaborative working with adjacent neighbours and all other authorities within the Gatwick Diamond will, will need to progress. Hmm. Ms Charles, do you want to come to Horsham's position on potentially having to meet um, Crawley's needs if yeah. there's a shortfall with this safeguarded land being continue to be safeguarded yes yes thank you sir um, I think the, the point I was going to make is that I think both both authorities can clearly demonstrate they can meet their short um, and, and in Horsham's case short to medium term needs um, the question of um, the future of Gatwick, Gatwick Airport is clearly um, extremely important to all of those Gatwick Diamond authorities and Horsham's position is that uh, we have already recognised that we would need to review the plan in five years. We know that we need to work collaboratively, to continue to work collaboratively, as we have done with our neighbours. And um, we understand, as we said yesterday, as we are a relatively unconstrained authority, um, that we would have a role to play in that wider economic area. Okay, um, Mr. James, the other Mr. James, you've had your sign up for some time. Did you want to? Is it related to question one? Very much so, sir. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, we've heard um, obviously a lot from from the gentleman from um, Mayfield Market Town, uh, and we basically start by saying. Uh, not wanting to repeat any of that, but very much agree with, with every statement made um, by them. Um, I'm appearing on behalf of the Aaron Business Consortium, uh, who are made up of a number of local businesses, and I think it's important that we hear um, something from a, a local perspective um, in relation to employment needs. Um, as a, as a um, consortium, they represent an, around 102 local persons um, employed within the Horsham area and um, have, uh, particularly in, uh, around the Blatchford Close and Red Kiln Close um, areas of Horsham, and uh, have significant expansion needs, um, looking to relocate um, and expand into suitable premises which um, categorically do not currently exist. Um, so our, our, our point is that the uh, the plan is not currently um, satisfactorily allowing for enough 
land to cover um, employment needs and that's where I um, without wishing to repeat many of the um, points no, made, okay, I would agree no. with <coughs> yeah. Mr Shostak um, but um, we came today to actually query the six hectare shortfall um, with the council but it's since been clarified I think in my mind that they are planning for a baseline scenario with a shortfall of six hectares um, we've heard about um, the strategy in terms of how they would um, uh, the um, um, variety of mechanisms that would address that shortfall in, in terms of key employment areas and the policies that apply there um, my clients and, and many other businesses have no further land to expand into they want the land it's not there um, um, there was reference made to um, Tesla and Storrington um, land was available for Tesla to um, expand into um, in terms of um, neighbourhood plans and, and, and again Mr Shostak has mentioned this there's, there's no quantum there's no overall guiding strategy as to how the neighbourhood plans should apportion some of this um, six hectare shortfall um, and uh, I think um, in terms of um, what the council was saying about the baseline scenario not being a minimum and not doing a do nothing scenario I think we feel it's, it's a do not enough scenario um, like I said no policy certainty and, and reference was made to the site allocations um, document that um, it's program for 2016 um, dependent on neighbourhood plans bringing forward appropriate levels and that goes for housing and employment land um, but from what I've heard today it should be included now the policy approach from the council should not be putting all their eggs in, in one basket in North Horsham and we very much support North Horsham because it's a shot in the arm which the district needs um, but uh, there's, there's obvious shortfalls particularly in what we're talking about today in, in employment and why isn't that, that consideration of sites below uh, the spatial allocation in North of Horsham being considered at the current time uh, it doesn't so what are you suggesting the um, strategy should do it's it would be essentially be bringing changed? forward a site allocations approach but into the local plan so therefore planning for a level below um, the strategic allocations in um, north of Horsham and Southwater and that really goes for housing and employment land plus the community um, issues that, that I raised yesterday uh, yes well yes they're, they're separate but I've got a note of those um, okay how did the council respond to that point so the Horsham district planning framework was, was given that name because it isn't a local plan um, it is looking at the big strategic issues it is setting a framework for the future planning of the district we already have a site allocation document a development plan document and within that I've already made reference to the Centre of Rural Excellence at Brinsbury and this particular example that I gave of a local brewery but if I just um, perhaps come, come back to that allocation um, which as you noted on the, in the table on page 101 of the EGA was of considerable size you'll see that there was 59 hectares um, what that um, merely states is that there is an opportunity for additional employment land and the site allocation of that particular site um, it, it states developments in support of the expansion and enhancement of Chichester College Brinsbury campus as a center of rural excellence will be permitted um, solely to ensure that the campus financial and educational viability for rural land use education and provided any proposals meet the following requirements what it sets out by the set of criteria is that um, that employment use that is um, it, it's complementary to the educational use would be allowed in that location right but what so, so, <laughs> okay so but then that might not be of much comfort to mr. James and his members of his consortium if they're just you know normal manufacturing say business indeed but there are a, a suite of uh, overarching policies in the Horsham District Planning Framework that talk very positively about um, employment growth and about um, uh, you know, where permission could be given 
for, um, for uh, a, a extension of employment, um, employment growth. So it is a strategic plan. It doesn't go to the level of detail of a local plan. It isn't a site allocation document. We already have one of those, and we have another one programmed. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you want to come back on that? Um, only that some, I think, I think today, um, I'm obviously, I, I outlined that uh, we're appearing on behalf of the Aaron Business Consortium. Um, we were just um, saying between us, it was disappointing that perhaps more members of the business community were not here um, today to articulate that. But um, perhaps some Daniel Gilmore can, can um, respond to that question. Yeah. Thank you very much. I just really think what's, what's um, <clears throat> been highlighted there is, is typical of our, of our problem. Um, in that there is, we've talked a lot about office this morning and availability of employment land, but what we represent would not just be the consortium exactly, but as a whole, the whole Horsham requirement for industrial manufacture, distribution, plant hire, um, resale, that type of business which we have the Red Kiln area, we have um, Blatchford Close, we have Foundry Lane, all of which are very, very dated, um, especially Red Kiln and Blatchford, very dated industrial areas, not suited for the current needs at all. Um, our business, our, our own business, is probably the epitome of a true blue Horsham business. We've always been Horsham. We grew up, we started um, in a house, we moved very quickly and grew. Uh, with various premises up Sorry, until... what do you do? We, uh, currently we manufacture and supply building envelope materials, so aluminium rain, metal rain screens and flat roofing materials. Oh, I see. Manufacture and distribution. We grew successfully up till 2000 and by moving premises. Come 2000, every time we needed to expand, we've had to take on additional premises and we're currently sort of situated in two sites in Horsham, one site in Burgess Hill, um, making us very inefficient and uneconomical uh, and there just isn't the availability of land or modern stock to expand a, a local business at all and we don't see in the framework that outlined there is the North Horsham allocation which is good very good but it does say high quality which we'd assume is sort of trying to attract the high tech companies um, we aren't as a business ourselves we're not in the sort of Manor Royal Gatwick League of the multinationals who can afford those, those sites. We are in a lower league as an expanding smaller company. We employ 40, 40 people. Um, as a consortium ourselves, we've identified we need three and a half hectares and that doesn't go anywhere near towards the requirements of other businesses that we'd speak on behalf of for the good of the town. Okay. And that. you really, you're saying, well, the framework um, it doesn't meet your aspiration, you're saying, really, and that it doesn't give you any scope. I mean, Mrs. Charles, do you want to comment on that? Um, yes, I would. Thank you, sir. I mean, we have been working closely with um, with Mr. Jones and making his, his with his representing his clients, uh, trying to find uh, alternative accommodation, and we've talked through. Um, many sites uh, w within the district um, and there have been particular uh, site specific issues there. Um, I think we have a very positive attitude towards economic de development and we, we, we work closely with our local businesses. Um, our economic development team um, works very closely with those as do myself and, and my colleagues. And, and I think the discussions as they have um, played out today um, indicate that there is that demand for additional um, uh, land use, um, which is heartening that uh, we, the businesses do want to um, expand and, be, and stay in Horsham District and we are committed to trying to achieve those ends through the policy framework which we have. Um, but in terms of additional site allocations, that is not something which we can achieve through this particular document. Right. So you're saying that the, the way that the needs of businesses like Mr. Gilmore's are going to be met is through neighbourhood planning allocations or the site allocations DPD that's going to be done? 
Yes, indeed. Or, um, Unless he can find a site that's already used and um, needs redevelopment, in which case the uh, policy, I can't remember the number, the policy for the retention and uh, redevelopment of existing sites would come into play and he would find that um, he could buy that and redevelop an existing site if it became vacant. That, that's right, sir, coupled with the Royal Economic Development Policy, that's right. Okay, any comments on that? Yes, as you say, if, if is the big word there, if it becomes available, we have talked about a number of sites which don't come available. Um, we've been talking for many years about this. Um, of course, if we go to our neighbourhood, another immediate problem, as soon as we go outside the 12 mile radius, we have employment issues, um, we have to offer redundancies, we, we, you know, it's a whole different ball game. Um, what we're trying to highlight is that there isn't the, as a Horsham, for Horsham businesses, there isn't the availability of um, new stock or modern stock or growth p potential. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mr. James. Thank you. I, I think we, we, we quickly got um, and we quickly got drawn into perhaps site-specific issues here. It, not, it wasn't to detract from our main point that we do feel that there is a shortfall, and, 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 and as Ms. Gilmore said, um, an actual uh, suitable supply of available land for the um, B1, B8 type business uses currently within the Horsham area um, that may not actually um, be uh, accommodated within the north of Horsham allocation, which is focused or well, the policy wording is certainly focused on high quality, uh, high value business parks. Yes, okay. But so, I mean, well, I've heard, I don't think I can do a lot more than this. I mean, you, you're, you seem to be saying that the council should be allocating a sort of general business uh, site as well, a, a, a significant general business site in the framework as well uh, as North Horsham to meet needs. Yeah. Um, is that the way I, you see? Is that your potential solution to the, your um, ideally, problems? Ideally, yes. Um, although um, we feel the framework, the actual policy framework, um, should allow for uh, delivery or allocation of sites um, across the across the wider district. Also, um, there's a concern about neighbourhood plans um, being able to really um, take up that uh, shortfall of six uh, hectares as well. I think we've been through that actually. Um, I'll have to consider all those points. Did you have anything else on the overall supply, Mr. Shostak? Uh, Inspector, I'm sorry, I, I do. Um, so, that's all right. Um, uh, I think I'll just carry on. Does anyone need a break? Uh, okay. Okay, we'll just carry on. My comments or uh, observations fall into two categories. One, uh, what Horsham is saying about its employment land supply and then a, a series of observations about uh, Crawley. Uh, I'd then at some point like to hand over to my colleague uh, 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 Peter Ross from one of the leading agents to give a market perspective. Looking back to to your last discussion with the council about the different sources of land supply that they're putting forward. Um, through you, I think it would be helpful to understand what those initiatives have led to so far over in recent years, how much land indeed has come forward since the uh, economic growth assessment work was done some two years ago. And the impression that we have is that most of the activity has been in, in pursuing residential development opportunities on employment land or indeed employment buildings. And as I understand it, the building that we're in or the one next door owned by the council uh, will be brought forward for residential use in due course uh, when, when the council when the council moves out as, as an icon of the challenge that the district faces today, but, but it would be helpful to understand, uh, uh, Mr. Child suggested a series of ways additional employment land would come forward. What can we learn from the last couple of years on that? 
Um, but, but there are two more strategic questions that I think we need, it would be helpful to understand through you, um, which go right to the heart of the soundness test, in that uh, I'm still not clear from what, what the council said, perhaps you are, Inspector, uh, on what their job target is for the, for the plan period. Um, when, when the economic strategy was put to the, uh, to the, the, the members uh, in November of 13, they asked the same question. Several members asked the same question. What scale of job growth are we planning for? And, and I'm not clear whether we're talking about the baseline scenario or, or the, the higher scenario. One of the higher scenarios in terms of total number of jobs that will be accommodated in Horsham over, over the plan period. It's, 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 it's simply not clear. And, and I think the, the, the NPPF is pretty clear in that that's what it expects a, a local plan to say. And then okay. the, 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 second, the, the second question on that is, is the, um, how are each of the sources of employment land that have been articulated going to contribute to accommodating that growth? We, we, we've got a target of half a million square feet of, of, of development, which can be turned into a job uh, number. <coughs> Uh, for North Horsham, but I, I'm not clear what the other components of the land supply are, are supposed to be in, against that, that target. Um, and I think without clarity on the target and without uh, clarity on the different sources of land supply as has been articulated by the council, I don't, I don't understand uh, how we can see that the plan is doing whatever it can do to, to accommodate economic growth. Uh, so that's, that's okay. on the Horsham discussion. Uh, on the Crowley discussion, uh, th there were five points that, that came out. Uh, first... Um, uh, well, that, shall we deal with Horsham first? Sure. Then, if you've got five points. Uh, okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll I, I mean, I'll ask the council to, if they want to say any more about that. I think they've said some things already, but... Uh, uh, do you want to respond to those three points? Uh, thank you, sir. Um, my understanding is that there's no requirement in the MPPF um, to publish a job target. And what's more, I would um, have quite a bit of caution about any figure appearing in the plan. It's quite clear in the MPPF is that um, the role of the development plan is to facilitate and provide through a variety of mechanisms, development control policies and where appropriate land allocations um, in order to provide um, the necessary conditions but in itself it's not sufficient to achieve um, job growth. And this is getting into the area really why um, we work closely at Horsham and with our um, adjoining boroughs with the LEP because we regard mm -hmm. that as being the, uh, um, uh, the best place to have this sort of discussion. We are informed by what the LEP um, tells us and we feel that uh, we're broadly consistent with the LEP requirements. Um, it's quite true that more information has become available on the um, good practice uh, since the EGA work uh, was carried out. Um, that's very much in the nature of, uh, of planning, is that we, we proceed on the basis of the uh, best information that was around at the time. And therefore, um, it's true to say that the economic growth assessment, even though it's, uh, it's up to date, it doesn't fully um, meet the very latest requirements. But even so, um, I'm happy to be pointed out if I'm wrong, but there's nothing in, even in the NPPG um, which suggests that it's um, essential to uh, announce a job target. Uh, okay, well that was one of the points. There was a um, uh, question about, I mean, in broad terms, what, economic, what employment activity has taken place in the last two years. Um, and then the other question was um, how will the sources that you've identified in the three prongs 
um, approach um, contribute to that growth? I mean, well, that's sort of partly been covered, but do you want to take the first one? Um, What's happened in the last two years? I'm not sure that it's exactly uh, two years. Uh, there has, information has been fed through to the EGA um, to the point where it was published, and it was published um, earlier this year. Um, I've got a feel for the figures, um, which is, may help the inspector and may help, which is that uh, at this current stage in the economic cycle, and with the uh, housing pressures that we've got at the moment, that um, um, I would be surprised if there are uh, many um, which have come forward um, during that period. So I wouldn't um, necessarily disagree with the point that um, we do have a, a housing market that is uh, looking at the reuse of all types of sites coming forward in the built-up area. What about this point about here? And um, I mean, is, isn't, isn't, isn't this a protected employment site? Which site are we talking about? So, uh, this, this where, where we are at the offices. <laughs> <laughs> where we are at the moment. Yeah. Um, no, this is not a protected employment site. It doesn't feature as such. We um, um, can provide you with a, a list of the areas which correspond with the economic growth assessment. But, but what, is there any policy to protect, um, you know, su areas such as this, which, I mean, it's, you know, it's okay, you know, very well saying, well, we're going to get new sites coming forward in neighbourhood plans and old North Horsham, but if you, you know, continue to lose employment, we've heard about Novartis, losing half of that site, maybe more. We've heard about losing this. We've heard about office conversions being lost. Um, you know, at what, is there any way to you know, keep the sites we've got? Because a town centre is you know, a preferred, uh, sequentially preferred location mm. for employment development. You know, there's nothing wrong with having housing development there, but um, if you're going to have employment development of business type, it should be in a town centre location, as I've done this morning, within less than five minutes walk from the railway station. So, um, you know, is that good planning? Well, Not I, to protect it. Um, where we are at the moment is, um, as has been explained, the Horsham District Planning Framework is looking at the higher level um, distribution of uh, growth around the district. So we have not revised the uh, specific notations that are shown on the previous um, proposals map. That's simply being taken forward. So if one's looking at the, the key employment area policy, um, which is, I believe, 7E, yeah. um, that refers to key employment areas. Um, there's a range of those distributed around the, around the district. Give me a moment. 7E and 8.3, I think, the two, uh, two references to key employment areas. Yeah. It is, it is, one can see... So where are they defined on the old proposals map, aren't they? And they have simply been carried forward into the, the new policy maps. Now, there isn't a list of those, and I think it would be helpful um, for purposes of clarity uh, to know which these are. Um, we have mentioned that a note is going to be... Um, prepared and circulated, so I would suggest yeah. that that's appended so that we have clarity on the matter. Um, but that is certainly not all of the employment, uh, significant employment areas in the district. So there is a, um, um, another category, if we can put it that way, which is the undefined employment areas. Um, um, which are included within the economic growth assessment. Now, I've referred to, to this site, um, this office uh, building, and indeed, as I'm sure the inspector has seen, there are a number of others between here and the station. 
Um, and this gets to the heart, really, of um, the changing nature of the office market. Um, this building in itself would not necessarily be fit for uh, the modern needs of um, office users. There's considerable work required for it. Um, but our policy is generally um, supportive towards encouraging employment uses in the undefined area. Um, we do expect to see um, the case made. But clearly, we're in also in the position where we have a, um, a housing market, um, which is, uh, requires provision. So which is more valuable than the employment market? In some cases, I'm certainly aware of where uh, elsewhere, other than this area, where em employment uses, if of the right type, will outbid residential. But except in the round, it tends to be housing, um, particularly in the situation where we are in Horsham, where it's, this is a qualitative issue, which is that there is two points to be made. One is that a lot of the existing stock, both office and industrial, um, requires work to bring it up to modern standard. And very often, it's, uh, it, it, the site occupancy is quite high, which is in itself is an issue that needs to be met. And I think the key point about the qualitative issue is that um, our understanding, I'm quite happy to have a, introduce a market view on this as well, but our understanding is that by freeing up, that there will be a freeing up process achieved by the North Horsham allocation, that this in itself will provide, we can't be definite about this, but we're confident that it will provide for a, a number of um, Horsham businesses who can then release site and we can start to see the market operating because that's the perception that we have from the economic growth study and from talking to um, others in the market is that the uh, industrial market is well, I'll use the word constipated because it, we're stuck now. The vacancy level is not uh, sufficient to allow for the free operation of the market. So that's a qualitative point. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, that's sort of happened all over the southeast, I think, really, hasn't it? Right. You know, um, in sort of economic development terms. But what we seem to be getting... So what, but then what you're you know, no doubt going to say to me, well, you know, this is... I mean, it's quite interesting discussing this, isn't it? Because it's a sort of microcosm of what's actually happening in the market. And, uh, and you end up, you know, possibly with a sort of policy non-compliant position um, as, a, as a result. I mean, you know, where are the council going to go? Are they going to go to a new business park on North Horsham if it goes through? Um, you know, is, that, is that one of their aspirations? So they're going to move from the town centre out, you know, out onto a business park. Um, you know, which you know, people might or might have difficulty getting to, but then they might more than likely going to have to drive there. We're going to hear about whether there's going to be a new station there. Um, and then you get, you know, the how, this is redeveloped for housing. Well, sir, I, I sympathise with the dilemma, and I understand the comment, which says it's not just Horsham. This is um, going, um, this is a considerable part of the, the South East and London for that matter. And, um, for example, in, in the metropolitan area, there are very few examples of where what in planning terms we would describe as sustainable locations, town centre locations which have the, uh, the public transport access, which are actually able to maintain their in, um, employment base. That gets to the heart of the changing nature of the economy that we're dealing with. And I'm not, su not sure that trying to force in uh, office users to remain in the town centre is, is, is actually working. I only know of one borough, for example, out of, out of well. uh, the centre of London, which has, which has had any success with it. This is getting to be a very interesting conversation, isn't it? I mean, you know, that you can then um, widen that out to say, well, uh, maybe that is the only way you can force a policy compliant position is not to allocate uh, new business areas outside. Mr. Shostak might be saying, well, um, you know, I, I'm not putting, this is hypothetical, Mr. Shostak, but you mean another solution to the problem is if you're going to lose even more sites within the town centre or within, urban, within the urban areas, you, alloc you need to allocate even more sites outside of the area to meet the shortfall. 
And there, there's going to be, an, even if the council does go ahead and move out, there's, there's going to be a shortfall of employment here. It's another net loss. That's why I asked the question about Novartis. You know, it's not just about what the, the existing commissions are. Um, you've got to look at the overall picture. And we're, I'm sure we're not going to solve it <laughs> in this room today. And um, I'm sure you're all quite jealous of my task in having to come to a conclusion on all these matters. Um, but, um, you know, that's just that's sort of one of the things, another complicated issue that um, somehow or other we've got to resolve to, to, you know, meet the policy requirements. So, if I may suggest uh, the way forward on this. Yeah. Uh, it has to be a measured approach. Um, we're not about a, uh, providing more employment lands than we think is um, clearly viable um, and can come forward uh, to make some contribution to dealing with the issues that have come up this morning in discussion. Um, so the council's position is that it is, recognises that um, what it does if you like, outside the plan or beyond the plan through the development um, management mechanism and through economic <coughs> development um, is as important um, than simply the process of making strategic land allocations. Um, and I heard what's possibly a suggestion coming forward that um, at this stage that the council makes some other general business um, allocation um, to deal with some of the issues that we've heard, heard about, would we'll suggest that at this Well, that was a question I put to uh, the other Mr. James, I think, um, uh, you know, about um, you know, how to deal with that particular problem. Yeah, not, it's not my suggestion. I'm, I'm neutral. Indeed, sir, yes. I wouldn't suggest otherwise, but it is, it is a reasonable uh, line to at least consider. Um, I would suggest that this is where we go back to the economic growth um, assessment and look at the char um, characterisation of the sites. Um, with the exception of North Horsham, where I think you'll agree even on the basis of the evidence that you've seen thus far, let alone the discussion that's coming next week, that there's a considerable amount of uh, weight of evidence suggesting that if you are so mindful that that um, will and could, could and will uh, go ahead, but the, um, there is no well, there, is, there are some people around the chamber well, who have don't prepared agree to qualify with that position. It. I'm very conscious that they're still here, and that question 12 is still. I mean, I'd like to get onto that before lunch, if, if possible. Um, but anyway, that's um, for discussion still. Yeah, indeed. Um, so our measured view, the council's measured view, is that we have, we're achieving something of a balance, maybe not exactly, but we're achieving some sort of balance by the one strategic um, allocation that appears in the plan. Um, and we would like to proceed with this. Um, things will become clearer when the um, uh, current hiatus over Gatwick becomes, uh, um, becomes uh, a little uh, less problematic, um, but we are at, certainly in Horsham unable to second guess that and therefore we've made sufficient provision um, certainly to deal with the, the early part of the plan period. Okay. Okay. Charles, you wanted to comment. Sir, all I wanted to do is to give you some confidence that the council is not going to move to an out of town location. In fact, what we're doing is looking at smarter growth um, we are giving up... Oh, yeah, no, that's funny enough. That's another one of my points. Give, in, giving in up point B on policy seven, um, what is smarter growth, smart growth? Okay, well, so we're, we're moving from, from a campus of sites um, to um, co-locate with the um, county council, so we'll be using one floor of, of an office building um, rather than the, the current campus of a number of buildings which we currently occupy. Um, I think the, the definition of uh, smart growth came up in uh, the representations that we received and uh, I immediately went to our glossary um, to look to see if there was such a definition and, and there wasn't. Um, so I would suggest that um, that was something that, enough, we, that's the note I've got on my that, that, that should be rectified, was yeah, well, what I was okay, going to suggest. That could be, a, well, you're going to put forward a definition then. 
or think about a rewording of that. I mean, I genuinely, I'm not quite sure what, what it is, to be honest. It could be a lot of things. I mean, um, trying to think, it was, we had it, the inspectorates had it in relation to targets. I mean, it's sort of um, strategic, manageable, achievable, realistic or something. But I don't, that's not what you mean, I don't think. We're very happy to draft a definition, sir, and put it before you. Um, well, I, I think it might help effectiveness. Yeah, I, I, I did have a go at it myself at um, looking at redevelopment result and intensification of use um, in the same area, which would not adversely impact on surrounding areas. But I will um, ha have a look at that and put something in writing <laughs> to you, sir. Could maybe be condensed, but that, that's okay. That sounds useful. Right. Okay. Thanks. Um, is that all you wanted to? Boards, yeah. Um, yeah, Mr. Gilmore, and then come back. And then I think I really would like to, to I mean, I know we could carry on about this for a, quite a while, but uh, it just sort of try and, if there's anything else, key points you think you'd like to make, make them now, and then I'll get the council to respond. And then I'd like to move on to question 12 while we've got people here um, about the North Horsham viability issue, because that's, I know, of interest to people. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you. I'll just briefly. Um, I'd just like to confer with um, Mrs. Childs as to the smart growth, which is exactly what we're trying to do um, with businesses, but she has some stock available and we just wanted to underline that there just is no stock available for what we're trying to, trying to achieve. It's very much smart growth that we're trying to, trying to buy in on. Okay, thank you. Mr. Shostak. Um, very briefly, the Council's exposition on the market challenges that we face I understand, and I think the, they apply to the 14.8 hectares of land already allocated more generally. Um, on the question of whether we need a job target or not, para 14 of the NPPF is very clear. Local plans should meet objectively assessed needs, and that applies. Objective normally mean, means a number, and Many, not all, local plans have, have real numbers. And I'm not sure how you can demonstrate compliance with objectively assessed needs unless you've got some kind of quantification of what those needs are. Um, on, on the point of the relying on the site allocations DPD, yes, we, we understand that, but, but the, the local plan, the planning framework, should provide the strategy against which the DPD uh, should then be drafted. Uh, okay, yeah. turning very briefly to Crawley, sir, um, just a couple of observations, and then at some point I'd be grateful if we could listen to, to, to Mr. Ross. Uh, uh, Crawley is also aiming for the baseline, it appears, and, and the question that we would ask through you, in the context of the local enterprise partnerships growth ambitions is why Crawley and indeed whether Horsham is just aiming for the baseline or something more ambitious. Uh, we submitted some representations on Crawley 2030 and we showed uh, on the basis of the evidence which we can provide you with as well that the 44 hectares of land um, in, in the Borough Council's employment land trajectory, in, in our view, is only 22 or 23, maybe 24 hectares of land because of the strength of the market. And we can provide that information. In, in the uh, public... Well, I'm not... Uh, okay. okay. Uh, I'll take a note that you... We, we I'll can just do that note like, you don't yeah. agree with it. I'm not going to start the Crawley examination I understand. as well. I've got enough on my plate, okay. actually. Thanks very much. What, what, um, but it, what is quite clear, however, is that the combination of the pressure in Crawley and the pressure in Horsham is, is very severe. Um, in, in a public meeting in February that the council held, um, uh, they, they had a very rich presentation from the director of the Gatwick Diamond, Rosemary French. 
-hmm. and, and we've included that in our full representations as Appendix 4. And okay. she says... I'll flick through that, yeah. Okay. Um, there's no room in Crawley left. Crawley is basically full up. And she asks whether Horsham is open for business. And she's at the coalface of, of the market. Uh, on the question of safeguarding, um, our understanding is that we've got no basis for agreeing, for, for working on the assumption that the land around Gatwick, that the safeguarding will be lifted. Even, even if a second runway is, is not built at Gatwick, we've seen no evidence from the airport's commission that they would contemplate lifting the safeguarding whatsoever. And, and, well, and if someone once said you wouldn't, would you? Well, indeed. <laughs> but, I mean, because, uh, but that presumably would have to be you know, an issue post any decision about indeed. the next stage with London airports. But our job is to deal with the world as it is today. And if, if we're going to be compliant with the, with the NPPF... Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you the point. Yeah, That's why yeah. I asked the questions, Mr. Shostak. Right, that, okay. Know, was, and finally, I would just urge that um, at some point we have a brief discussion, if we can, about Brighton in the context of the right locations for jobs and the implications of Brighton for the south of the county. But I'd also ask you at some point to, to listen to Peter's view of the market as, as we face it in Horsham. Well, let's hear that now, and then I'll ask the council to respond, and then we'll move on to North Horsham. Good. Thank you very much. Um, just to introduce myself briefly, and that's only two mi one minute. My name's Peter Ross. I've worked in commercial property in this region. I use the word region since 1978. There is a report by Stiles Harold Williams in, in the, the documentation. I set up the office in Crawley with two instructions in 1978. So I, I hope you'll appreciate it. I do, mm -hmm. I believe, know this area quite well. Um, this morning when I left my office, I, did, I got a computer printout of our current requirements. Now, we are a large regional firm, like Stiles, Harold Williams are a large regional firm. So What's your company called? Vale Williams. Oh, Vale Williams, okay, yeah, right, fine. So, Sorry, I've seen some of your, yeah. And, and, we are, and as, a, as of this morning, we had over 1.1 million square feet of requirements, current requirements. For what? Uh, and, those are divide, and, and those are divided between office and uh, warehousing, business space generally. So the office is, is 12 requirements and the remainder are for business space. So, so there's 1.1 million uh, uh, square feet of requirement we have on our books. Now the point I want to make now is, is that you've got to appreciate what they're looking for. There's been a lot of comment on, on uh, looking at various sites. What those people are looking for are for quality locations. And a quality location is, one, Manor Royal. Two, obviously, North Horsham, the site there, would be ideal. Um, there was a site I'm going to refer to late, later at Burgess Hill. So they're quality sites. So reference to uh, additional small, small sites here. A quality site means a site in a quality location. It's probably a site of 20 acres, well, well, six hectares. It's a quality location, good quality buildings, and it must be in a prominent position. So that is what the current requirement is for. You mean prominent as in next to a major road? Exactly. Not a station? Well, a, a station... A station's good if it's a a also a, available. A station's good, but, but I think the figure is only 13% of, of people uh, in an area uh, commute, so that, that leaves quite a lot of others who don't commute. Yeah. So... So that's it. And then I then want to move on to a realistic position, the absolute realistic position as of this moment in time. Now, the realistic position is that there is only one quality site 
currently available in the very, very significant um, uh, area of, of Crawley, Horsham and Mid-Sussex. There are a number of minor sites. People were able to do sites. There is only one quality site and, and, and if um, uh, Shell came along and said, I want 5,000 meters squared of quality education. We would struggle, and the reality is we'd probably in most cases say, sorry, chaps, we're full. We've got no space. Okay, well, so uh, how big is that site? And in just to, uh, you've said, uh, I prefer it to view square meters. I know that's the, well, secret that's yeah. the Secretary of State's... Um, Preferred position, you've said, yeah. so it's about 100,000 square metres yeah, yeah. requirements, and you've so got. You said 10,000 uh, metres square. And you've yeah. got, um, yeah. Uh, what's, right? what's available on this site? How, ma how many square metres would you get on it? What, the one, the site that is available. Yeah. The site, for, uh, uh, the, 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 the site that is available at this moment in time is the hub at Burgess Hill, and that is the only quality location which is available at this moment in time. And that how much floor space uh, is on. likely to be provided? That there. Is, that, that's, uh, that's 27 acres of land, and that is going to provide around about half a million of square feet of space. Now, as of this immediate moment in time, my firm are the agents in this site. We are involved in negotiation two major site negotiations and building negotiations which will take out seven acres of that site. Yeah, so that's about 11, is that 11 hectares roughly? Something so, like that. so at this moment in okay. time, and then we'll start... So how much of that is, so that's how much of that is, a, you're negotiating on some? Yeah. Okay. Well, we, that we are doing nothing on the other side, we don't need to. We will then start building the site and then we'll go to the market in a wider manner. Okay, so for the purpose of my note, um, you're saying just in your company, you've got about 100,000 square metres of requirements. Um, and Correct. one site that has potentially got about 50,000 square metres of space available, but some of that is already well underway in negotiations, yeah. yes? Yeah, yeah. And, and the other point I do want to emphasize is that Crawley is full and the take up of sites. And the very important point is that this is mainly to owner occupiers. So it's virtually all the sites that have been taken up. There are 70. Yeah, but that's. Uh, that, that's accepted, is it? Well, that's normal. You know, I'm saying that's. Yeah, yeah. No, but that's. But they're, that's they're, Crawley way, I know that's that the way things gone. are going, that that's, you know, that it's not just the old long lease arrangements, you know, that. Uh, People want their own sites. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but come back to the fundamental point. There is a very, very severe, severe shortage of quality employment land in the, in, in the area covered by these three councils. And, and okay. I have not seen any clear indication where this might be provided, as was mentioned previously. Um, is that, uh, that should have been in a statement, all of that, actually. It should have been, should it? Yeah. <laughs> but was it? Is it in your reps? Well, I can't, you've got some reps about demand for space, haven't you, I think, somewhere? We did, we did include some information about demand for space in our full representations yeah. as okay. Mayfields. And we can provide you with a short uh, summary of that, if you would like, if that would be helpful. I've got, well, I think I've got quite a lot from you, and I think the <laughs> okay. stack's about that high, isn't it? So, okay, will the council like to respond to that? And then I'm going to move on to, I think we sort of covered um, uh, question 11. I'll come back to that, but that's employment. We're, we're talking about employment opportunities of the right type there, and we, we've, Mr. Gilmore's already touched on uh, something, you know, that issue there that there isn't what's in the plan won't meet for some needs in his view um, do the council want to make respond do you disagree you might that there's a shortage of sites 
So we'd like Do you want to, to make any comments We'd on like that? to um, have, have some commentary on the market as well, please. Thank you. Um, we, we're we're a, a local firm, um, similar in size, well, sorry, it's not similar in size, similar to um, Mr. Ross's. And um, we, we, we also share records of um, circa 100,000 square metres of, uh, of, of demand in the region. So it's not just Horsham, it's on a regional basis. Um, and, and that sort of extends up towards um, the M25 and down towards the, uh, the, the coast and uh, along the A23 and A24 corridors. Um, in, in terms of um, supply, current supply, um, whilst we had an enormous oversupply, this has diminished in the last, um, last two years, which is a point, a question you raised um, yeah. earlier. Um, my understanding is that there is, and I, I might be going sort of slightly off piece here, but my understanding is that there is still um, a, a presumption in terms of retaining employment use in and around the town. So it's not a free for all, but with the introduction of the GPDO, um, that has introduced a new dimension which has enabled um, uh, redundant stock to be utilised for, um, uh, to, or to satisfy the housing need. And it's been quite a successful policy. Um, with regard to North Horsham, um, we, we see that as satisfying the sort of quality end of the market in terms of uh, satisfying um, uh, demand from existing occupiers looking to, um, to uh, relocate and expand, um, relocate from, from dated stock, um, and we thereby see that being freed up for alternative um, occupiers and we see it also satisfying demand on a more regional basis, and so we would see, we'd expect to see inward investment um, in, in the North Horsham Business Park. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, Mr. Charles has sort of referred to, I've got your earlier comments about the supply from your, your point of view locally. Um, Mr. Shutt, you've... Do you want to comment on this issue? Um, thank you, sir. Yes, um, I am. Um, I, I hardly know. I've heard such um, a degree of extreme hype this morning based on very little that I hardly know where to begin, but I'll try. Um, the, we heard, uh, I'll, I'll try and keep it short, a, a number of facts which, which may, may be relevant. Uh, somebody said that the um, Gatwick Diamond Initiative the, the Gatwick Diamond is very uh, overflowing with, with uh, apparently booming. That's the impression I got from what I think Mr. Shostak said. Um, in fact, um, I, I quote from the um, uh, local street strategic statement of the Gatwick Diamond Initiative, which dates from 2012, and it indicates little need for more business space in the area as a whole, other than for warehousing or distribution. And that is, and it says, the, the main focus of development is seen as being the Red Hill Crawley Corridor, which on that basis is clearly regarded as the, as the heart of the Gatwick Diamond, <laughs> rather than Horsham. And um, uh, another fact of relevance um, and I'm trying to keep it short here. So another fact is that um, although Manor, Manor Royal is said to be full and Crawley is said to be full, that sits rather oddly with the fact that Crawley Borough Council has lately uh, granted permission for the conversion of part of Manor Royal for residential development. Um, and uh, I, I also want to point out well, this is, this is a more fundamental question, but it needs to be considered because the, I am an economist and I deal in factors of supply and demand. Now, the supply of office space is, is clearly um, uh, excessive, or has been excessive. Uh, uh, the gentleman from, uh, sorry, um, Crickmay, state, stated that um, there, there has been a, a, a reduction in the surplus in recent years. But, of course, there's also been Novartis, to take one case, which has added to the surplus. 
and, and therefore the market trends are against him. Are they, they're, they're against the idea that there is a, 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 a shortage of demand. And I, I, um, uh, I, I therefore question the, the feasibility of uh, getting uh, any new space in which is going to be viable. And indeed that is consistent with what we're going to say about, um, about North Horsham. But um, uh, it's, it, it's, well, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know if you've got any comment or, or question on that. I, I have... Uh, well, it's for the Council to um, comment if they wish, but... No, um, all right. Uh, but, but anyway, the, 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 uh, sorry, I, the, the last point I really want to make, and it's repeating something I said yesterday, is that national and global trends are against the demand for business space generally. And, and that, that, um, that is reflected in the fact that the council here is downsizing itself, following the downsizing of Royal Sun Alliance. And, and it's not, it, as, as I pointed out yesterday, it is retail space also. On Manor Royal, a number of uh, big car showrooms are, have been represented. I haven't been there for a few years, but that's what they were the last time. Car showrooms, according to a recent Financial Times piece, are a thing of the past. So you're going to get more and more space coming available. And this is the, this is the computer age. We're not talking about re fixed ratios, which might have been assumed to exist, between the employment and economic growth on the one hand and the demand for business space on the other. These things are changing. It's a dynamic position. And that affects, yeah. of course, the market for the demand for um, uh, residential as, as well as office space. Um, uh, a final point to make, and it's related to what I've just been saying, is that the most one of the most successful um, uh, initiatives of Horsham District Council, perhaps the most successful, maybe the only successful initiative they've taken in the, in the employment creation area, has been their microbiz scheme, which is designed to bring together um, a networking exercise, if I can put it that way, if I understand correctly, for people who set up small businesses in their own homes, based obviously on use of the internet. Now that is a factor which is, is um, uh, increasingly evident, and if, 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 that, if that is the case, what it means is that, that if that is the future, and of course the fact that business rates are high doesn't only accelerates that trend, that's where we should be looking to see future employment growth. And the idea that you could come up with objective numbers of, of employment targets, I quite agree with the gentleman from the council who said it's not possible to, to specify these. So all, all in all, um, we are looking at a, a contracting rather than expanding situation for the demand for business space. And uh, therefore, I think, to use your own, um, was it your, I think you, you did you use the term use these estimates with a pinch of salt you were referring to something else but that would apply to uh, some of these estimates well, I, you, get, I, you get from you get from developers but I'm sure sir you're used to doing that uh, well I am actually because I've got a background actually I've got an economics degree and I've got a background in economic development work in London boroughs as well as um, elsewhere so um, uh, I'm sort of used to this and the employment floor space ratios and uh, their changing nature has been um, a matter of debate for, uh, well, uh, certainly at least 30 odd years in my experience. But um, you know, um, I'm not claiming seniority here, um, unfortunately. But um, that's, yeah. So I'm aware of I'm aware of those issues. So um, I mean, there's some interesting points there. Now, if if um, if I didn't know otherwise, Mr. Shah, I'd sort of take those as supporting comments of the council's position as against uh, Mr. Shostak. But I know that you think um, that we're coming on to question 12, that um, well, therefore there's no need for the business park at, can I just or, say at, at, um, at North Horsham. And uh, you've so, you know, got questions about its viability. That's your position. Really, as to supporting it? the council, uh, sir, can I just say all is relative? <laughs> yeah. I'll take that with a pinch of salt as well. <laughs> okay. Um, do the council want to make any comments on that? Um, can I perhaps offer two uh, observations on those points? Um, in terms of the, the sort of the general approach, I guess, in terms of uh, forecasting future requirements and the land requirements and space requirements that flow from those, um, 
whatever the sort of merits are otherwise in a sense of the uh, methodologies, um, that is actually a requirement of the MPPF um, and para uh, 161 is very clear in asking local authorities to use their evidence base to uh, identify and assess the needs for land and floor space for economic development. And if we look at the PPG, there are a range of approaches set out in that uh, that local authorities are encouraged to follow. Uh, those include, for example, the use of employment uh, forecast amongst other uh, measures. So uh, the generality is that the Council's evidence is compliant with the approach advocated in the MPPF and the PPG. Um, in terms of the uh, changing way in which floor space, employment floor space is being used, uh, I'd agree with the inspector here that essentially this is um, a, 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 a a long-standing debate is something that's constantly in a state of flux. Um, but again, in regard to the assessment undertaken for Horsham and indeed across the EGA, uh, we've had regard to the latest employment densities published in the 2010 uh, HCA Ofpat uh, Employment Densities Guidance, and those are, in a sense, an updated version of the earlier 2001 English Partnerships Guidance. And between those two documents, we do see more efficient use of employment space uh, and, and the assumptions here uh, assume those more efficient use of space. And I think it's reasonable, essentially, that the Council has taken uh, through their evidence th those assumptions on board. Whether those change in the future and over time, that's a matter for, for wider debate. But they have uh, taken account of the, the, the best and latest information possible based on surveys, etc. Um, I'm yeah, not that's just on that point. I mean, uh, I mean, I think we're in sort of danger of overgeneralising here. I mean, uh, you know, there are some areas I think clearly uh, one can see more efficient use of space. I mean, there, there are still um, floor space standards, health and safety standards for floor space uh, for offices, for example. But one's seeing possibly better use of premises through, um, you know, shared job sharing, etc., you know, is one, one thing that particularly comes to mind. But in other areas, um, which maybe Mr. Ross is sort of referring to, um, you know, there are sort of different types of floor space and, you know, business floor space for warehousing or, or sort of, you know, R&D and other things maybe need actually more floor space than they've had or different type of floor space, um, you know, than, than the traditional industrial estates provide. So it's a bit of a, it's a mixed picture, isn't it? It, 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 it? It's a mixed picture, and certainly if you look at the evidence on it, um, it it's very clear that the greatest efficiencies uh, in terms of how space is being used is in terms of office accommodation for some of the reasons you just described, which is lots of office occupiers now operate differently and they use space more efficiently. If we look at the long-term trends set out in the evidence around industrial and warehousing, actually the, the scale of change in some of those densities isn't, isn't so great. And I think that does reflect to some extent that um, you know, industrial, occup uh, industrial occupiers um, essentially often still need the same amount of floor space that they've had in the past and their operations have cha generally changed less. So um, I think th 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 this invariably is a kind of moving uh, uh, feast essentially. Um, but the, I think the key point is that um, across the range of B-class uh, floor space types that we're essentially discussing here, uh, the Council's evidence is informed by the latest reasonable assumptions on those things, and in a sense, those are assumptions that are being used, used elsewhere uh, and are you know, effectively uh, pointed to in terms of the relevant guidance on this. Um, if that changes in the future and updated evidence becomes available, then those things can be reviewed at that point. <coughs> Um, but I think we're, we're comfortable on that basis with the uh, general approach on that. Um, the, the second related point I think came up, and I, I don't want to provide a market view on this because um, there are others here who, who, who perhaps might want to, to do so, but uh, with the question around surplus uh, office uh, accommodation, and yeah. certainly historically I think, and I'd agree with what others have described here, that uh, there has been a surplus um, of office accommodation. But I think we need to be... Um, clear, I suppose, about what type of space that actually comprises. And a lot of the office space in Horsham is relatively old. And a lot of the accommodation that has, in a, in a sense, been almost structurally vacant, if I can put it that way, is essentially larger floor plate office accommodation from the 1970s and 1980s, when Horsham Town Centre was home to a number of larger um, 
financial and insurance companies and the like. Um, of course, as we... Yeah, sorry, OK, so I think I, it's not a term I've heard used often, but structurally vacant as opposed to frictionally vacant. Yes. You know, it's long-term long -term vacancy yeah. because there's, there's, it's a type of floor space that is no longer in demand for large-scale operations employing lots of clerical jobs, right? That's correct, yeah. I mean, I think what we're talking about here is you know, space that was in some cases built for specific occupiers uh, and had a, a form and character that reflected what occupiers at that time were looking for. Um, the reality is um, that space is now essentially, or a lot of that space is, is outmoded uh, and a lot of it is very difficult for it to be easily subdivided or to meet uh, the, the needs of modern businesses and therefore, in a sense, while that vacant stock, if you like, exists on paper, the, the, the extent to which it effectively could contribute to meeting uh, future requirements is actually very uh, limited. And I think the EGA picks up this point that Mr. Ross described, which is that there is a trend to uh, quality employment accommodation, quality employment <coughs> sites, sites that offer a critical mass. Um, none of those features really exist in the um, sort of ad hoc mix of old office accommodation that exists within uh, some of the larger buildings in the town centre. Uh, to that end, insofar as it will help meet future needs, I think it's fair to say that North Horsham uh, will be providing the type of proposition to the market that arguably Horsham has not had in the past uh, and possibly has been disadvantaged by not having that. But there may be a, a further market view on that, I don't know. Uh, who was that question addressed to? Uh, your own side or the other side? <laughs> well, the... I'm not sure, to be honest, that you know, you're really in much disagreement there um, in terms of what's been going on in the market. Mr. Shutt disagrees, but um, let's hear, hear from the council and then I'll uh, come back to you, Mr. Shutt. I think the only, the only thing I can add is that if, if you're looking um, in, in the past, Horsham has underperformed because it's had this huge oversupply, which has suppressed values. Um, which has uh, it's been a sort of vicious circle to, to um, provide new stock you obviously have to have a sort of a, a critical value to make it viable which we'll come on to in a minute um, but because of the oversupply that has um, uh, suppressed values so, 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 so the market hasn't been particularly fluid in that uh, that respect but I think if you look at a, a wider region it's quite evident from evidence that's been um, provided or points have been made today that there is demand and uh, you know, Horsham, Horsham has underperformed in the past, but it certainly has um, the ability to, to step up to the plate in the future um, if, if um, supply is, uh, is, is, is available. Yeah, OK. Um, Mr. Shutt, do you want to come back on that? And then maybe, uh, see, we've still got half an hour till lunch. See if we can start discussing, um, you know, well, this, we've sort of, Moving on to the viability of North Horsham, sort of, in, sort of inherently almost, it's sort of developing in that way. Do you want to comment on what the Council's just said and then also yes. um, um, lead off in what your view is about North Horsham? Oh, okay, I'll try. Um, uh, all right, sir. Um, the, um, uh, I want to make a couple of points, really. One is that um, I should have <coughs> mentioned this before. It isn't just a matter of the ratio between... Um, uh, office space and, and employment. It's also a matter of the function of economic growth. Now, I think, I think the economic growth assessment assumes certain levels of economic growth, which I can only say may prove optimistic. And um, in, in that context, I also, also want to agree with uh, the other gentleman from the council, whose name I don't know, the gentleman with the pink tie, when he said that uh, uh, in, in defending the interpretation of the NPPF, that is, it's the job of the council to facilitate, facilitate uh, growth rather than to, uh, to anticipate it and to provide facilities for which there is no actual demand at present. And that would, that would certainly apply to what you're doing or trying to do for Mr. Gilmore, which is obviously we were, I'm, I'm sure everyone here would approve of. But that is an existing demand. Um, and and um, uh, I, I quote there the sentence, excuse me, from the um, NPPF, which it says um, it is to, s to s provide sufficient land of the right type 
ensure that sufficient land of the right type is available in the right places to support growth. So in other words, it's not about creating growth, it's about supporting it where it's likely to occur. And of course that, that touches again on the demand side and there I would like to say that um, regarding the, the Crickmay point about, about uh, depressing the market, it seems to me a denial of economic, uh, normal market economy principles if you assume that the low value of um, uh, a commodity, be it office space or something else, would tend to depress demand for it. And I think that the trouble is, and all this talk about the, and it, may, it may well be the case that the, a lot of the office space is low, relatively low grade. But the point is, if the commercial demand for that exists, people will be prepared to pay to upgrade it. And that is what landlords, after all, are in business to do. And if they, if they don't, they redevelop it for something else. Thank you. You well, yes, to come on I, mean, to I think that's the point. Rick. No, no well, that's, I think that was the point, that there wasn't a demand for it. Well, right, but I mean, I'm sorry, I thought that, uh, the view we just heard was that um, the, the nothing, nothing fails like failure, as it were, that when you've got empty, empty space um, accruing in the town, as you certainly have had in Horsham, that tends to depress the rest of the market. Uh, and it, Horsham becomes then identified oh, as a failed oh, business area. I didn't quite take it like Sorry, that. No. Was that what you meant, uh, Mr. Walker, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Um, no, I, I, I think that um, what I was trying to paint a picture of is what's happened in the past, that um, uh, we, we, we've had this um, huge oversupply of the wrong type of stock um, and uh, modern um, office requirements demand modern space, not old obsolete space. And, and I think it is um, uh, folly to, to uh, expect that old obsolete buildings can be made into new modern buildings because floor plate um, sizes change, um, specification changes, um, the, the nature of um, trunking, communication, air conditioning changes, um, insulation factors change. And um, you, you, you're right in what you say that um, old obsolete stock will get converted to alternative uses, um, but it's not necessarily alternative office uses. It's likely to be, as has been evidenced um, in the last 12, 18 months, that obsolete stock um, as a result of the GPDO, is, um, is, is going to be converted into residential use. And uh, thereby, um, I, I see that as a healthy thing because what happens is, and, and, and it is basic economics, that your oversupply diminishes, um, demand is increasing, values therefore increase, which is a good thing, which then enables new development to take place. And then new development will attract um, new occupiers to the area, and it will provide modern alternatives to um, the likes of uh, the Aaron Business Consortium and others who um, are in maybe a, a number of uh, fragmented sites and they want to get into one site. And, and that provides alternatives, which we haven't got at the moment. Can I just ask you a question? Are, are you saying, therefore, that, that no obsolete or out, outdated business space or office space is ever upgraded? or could be? It is unusual. I can't say it never happens. I mean, we, we, we've, we've had office space empty in the town for 15 years, um, and it is, um, it, you can only classify it as obsolete space. There is no demand for it. And that may be as a result of um, low parking um, provision or substandard um, specification or in poor locations, but um, yeah, there are limited examples of buildings being refurbished. The old BT building in, uh, um, in Worthing Road, um, the building two doors away from here, um, that was the, the, the old Securical building. Um, but that, at the moment, the old Securical building is the only building in the town centre of approximately 100,000 square feet, 10,000 square metres of availability, that offers 
what is approaching grade A standard, and that is um, a building that's just over 20,000 square feet or 2,000 square meters, and that is the only building that is capable of offering modern um, specified offices in, in the town. So all the other um, redundant stock is, or, or the majority of the redundant stock is going for alternative use. It's not for refurbishment to um, satisfy demand from, uh, from, from, from businesses seeking modern accommodation. Hmm. Okay. Any other? I think we've... Uh, you still got your board up, Mr. Shutt, but I... I we, oh, sorry. You can... Um, uh, yes. Well, I, no, I, I feel that we've I've had, I think you've had a good chance to discuss questions 10 and 11, certainly, um, today. Anyone got any final comments? Yes, Mr. Shostak. Very briefly, sir. I think the, it, it, is, it, it is, in our view, important to look at Crawley and Horsham together and the combined position that they're presenting in their local plans <laughs> is not coming forward with sufficient land to meet the baseline or the higher level of, of requirement. And whether that's a failure of, um, on the duty to cooperate on a soundness basis or, or not is, is obviously for you to judge. But the, 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 their cooperation has not led to sufficient land being allocated to meet the scale of growth as forecast in the EGA. The second point is, is to do with your question 11, and that's the, the, uh, uh, the position that Horsham finds itself in vis-a-vis -vis Brighton where it is clear, as you know, from the housing discussions that Brighton is very severely constrained in terms of not being able to meet its housing requirements. But the position in, in employment land is similar. And the, 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 in terms of a duty to cooperate discussion, it, there has been no, from, from what we can tell, any constructive discussion uh, with Brighton about the extent to which Horsham could accommodate some of their economic growth. The, the Brighton and Hove Economic Partnership made representations on the Horsham plan in, in June. I'm not sure that's an inquiry document, but we can provide that for you. Where, where it's clear... Well, if they were duly made representations, it will be, and I'll okay. have Well, where it's clear that, that they see Horsham as being in a position to accommodate some of the growth of the very dynamic uh, knowledge-based industries in Brighton. It's an important part, and that goes hand-in-hand hand with the uh, objections of, of the representations from some people before you about the need to promote more economic development in the south of the district. And, and obviously we see Mayfields as being an important part of that solution. Uh, and so in terms of right type and right place, that's, I think that's part of the answer to that question. Okay. Um, do the council want to comment on that? Um, Particularly, well, the cruel, well, I mean, the... Crawley Horsham DTC point. I think well, you've, we've, that's a reiteration of an, of a, an earlier point. I'll take comments on it if you wish, and, um, and then the Brighton issue. Um, I, I thought we had actually covered the, the, the Horsham and, and Crawley um, duty to cooperate points, but, but very happy to, um, to make a comment about um, Brighton and Hove. Um, we have written to all of our neighbouring authorities, um, including Brighton and Hove. Um, explaining that we are a relatively unconstrained authority and inviting them um, to, um, to, to let us know what needs they wish us to uh, meet for them. And the, the employment has not been an issue that Brighton and Hove have raised with us, although we have addressed the issue very positively with them. And we have covered um, employment issues as part of the planning advisory service discussions, the seminars which we described to you yesterday um, and indeed we had presentation from um, the, um, the, the Coast to Capital 
um, LEP, so it is clearly a very live issue which we are debating jointly together. Okay. Um, I'll sort of have another look at all that. Um, can we just go on to question 12? Uh, this business park viable and deliverable. We'll have to start. I don't know whether we'll finish it um, before lunch. Um, you've already made some points, Mr. Mr. Sharp. The Horsham Society, I think, want to, you wanted to comment on this, didn't you, Mr. Moore? Uh, yeah. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, basically, um, of, if I may start off by just saying our general belief is that um, the problem with the HTPF is that the allocation of land numerically is about right. We think it's distributed incorrectly. So it should be spread in other area, in, in, uh, over a, cast over a wider net in the district. Um, one obvious example, of course, um, as Brighton and Ove was mentioned, is the old Shoreham Cement Works, which has been ripe for development for many years, but has never been taken forward. Um, yeah, what's happened with that, if anything? Sorry? Yeah. You might not. Oh, does that, I mean, do you know why I'm asking? I did the appeal on it. Uh, um, and that was uh, whew, 11 years ago. Uh, there was, I mean, basically they wanted some economic development and uh, leisure development with housing. And uh, I recommended against it on the housing point. And it, what's happened? Is it still there, derelict? Yeah, it still is. The, the peregrine falcons are still there, I assume. <laughs> okay, right. Okay. Um, the, uh, so that, that's one issue. The other, the other well, issue. So you're saying that's a suitable employment site? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Well, that was one of the original proposals. So I think that was. Well, you know, that was the development plan position, I think. Um, so it would be quite interesting to hear um, any comments from local people as to what might or might not happen there and why economic development's not happened. Yeah, well, if I remember correctly also, it was in the original 2007 core strategy for investigation in the future. Yeah. Mr. Walker? Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with the site uh, as I drive past it on a regular basis and uh, it's, it, it's currently the home of a, a, a haulage business, I think. Oh, is um, it? It's owned by um, a commercial landlord and uh, I think they would welcome the opportunity to do something there, but it's simply the wrong location uh, for anything, um, any, any large-scale employment um, uh, use. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the most sustainable of locations. Uh, no. as, as, as you will be aware. And yeah. it's uh, quite clearly outside of the Gatwick Diamond area. Yeah, it's, well, it's over, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Ross? It's only a very brief point, but... Uh, uh, sorry. It's a very, very brief point, but I said before that uh, Crawley is full. I promise you, it is full. So there's no space available. Now, therefore, the only logical way forward because of a limited land available, is therefore North Horsham. That is the natural site for the businesses which can't find land in Crawley, Gatwick. Yeah. The only logical site is to come there. And that's, that was the only point I really to make, is uh, it's got to go somewhere, uh, and, and it is an absolutely natural location for it to go to, quite frankly. Okay, fine, thanks for that. Uh, Mr. Morley, I don't think you'd finish when I yep, no, if I may just continue interrupted briefly. your... Um, Thank you. The, as, far, as far as North, North Horsham is concerned, there is an underutilised and underdeveloped industrial, uh, business park, if I may call it that, to the west of the current proposed one. It's been there for a long, long time, um, and it's still not been fully utilised. Uh, so one would suggest that that should be within the plan somewhere. Sorry, which site is this? It's to the west of um, the, ex the ex ex existing proposed North Horsham development. Angerswood Road going westwards. And is that, so that's what's that, a planning permission? Uh, are you referring to Broadlands? Pardon? Greylands. Bro Greylands? Greylands, yeah. Gr Gr Greylands is full. And um, fully utilised. It's a collection of older style buildings, but it is 
uh, we, we are marketing the space. It, 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 is, uh, it is full. Um, there are a couple of other sites. There's a brickyard site to the west, which um, yeah. is, uh, I don't believe there's any availability there. And then you've got Broadlands, which is about a mile and a half up Langhurstwood Road, which is a modern um, business um, development. Well, I say modern, it was built in the late 80s, but it was built on the promise of a northern link road to, to an upgraded section of the A24, which never, never happened. And uh, it has been, uh, um, it is full now, but it's full, full at uh, a very reduced cost. And uh, there, there is additional land there, but it would be never, never developed on um, because it's the wrong location. Uh, does that have any interest to you, Mr. Gilmore? Hi. I agree with um, Mr. Walker completely. There's just there's nothing available up there at all. Um, the Shaw and Brickworks, great site, but terrible location, unfortunately. It's a great opportunity, but it's just in the wrong place. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walker, have you finished? Okay, yeah, just one very final thing. I felt listening to the general conversation that we had a, uh, an oversimplification in terms of employment needs. It seemed to me that the starting, the basis was that if you just allocated land for employment, businesses would automatically follow and um, people would, with the right skills would follow those businesses. Now, in the, I can't see any justification for that at all. Um, and there is a big problem. It really goes back partly to your question 11, which is, will the employment opportunity be of the right type? It's very easy to talk about this wonderful business part. But without uh, a, cl a clearer definition, it's meaningless. Uh, right. Does the council want to respond to that? <laughs> it's not compulsory. No one's obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while you're thinking about that, does anyone else want to comment on question 12? Yes. Sorry, I've forgotten to put, write your name down. Yeah, it's uh, Frances Haig. I'm a district councillor. Hey. Haig. Haig. H A I. Oh yes, Miss Haig. Yeah, sorry, Miss Haig. H A I G H. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention first of all the old Shoreham Cement Works. I think um, the local parish council down there are looking at making use of that within their neighbourhood plan, and uh, maybe they're in discussions with the owner of the site. So that was the first thing. Um, the North Horsham Business Park, this came as uh, something out of the blue. It, the, at the time then when it was put forward, we, we, weren't, we had no evidence at all as to where that had come from. The evidence came later in the economic growth strategy from NLP. Um, but at the time, there was no basis for it. The Horsham strat um, economic strategy didn't have an, any detailed evidence. That didn't justify it. That came after the original plan. Uh, the main um, documents which were important... Sorry, what do you mean by the original plan? The preferred strategy uh, the preferred or the strategy, core strategy? Sorry, the preferred strategy. Um, at that point, there wasn't any economic evidence. The economic evidence came in the... Um, Sorry, I've mislaid it. The Horsham District Economic <laughs> Development Strategy, which came out in November 2013, but that wasn't a particularly detailed document, and at the time I did ask that it could be re redone because it didn't have enough basis and understanding of our local economy. Um, the documents produced by the Local Enterprise Partnership were more significant. They produced the Strategic Economic Plan and the European Structural and Investment Fund Strategy, and those are far more significant in terms of the duty to cooperate and understanding the growth areas, not just in the Gatwick Diamond, but within the whole LEP region. So um, the justification for the business park didn't seem to be there initially. Having heard the evidence this morning from the Aaron group, uh, I think that, that supports that, that we didn't have the evidence and we were not meeting the needs of the businesses in the town. What we were trying to do is put in a sort of, um, flashy business park that didn't necessarily meet our needs. It, whether another business would come into the area was a different question. There certainly at that time were plenty of empty office blocks within 
the Mole Valley and Crawley, and why would anybody then come to Horsham when you're losing the motorway connections? So there wasn't really justification. Um, the other side of, of our concerns was, as mentioned by the Horsham Society, that we needed to do more for the rural economy. And again, that's supported by evidence in the LEP reports. The, there is a lot of opportunity in the small towns to support their economies, to provide small businesses. It's something like 86% of the Horsham district economy is small businesses. And their needs are very different. We well, that's the number of, yeah, I just read that again this morning, but that's the number of businesses. It's not the number of people employed. No, no that's recognised. But the, having one business park was putting too many eggs in one basket. There was need to support the rural economy. There are areas of deprivation and poverty, and we need to have local businesses that, people, that is accessible, that people can get to, and that maintains the vitality of the villages. So within the Horsham District Planning Framework, we needed to be stronger about how we specify the requirement in those areas, and we need to, to, for the, the parishes to really take on board that responsibility. Um, there is an emphasis on um, tourism and leisure, and again, they need, they need to recognise what's needed for that. So there's a lot of, lot of issues there which, which need strengthening. It's on the right track, but it, it needs more. Uh, I think what I've been shocked by this morning is, is the need from Crawley that they have such a shortfall in their land, and um, that, that, that raises some more questions. Um, we do have an issue about office space in town. We've lost an awful lot. I can think of about half a dozen buildings where we, we are rapidly losing space. And the question is, why aren't businesses coming to Horsham? And would the multinational types that the business park is intended for, would they really come here? So there's a lot of questions. Thank you. Well, I mean, okay, that's for the council. I think Mr. Ross would say that it's because the type of premises aren't suitable. The quality's not, that's his main point. The quality's not there. But, okay, for the council, well, there are a few, a few issues there about the evidence base for the um, need for the business park or the type of jobs. I mean, that's, um, uh, thank you, Ms. Haig, that's a, quite a wide-ranging statement. I think you've covered points 11, 12, um, 13, uh, 14, certainly rural areas. But, I mean, but that, you know, that's, it, all these matters are interrelated, so let's just keep discussing them for a bit. Um, thank you, sir. I think the, um, the, the, the point I would really make in terms of evidence is, um, is the rather overwhelming evidence that we've been hearing this morning about the fact that we, we do need employment floor space and, um, and in fact we're being challenged that perhaps we're not, not providing um, sufficient. But I would like to bring in please um, uh, Andrew Blevins who is the Director of, of Liberty Property Trust um, who are the, um, the developer um, that are taking the lead on North Horsham. So I'd like to bring him into the discussion in relation to the viability of the business park, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Andrew Blevins. I'm the Managing Director of Liberty Property Trust. Um, we have been promoting the North Horsham project for the previous few years. Um, and sat here listening to the healthy debate this morning. It is, does feel slightly incongruous that a uh, I'm on one hand potentially singing for my supper in terms of a debate about the viability of the North Horsham Business Park, and yet I'm sort of swamped by an evidence base that perhaps there isn't enough, even if we did develop all of North Horsham Business Park. Um, put that to one side. Well, other, uh, pe other people, just you know, to be fair, put it in context, I mean, the re the, this question's on the agenda because I've had quite a lot of representations from local residents who... Yes. Um, our query, the viability of, yep. the, of, the, of, the, of the business part. I, I understand that, sir. Um, I've been developing um, offices and office business parks and letting space in office business parks for about 27 years. And I think that if we get to the nub of it, what does viability mean to us as a developer and an owner of business parks? 
it, it really isn't as, it, it, or rather it needn't be as complicated as some of these intellectual gymnastics that I've been hearing about from Mr. Shutt, for example. It's really very simple, and we have four very practical tests uh, that we would apply when looking at viability and understanding the viability of an office development such as the one proposed at North Horsham. The, f the first is property fundamentals. Um, we have a lot of properties throughout the country. If they all benefited from the property fundamentals that North Horsham Business Park had, we would have a much healthier portfolio of real estate. What do I mean by property fundamentals? I mean it is a business park that is potentially accessed directly off existing very sophisticated infrastructure. I mean that it is within 10, 15 minutes drive of what you might call the UK's second airport but might become equal first airport. Um, we may or may not have a dedicated parkway railway station. Um, we are absolutely adjacent to a very sophisticated town in the shape of Horsham which has a very blossoming ecosystem of existing businesses. Those businesses just don't have anywhere to go or expand. So when I look at the property fundamentals of this business park, it doesn't just get a tick in the box, it gets a 10 out of 10 tick in the box. We then need to, and this is kind of picking up on Mr. Shutt's point about some of the wider employment trends that are taking place. And I think there are some very obvious ones out there that we all know about. Yes, we all know that offshoring, that propensity to move jobs offshore, is actually in reverse. We know that London is once again an incredibly expensive place to live and work. And the relocations that saw Royal Sun Alliance and others move out of town in the 80s is probably something that we might well see again in the not too distant future. But perhaps what else is happening? What's going on below the waterline that gives us great comfort when we talk about the viability of the business park? And if I may, sir, could I read from um, a report by Knight Frank? Um, and Mr. Ross will forgive me for saying that, although he is a local expert, Knight Frank are perhaps the country's recognised leading agent in business parks and office development. And if I may just read a couple of paragraphs yeah, from this. Yeah, you should have submitted this or someone should have it, done if it, you were going um, to use it. But. It, uh, it, it wasn't not submitted. I just reread it recently and found it to be perhaps highly okay. pertinent. Um, and it talks about just the changing in working habits. I'll be brief. Working habits are changing. There's a lot of data here which I'm happy to submit. Um, people are working from home, more people are taking fewer trips and people are travelling shorter distances than even 10 years ago. This coupled with the ongoing drive for more sustainable live and work models suggests that there is likely to be an increasing need to develop more locations where commercial and residential components work together. Um, it's quite succinctly put but that's what I mean by there are other trends other than just kind of supply and demand metrics that are affecting uh, why we believe that this is perhaps the emerging model for successful office development going forward. Well, Thirdly... So surely that was talking about... Um, are you, is that what you're proposing then? Um, well, the North Horsham this, project is... This, a uh, I mean, are you I thought you were proposing some housing in a business park rather than a substantial area of live-work units. With... Live, of live work units. That, that quote, I assume, was talking about live work no, units. No, no, it isn't. It's, it's talking about proximity of residential and business park space. Oh, right. Okay. It's not talking about, I know what you mean, where you can live above where you work. It isn't talking about that, no. Right. So you're expecting <coughs> it's a happy to develop a business park next to quite a substantial residential area and a lot yes. of people, a lot more people than traditionally with commuting patterns a, in, are, are likely to work there than in the past. Yeah, there's perhaps an underlying symbiosis there that we might have hitherto overlooked. Um, thirdly, what does our experience tell us? Well, our experience tells us um, that, uh, and I draw our experience from our nearest live project, which is a project called Kings Hill uh, 
next to a sleepy Georgian market town of a population of just 4,000 people, which is about 45 minutes' drive from here. Um, there, uh, such is the quality of the business park offer that we regularly outperform the rest of the Kent market. To put that into context, what does that mean? It means that Kings Hill is just 4% of the local office stock, yet does 80% of Kent's office business. Um, what I'm trying to articulate is that a quality of environment that we have at Kings Hill, which can be replicated in North Horsham, will generate a substantial amount of demand, new demand, and capture existing demand that is completely stifled in terms of where does it go when it expands. Incidentally, that business park, which is now matured to about a million square feet, was done without proximity to an international airport, without proximity to a railway station, and up until four years ago, accessed of a goat track, um, as a colleague of mine used to describe it. So it goes to show that if you put a stunning amount of effort into creating a location, you can generate demand. Um, if I then look at, go back to the fundamentals of what we have at North Horsham, as a real estate investor of some substance, you can imagine that my board would be hugely excited to invest its money in this project if, as I can demonstrate, we achieved the kind of results we did at Kings Hill with less attractive property fundamentals. Uh, finally, that fourth test that I talked about, or the fourth of the four tests that I talked about in how I go about determining viability, uh, local market performance. Um, and I have to say we are in a, an advantageous point in the cycle at the moment. Most markets, um, and I heard a, a debate about this earlier, most markets, when you reach a 10% vacancy rate, that is almost at a level where you don't get the friction that you need. You don't get people moving. It's not quite enough. So it is one of the metrics that real estate developers look at, which is perhaps a tipping point at which development, even speculative development, so development without end users, is prime and ready and viable to take place. Um, the other metric that we have built into our model is that we really are looking at a fairly modest take-up of 50,000 square feet gross, circa 40,000 square feet net per annum. Um, for the last four years, we have consistently outperformed that number at Kings Hill, which, you know, go back to my fundamentals point, the fundamentals there aren't as good as, they are, as, as you're blessed with in Horsham. And there are... What's your total floor space you're proposing? at uh, North Horsham is 50,000 square metres gross. Yeah, but that was per year, but what's the total? A per 50,000 square metres? In total, so 500,000 yeah, okay. square feet in, gro uh, in gross terms in total. Well, you're mixing your feet and metres uh, there. Uh, so, you're right, I so apologise, 50, it's so <laughs> an industry 5, habit. 5,000 metres roughly per annum gross yes. take-up yeah. over 10 year, for 10 years to yeah. a total of 50,000. Okay? Yeah. Right. The town is already running at that level, so even if we don't move the needle, we're going into a market where that is kind of meat and drink to us. So you're, all oh right, so I mean, in a nutshell, you're telling me um, on behalf, you know, that this, in response to the questions, you've got no doubts whatsoever about the viability of this. A absolutely no doubts. I mean, I know that residents might ask, and we're, we're conscious to lunchtime, um, I've read about another scheme of yours where you didn't develop a business park, residents have alleged, and you got the use changed to, to residential. Where was that and what were the reasons for that? Yeah, um, that's the Kings Hill project. And I think that you're absolutely right. I, I, on reflection, I would say that the master plan that was conceived in the 1980s was like everything else in the 1980s. It was... <laughs> It had that 1980s feel about it. It had padded shoulders and it was too big for its boots. Um, putting it bluntly, I would say that our eyes were bigger than our bellies in the 1980s. And the notion that a sleepy community could support 
a, uh, an office consent of 2 million square feet was, I, 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 as I say, I'm throwing myself out here, it's, it, it was too big. It was very 1980s. Um, so we've now settled as a much more sustainable mix where we have more houses, but we have an end product of about a million square feet. So we employ about 7,000 local people um, on a business park where the nearest local ecosystem is Westmoreland. Okay, which is so you reduced, it's, and Sam. it's half as big as planned. Yes, basically. so I think we've got something that is, quote, fit for purpose, whereas the 1980s model that we started with at Kings Hill was just, it, it proved to be a little bit too ambitious. Okay. Um, I'm sure you've still got some questions, haven't you, some of the residents about this? Uh, um, how much do you have? Yeah, well, uh, all right. If well, we've got comments on this, I'm going to stop for lunch, I think. We'll just well, have to break, I think, and um, if, if you come back at break, 2 o'clock. It might go on longer. I haven't got very many myself. Others may have theirs, of course. Yeah. Um. Can, I, can I... Sorry to interrupt this. Uh, there was just one other point that... Those modifications to uh, the business park in Kent were done in a very collegiate kind of way. Um, we worked closely with our county council partner and with the local borough council. And if you read the parish council's uh, uh, prepared notes at the phase three planning committee meeting, they actually opened up by saying they supported our proposals. And I think that points to, as I say, a collegiate approach to how we went about it, knowing that our eyes were bigger than our bellies to begin with, and we all worked to produce something that was much more fit for purpose, and which the community supported. Okay, well, um, some of this community, I don't think, currently support this proposal at the moment, but maybe you want to reflect on um, what's being said, and uh, I'll come back at two o'clock. Uh, with um, starting with questions from uh, the residents on, on question 12. We'll have to carry on. I'm sure we're going to finish today. Um, we've covered some of the other areas already, I think, and um, the retail development town centres was a discreet point. I'm sorry, we, I thought we might get on to that after lunch, but we'll just have to leave it, and uh, I, need, I need a break as well. So we're, we'll, is 50 minutes or so just about, is that okay for everyone? Yeah. Okay, we'll resume at 2 o'clock. Thanks very much. It's about the viability of this and deliverability. Well, um, I've, I've, I've already made quite a lot in general terms about, about the... Um, uh, the case for uh, the, any, any argument for need for more, more significantly more business space and pointed out that the, there's a huge amount of evidence including from the Gatwick Diamond Initiative's own documentation that there isn't such a need and um, certainly not in Horsham um, the only other point which I have outstanding and I'd like to make is that um, a report uh, commissioned by the council um, about a year ago. They had a number of reports commissioned on this subject to, to determine the um, potential demand for this new business park. And the last one that I know of was carried out by a firm called Styles Harold Williams. Yes, I've seen that. Well, uh, in that case, perhaps you will be aware, I haven't read it for some time, that they... Um, uh, although they, they are as polite as possible, and of course they, if I may say so, they are aware of the kind of, they're probably aware of the kind of um, um, findings their clients want to hear. As a, as a consultant myself, I'm often in that position, or have been. Um, but still, all they, the best they can come up with is a statement that the investment, an investment of this kind would be highly speculative and that um, nothing on the type, particularly bearing in mind this is a grade A uh, business park, the, the top of the market, I think I can say, um, nothing of this kind has been built in the area, um, including a, right down to Brighton in the last 15 years. I think I'm right on that. 
and that um, it would not attract, it would not, given, given the kind of rents they'd have to charge, it would not attract the um, necessary investment. It's, in other words, it's not commercial or not viable, if you will. So that's, that's all I have to say about that. But uh, well, then, hang on, this is a report. Is this the one dated the 7th of February 2014? That's probably the one, yes. Okay, well, I'm sorry, I should have the precise uh, I mean, I, I don't think I should allow you to say that they're just saying what Horsham want them to say. I mean, I have to take this on face value as a professional no, all right. report. Okay. But, um, uh, and the fourth conclusion uh, says encouraging speculative development would provide much needed grade A employment space and help move rents on, which would provide confidence to other owners to invest in upgrading their accommodation and improving supply going forward. That's the Well, you can, you can say much needed, but on the other hand, if you're also saying it wouldn't attract an investment, you're also implicitly saying it's not viable. Now, where do you, how do you marry these apparently contradictory conclusions? Okay, well, let's the council deal with that point first. I'm not I'm not sure I quite read it like that, but what's the Council's um, case on this report and in answer to that question? Yes, the report that was written by Styles Harold Williams was something which we had um, requested to get a, a local flavour, um, independent flavour in terms of what the potential for business floor space was in Horsham District um, and the, uh, the conclusions um, are, as I read it were very supportive of the type of development that is proposed um, on land north of Horsham um, but it might be useful perhaps to have a, a, a market view um, on that particular issue oh, excuse me bless you yeah carry on I'm trying to keep, pay attention despite this. I'm sorry, this has uh, come on quite badly, my Keep I, going. I, I, I think that the point Mr. Shutt is making here, I mean, he's, he's added a, a word in which is quite critical. He, he, Stiles referred to um, in point four and conclusions encouraging speculative development, and Mr. Shutt has added the word highly speculative. And I think um, he, he, he's, he's misinterpreting the, the word speculative. When, when in a property sense it's quite understood that speculative development is simply development that, it, that goes ahead um, uh, anticipating demand um, rather than high risk which um, is, is implied if you use the word highly. I don't know if that helps. Well since we seem to have got into um, cross-examination could I ask the, if, what they have to say about the fact that it would not attract investment? Well, have, I, have I misquoted? I haven't read it for some time, I do admit, but I apologise um, for that. <coughs> that. That is my clear... Is, my yep. I'm, I'm happy to take that one, sir. Um, well, we are a consenting adult in this real estate game, and trust me, I go back to the property fundamentals that I described earlier in some detail, and they attract our investment. Well, I, I know <coughs> that's your opinion, <coughs> sir, but... Um, what I'm questioning is, is, is it in dispute that the Styles Harold Williams report suggests this would not attract investment? Because of the I, I don't know where it says that. I was just wondering if it would be possible for Mr. Shutt to just point me to the particular part of the report that led him to that conclusion. Please. Have you got a copy of it there? May I? My apologies. Can I? Uh, uh, so, can I? Oh, how would you wish to proceed? I, I mean, it will take me a minute or two. Do you want to move on to someone else, or? I, I, have, I have another. I have another point to make as well. Yes. Hello. <clears throat> um, I'm not a planning expert in any way, but I used to run business businesses down on Manor Royal. And I know things change all the time, 
But I would not have considered, although I live near Horsham, or oh, sorry, although I live near Horsham, I wouldn't have considered uh, moving my business there or even starting a business there because of the lack of decent roads. And if this plan goes ahead, the 246 will, eat, will be gridlocked. So if I was a starting business today, why wouldn't I go to Crawley? Because despite what's been said, there's lots and lots of units there of all sizes where I've got links to the railway, the motorway and the airport. So I considered then and still do Horsham a market town and not suitable for large amounts of warehousing. Thank you. Uh, just, just as a reminder, we're not proposing warehouse development, just to clarify that use point. Okay, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, Mr Shostak, you wanted to comment on this point about viability, deliverability? Uh, thank you. It, it really is about uh, North Horsham, and it's, it's responding to the point that was made earlier, or two points made earlier, the eggs in one basket challenge that, <laughs> that the local plan is facing now in that because there's only one principal new allocation of land, uh, Horsham is putting all their eggs in the North Horsham basket. Now, in, in terms of soundness tests, I think there, there is a burden on, on Horsham District to explore the alternatives, the reasonable alternatives in economic terms and to demonstrate that the preferred framework will be effective in realizing its economic potential. And, and the question that, that, that I put is we've heard this, this, this morning that there are three main sources of demand, expansions from Horsham elsewhere in the district, uh, overspill, if you don't mind the phrase, from Crawley, and indeed new investment from, from elsewhere. And we then heard that uh, there really are no new sites in Crawley, and that North Horsham, uh, the, the, the promoters, are planning to build it out at, build, build out North Horsham at 5,000 square meters per annum. So, we have the Gatwick Diamond, one of the most important growth areas in the south of England. We have Horsham and Crawley at the heart of the Gatwick Diamond. And we have a planning assumption of 5,000 square meters per annum as our response to that. Now, I would suggest that, that for the plan to be sound, the, the council needs to demonstrate that it looked at reasonable alternatives to putting all their eggs in one basket uh, so as to accommodate more growth and be compliant with the NPPF. And it does not appear to have done so. Okay, that's definitely something for the council to respond to, please. <clears throat> yes, so when we did our assessment of, um, of sites um, as well as our assessment of needs for uh, the district, um, we were also looking at um, how those could be realised, how they would be, uh, become achievable. And in that respect, that's why we have followed up with a strategic allocation in this document, um, which we were able to investigate the deliverability um, of that particular option. And we have not included smaller um, sites as we have already discussed, but allowed the flexibility within the overall policy framework um, for further employment floor space to come forward um, if the market uh, were to, 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 bear, to bear that. Um, I was just looking through our sustainability appraisal in terms of, um, of looking at um, our assessment of that, but I can come back to you if I, if I may, please. Anyone else want to comment on that from the marketing perspective? 
danger of having everything all in one basket? We, we certainly don't see it as a problem um, in, in terms of addition to Horsham's existing stock. It's, uh, if, if we're adding um, five, uh, 50,000 um, square metres of additional stock to a market which currently has um, approximately 700,000 um, sorry, 70,000 square metres of stock, um, it's, it's obviously quite a, a significant um, uh, gain on, on what already exists, but I think it's, it, it is appropriate, uh, bearing in mind we've already lost 30,000 um, square metres of stock to alternative uses. So, so not only does it um, sort of replace what's been lost, it also provides additional um, space to, to satisfy uh, expansion and uh, inward investment to the area. Okay, Mr. Shutt. I, I must apologise. I couldn't find the, <coughs> the wording. I, I mean, if I do a search, it must have been in a different document. I, I, what, all I would say, and again, I'll have to check or, when, we, when we come back to, we'll be studying this in the context of North Horsham. Will we not? Uh, uh, well, next? yes, but I was hoping that. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're looking at the overall development there and at North Horsham on uh, next week, but um, obviously I'll put well, this question in to discuss the economic and the I, business part can, can, to try and cover as much of it as we could today. Can I say, I mean, I devote Come as much back to me if you want. I, I do, I do, can, I, my apologies, sir. Can I say I devote as much time as I, of my time as I can to these things? And I've extensively written about this and I've cited this point from it's possible it was from the Nathaniel Litchfield report, I don't know, but rather well, than... Well, that's why I was checking with you which document you meant, because, I, you know, obviously I need to refer back to it. I, I'll, let, let's, the examination remains open, so come back to it next Tuesday. Thank you. Um, uh, Mrs. White, again, I, I think I you... I apologise for not getting the data out, uh, as I should have done. Um, can, can I make uh, one other point while I'm on? Yes, OK. Yeah. Um, Mr... Um, Levins, before lunch, uh, referred to, um, he, he was responding, I think, to my point about the changing market, and he said that what is happening now uh, is, uh, in the labour market, is a sub substantial reshoring of, uh, lab of, of uh, work that has gone overseas. Now, I wonder what, what type of things those are, because... My information is that reshoring affects mainly sectors like uh, um, call centres, which are relatively low uh, uh, cost, <coughs> certainly low labour cost activities. Aside from the fact I wasn't referring to that, I was referring to te technological change. But if, if, um, if uh, I'd like to know what, what, what Mr. Blevins has in mind in terms of reshoring, such as could... Uh, possibly take advantage of a high-grade business space such as you're proposing to develop. Is that in order? Yeah. Thank you. Just briefly, um, well, as an owner and operator of real estate, we certainly don't consider call centres to be remotely blue-collar. Um, they are a very fundamental part of modern-day business operations, critical to the finance and business service sector, of which we have a preponderance of tenants on our other regionally active business part, which you know is Kings Hill. And it, it's possibly something I, I, I haven't got the data to hand, but I could show you that some of the tenants that moved some of that business offshore, for example, Capita, who are a tenant of ours, have recently brought some of that business back. Um, it is something we're experiencing, and it's something that a lot of other people are experiencing. It is a growth sector, and we certainly do not consider it to be uh, not a high quality sector of industry. A high cost as well? I don't know what you mean by high cost. Well, I mean, are they paying, paying uh, the workers more than £10 an hour, for example? I, I can't comment on what their workers are being paid. I'm just saying it's business critical to modern 21st century business in many walks of life. All right, well, perhaps that's enough on that. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. White. Oh, right. Um, uh, I, actually, I have a, a question for Mr. Blevins as well, if that's okay. Um, the, your um, business park in Kent, 
can you, you, you're talking about grade A business premises for North Horsham. Is the, um, are the business premises in Kent grade A or are they something different? Um, they are high quality business premises, yes. So, so if you, you wanted to refer to them as grade A, that's, a, that's an industry colloquialism, yes. Oh, well, I'm not familiar with <laughs> that. Okay, fine. Well, um, neither am I particularly, <laughs> but I, I mean, I well, don't they, know they quite number of, sort, I mean, I get what you mean. Right, they think. perform a number of, uh, of, or they have a number of attributes that you would expect to house successful 21st century businesses. So they are well located. They have got some form of air handling, mechanical air handling, and they are modern, adaptable internal spaces with generally uh, low cost energy within the spaces. So they're relatively cost effective to run. That's what we mean by grade A premises. Mm -hmm. So sort of analogous to the um, shopping centre, you know, grade A. Well, that, you know, I've heard, yes. it used, I've heard that yes. used in... That sort of rent, you know. My, <laughs> and okay, I'm not being self deprecating. Uh, the advantage that North Horsham has is that it is a superior location to Kingsill. Um, yeah, uh, yes, actually, on, on that, uh, it's being a superior location. You mentioned that uh, the, the sort of it was close to a uh, good road network and would be highly visible, etc. Those were the, some of the things that um, you need to have My for, property a, for fundamentals, a good business yes. park. Um, and you mentioned that uh, you could get from um, the business park to sort of Gatwick in 10 minutes. Um, have you ever tried to do that yourself? Uh, regularly, because that's the journey I take back to Kings Hill. Um, uh, possibly a little bit of artistic license, I accept. Yes. Maybe sometimes it's 15 so. minutes, not 10. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I wonder how much other artistic license you've taken on other things, but that's beside the point. Um, you, you mentioned your, I think you said 28 years of experience in 27. this field. Oh, right, 27. Oh, artistic well, license on my part. Um, 27 years of experience. Um, can you just tell me, liberties themselves, how much experience do they have in this country? I believe they're an American company. Um, how much experience do they have in this company, in this country? And apart from the um, development in King's Meadow in Kent, are there any other business parks of the sort you envisage <coughs> in North Horsham that you can point to as being, you know, a good example of what liberties can produce? Um. We've been active in the UK since 1989. Um, that's when the company was selected by Kent County Council in a beauty parade to develop what is known as King's Hill um, and won that competition um, against several other uh, well-known UK developers. Um, our other developments are scattered through the UK. They tend to be office orientated. Um, the most directly comparable other than Kings Hill would be the Cambridge Biomedical Campus. Um, but I couldn't point to another Kings Hill. There is no other Kings Hill in the UK. Uh, no, so, so it follows, I assume, that uh, there, there's nothing apart from Kings Hill that would compare with what you're proposing for North Horsham. Uh, we're proposing a mixed-use development, so there are yes, plenty uh, of yes. those examples. Mm. What, what are you well, getting at? Uh, well, yeah. I just wondered... If Where's what, this going, Mrs. White? Well, because I I mean, we're the testing here was. the allocation, you know, uh, not no, necessarily the I'm just wondering credentials. what the experience is for this sort of business park and, you know, to say, would it be viable, uh, given the experience at uh, Kings, um, Kings Hill, Kings Meadow, I believe, beg your pardon, um, where Kings you Hill. had to downsize the size of the business park and apply for a change of use to residential, which I assume was much more profitable for liberties than the business park. Um, not, not, not at unless all. Unless you it, want to it, comment It was on a that. case of right sizing, as I made the point very carefully right. earlier on. Okay. I admitted the fact that our eyes had been bigger than our bellies mm -hmm. in 1989 mm -hmm. when the original concept, as put forward by the county council, was for a two million square foot business park and a smaller allocation of houses. What actually happened is that through the passage of time, we realized that that, that, wasn't, in, that wasn't the correct balance. It wasn't a case of turning anybody's back on the success of the business park. In fact, there is still a substantial allocation of land available for business space at Kings Hill. 
and as I also said earlier, our methodology and approach to that conversion was wholeheartedly embraced by the county, Tunbridge and Morling Borough Council, and the parish council. Right. Well, it, uh, actually, if there's so much more business land available, <coughs> um, why have you not developed that? Uh, because uh, is it profitable well, for you to leave it empty? It was a case of right-sizing the project, and I think that the I national planning that. policy so, framework would point very clearly that you are well within your limits to revisit master plans and right-size them. It's not a case of it not being viable. I admitted that perhaps the original allocation was incorrect. And please bear in mind that this allocation is 500,000 square feet. So it's 20% of the Kings Hill allocation. So I, so I think that the world has learnt its lesson. We have learnt our lessons in a humble way. We are offering something that I think is eminently viable. And actually, it possibly could be even larger with what I've heard today. Mm. Um, could I just make one other point mm -hmm. um, about the, uh, building the business park and indeed the residential? Well, yeah, um, let's get side. back to that because I mean it's not really a test of Liberty's credentials. I mean, it, you know, they, they might not even develop it. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, it's possible. But, I mean, we're talking about an allocation here and, and the merits of the allocation. Now, the council's. Um, uh, ask them to support its case that it is viable um, so that's what we're testing not, not yes. an, um, an individual company. With regard to the allocation of, of land if you like, yeah. um, I believe the NPPF um, says that you should build on brownfield sites first um, this is going to be a development taking up greenfield land before the brownfield land has been um, used up so I well, I think if you're going to, okay, well that's, that's a point, that's a point for the council, I think. But I mean, I think, um, <laughs> this goes back to some of the old shopping arguments that we used to have about disaggregation. But um, are you aware of, then of any site capable of taking 50,000 square metre business park within the urban area of Horsham? that should have been brought forward first? Well, n no, I'm not, but I'm just saying that with all the, this morning we heard the talk about um, business premises in Horsham and indeed Crawley being empty, and I'm just saying, should those not be used first before we uh, set up well, okay, well this site on, on North Horsham? I think I know what the council's gonna say, but please can you say it anyway? Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> we are looking at the reuse of brownfield sites and um, yes, indeed, we uh, would be wanting to bring those forward as quickly as the market would take those. Um, to give um, Mrs White and yourself and others some comfort in terms of the deliverability and the intentions of Liberty Property Trust, uh, we are already involved in pre-application discussions and a, a planning performance agreement um, is just being finalised between us in terms of the timing of the planning application and its determination. Uh, well, I was going to ask about that. Um, so that would have in it provisions um, requiring step provision of both business park and residential and other community development and the school and all the rest of it. Yes, sir. I thought we'd, we'd want to explore that further on the North Auction yeah. Day, so I don't actually have the PPA with me today. Okay, the, the, what I thought you, I don't know, my, my question to you is, is there a, we've heard uh, this morning from some other people about uh, Mr. Ross, amongst others, about the need for a certain type of business space, and that the problem has been that the, um, uh, even from, your, from Mr. Walker, I think, uh, that the, business space that Mrs. White's talking about, the brownfield space, um, isn't suitable for modern needs. So that's, um, that's why um, a greenfield site is needed, even if some of the brownfield site needs to be redeveloped. But I thought the point you might have made was that it's a sort of, um, there's nowhere of this size to, I mean, I assume that one needs, 
you know, a, a business park of certain size to get the critical momentum to get the, the sort of markets to market it as a as a grade A destination and a, and a grade A attraction for business, which some disaggregated, albeit if redeveloped with better premises sites within the town centre, might not provide. Is, is that right or yes, wrong? Yes, sir, that's, that's the, what the evidence was suggesting to us. We have examined all of those um, brownfield sites, potential sites within the town centre. Not only are they not large enough, but they are not suitable for the type of provision um, that is needed. If, if I could just sort of add to that, I think absolutely. There's, there's been very clear evidence, we've heard some of it this morning, about that increasingly the trend is to achieve business parks with a kind of minimum critical mass, if you like, and that are you know, clearly identifiable, are recognised business locations, and it becomes a lot harder to achieve that business mix and the supporting infrastructure that it needs, in a sense, if that is if that product is broken up into multiple locations. It's not to say that you can't have single office buildings on their own, but essentially there is something very specific and it's a gap in the market in Horsham specifically for that type of product which currently doesn't exist as it stands. Now, I think also it's worth pointing out the MPPF at Power 21 bullet point uh, two does encourage uh, local authorities to set criteria or identify strategic sites for local and inward investment to match the strategy and to meet anticipated needs over the plan period. In, in our view, I think the, the, the approach at North Horsham is entirely consistent uh, with that uh, general, gen general approach to how you plan for uh, business needs. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mrs Hay? Thank you, sir. Sorry, Ms. Haig, I don't know. Mrs. Yeah. Oh, or Councillor. Um, I just wanted to pick up on a couple of points. Something that Mr. Walker said was that the office space on North Horsham would replace the office space that we're losing in the town. Um, one of the comments I made earlier is that that is not necessarily the space that we need because, as the Aaron Partnership was saying, they needed manufacturing space and that hasn't been allowed for. It, one business park in North Horsham it is, does not meet all the requirements of the whole district and there, there wasn't the evidence to explain what, what was required. So that does need looking at. Um, another point is that effectively if you look at this road that we're in here, North Street, this is a brownfield site and nearly every office block along here is being converted but not to office space. Not, it's not being redeveloped as one cohesive plan of, of um, grade A space, it's being converted to residential. And overall in the town, there are at least 200 new homes coming within those brownfield sites. So, yeah, well, so uh, what's your point about that? Um, I mean, that was just to explain. That you could use that to argue that you do need to have a North Horsham business park because, you know, to create the sort of type of space people need. We, it's, 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 I find it quite complicated because there are, we are providing more homes in the town, which is something that my party supported, and that's yeah. brilliant. We're getting the development where people have got the sustainable um, homes that you can walk to the station, you can walk to the restaurants, and, and so that's wonderful. But there is a question mark over what need there is for quality business space, yeah. whether businesses would come to Horsham or whether they would stop further away. Um, what I don't think we've addressed is the need for the other types of businesses. Not every business needs an office. Some of them need different premises. And I don't oh, yeah, no, I take that so, point. So, yeah. so that yeah. was one of those. But I, I, the question about... Well, that wouldn't using be... I mean, so, but, you know, I suppose, that, I mean, the plan could allow for... Um, you know, some say that to happen here, but I mean, it's not necessarily going to be the right planning. But are you saying that um, the North Horsham allocation should make some allowance for manufacturing as well as, you know, the, the business part that uh, is being proposed? I'm I think that it's looking from the evidence that we've heard over the last two days that that may well have to be the case that to meet the needs of the businesses which exist here already or which are wanting to expand, that that may be what's required and not just a grade A business park. 
Okay, well, it could be an either. Might not necessarily even be an either or. Ed, do the council want to comment on that? Um, the um, makeup of the um, the business park has not been um, has not been stipulated and not been tied down. If there is a need for other uses, um, I think Mr. Blevins said uh, earlier, it sounded as if there there was a uh, potential for that area to be enlarged um, given the evidence that we had um, this morning. Um, so there is, there's no prescription in terms of um, the quantity or um, the, the, the mix of employment floor space. Except that that would mean fewer homes presumably. It might be that through the more detailed master plan that further space could be, um, could be accommodated. What we have before us is a concept master plan map. Uh, clearly, a detail has to lie behind um, a concept master plan map before you get to the, 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 the blob stage that we, we have um, within the Horsham District Planning Framework. Um, but there will be further details as the... Um, the planning application process progresses. Mm, okay. uh, sorry, Mr. James, I think I'll give, and then I'll ask Mr. Shostak um, again. Going back a little bit now, but um, uh, I'll, I'll keep them fairly brief. Um, I think um, as the issue that we've raised in our representations about the wording of the policy in terms of being high quality um, business parks, so maybe there's some um, flexibility there. Um, uh, just on the matter of flexibility, it was really in response to um, uh, the gentleman from Mayfield Market Town's question about the, the um, testing of alternatives um, and then the response from the council regarding the flexibility of the plan below um, North Horsham level. Um, and um, it's, I'd just like to ask the council really um, whether without the inclusion of smaller sites and possibly additional sites, um, whether that flexibility can actually deliver um, the quality of space that's been talked about today. Sorry, I'm not quite... Um, can you just restate that? What well, the, the, um, the response, about the response the was really in, uh, uh, from the Council about neighbourhood plans delivering... Oh, that. whether the neighbourhood plans will... But, but well. whether neighbourhood plans would be more better placed to actually be delivering smaller units, small starter units for small businesses in their localities. Uh, okay, well, I'm not sure. We, well, briefly, please, because we've been through that. I mean, uh, yes, dear. Well, just just briefly, sir. Um, because of the rural nature of our district, we have a a, a very large number of home-based businesses. Um, it's a very entrepreneurial area, and um, some of our greatest demand um, is for small units for people to move on from, and I think you referred to your business starting um, from home indeed, and, and as many of those local businesses have. So in terms of neighbourhood planning, we feel that they're best placed to provide for the smaller and move on type premises. Okay, Mr Shostak. Thank you, sir. Very briefly, clearly it, it's our view that Mayfields would be a useful addition to Horsham's employment offer. Uh, it, it would be very helpful in, for preparation for uh, the Mayfields Day. Um, if we could see a copy of the planning performance agreement for North Horsham, setting out the delivery time scale and any other requirements that presumably have been agreed given the importance of, of North Horsham uh, to, to the council strategy. Uh, so, who will that be helpful to, Mr Shostak? I think it would be helpful you, to you, sir. You or me? <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> In terms of understanding how the, uh, the, the two schemes would work side by side. Uh, well... <laughs> Quite a bit of a quantum leap there, I think. Um, do you want to ask, where are we with that? I mean, I was going to ask um, some questions about uh, phasing 
deliverability of various aspects or whatever on a, on a major allocation site. Obviously, it would be remiss if I didn't do that, especially having seen some of the representations. So, uh, where are you with that? And uh, is, is there anything that's publicly available? That's some a phasing uh, is already in the public domain. It, mm. it might not be enough for your satisfaction, but at the moment well, you might want to question that. But um, it's, the, it's there. What, what's your answer, please? Um, oh, Mr. Blemins has started to talk today about um, the, uh, the quantum of business floor space coming, coming forward on an annual basis. Um, the, um, the PPA isn't publicly available at present, um, but we could, if you wanted to see it, sir, we could... Um, it isn't finally signed off, but we could seek to do that, to bring that before you, if that would be helpful for you. Um, well, I've got... Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yes, I mean, it, well, it would have to be publicly available. I can't just be for me, but, um, I mean, that's, you know, part of the issue. We've, we've got... We talk about housing deliverability tomorrow um, in terms of phasing or whatever. So, uh, I mean, anything like that in terms of imp the deliverability of the whole scheme and when it might happen would be useful. I mean, that's, that's for you, really. But, uh, I mean, I'm going to ask questions about it and I'm sure others will as well. Yeah, we'll make as, as much information available publicly as, we're, as we can. Okay. Um, right. The... Um, yeah... Uh, I think that don't go away at the end of the session, Mr. Shostak, because I want to ask you a question about programming uh, uh, or, or someone from your side or Mr. Rhodes or, or someone. Um, uh, okay. Um, has anyone else got any other questions or want to say anything about the business park at North Horsham viability, deliverability? Because I think we've had quite a good... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bearing in mind, I was going to say that there will be, I want to deal with most of it today, but um, we still will be talking about the whole allocation next week. Mrs. White? Um, just, just on a point of the, the, the business park, and, and possibly it, uh, it applies to the residential as well on that side. Um, can uh, the council tell me one of the, the points made about how it would be attractive for business is because there was going to be there were, everybody thought there was going to be a station there now where are we on um, uh, negotiations with network rail to provide a station for, for, to service the site because if there isn't going to be a station there that will be, make those um, business premises a lot less attractive to people coming into the area. I just wondered well, where we were at on the, on, the, on the railway. Well. I was expecting to deal with that on Tuesday, actually. I think it might be best dealt with in the round. Uh, Mr Moore, did you want to...? Yes, just two very quick uh, comments, really. When I was listening to the um, virtues of... Uh, employment on North Horsham, whether it was viable or not, I was taken by the way it was described effectively as being a port sunlight of the southeast, going back to my Uliva days, when they used to talk with um, fond memories of how everybody lived on the site where they worked. The reality in today's world is that um, you do not attract people to work, in my opinion, by building houses next door to where there is potential employment. People work where they choose to. So I think one has to be very careful when you're looking at the placement of an employment site. You do not link it to where you may or may not place houses. The second thing that still confuses me is that in the HDPF is that even though we have this uh, space in North Horsham proposed for employment, uh, it says that people that will get first choice of it are the existing businesses in the town. That does seem a very logical way to attract additional employment. Does the council want to make any comment on that? Could, could I, whilst the council look at the, perhaps the second point, um, on the sort of the live work play concept that I think you were perhaps describing. Um, 
I'll let you have this report, which I'm conscious um, the inspector said that uh, it perhaps would have been useful to have submitted some time ago, which just talks about this notion that because of the changing patterns of, of, uh, 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 of commuting, particularly, that there is a growing trend. Um, and I, I just read those words again. Increasing need to develop more locations where commercial and residential components work together. That's one of the world's biggest and most respected firms of chartered surveyors saying that, not just me. We've benefited that from that and experienced that at Kings Hill um, because we have there, we're proud of the fact that there are 15% of, it's a horrible phrase, but economically active households actually that uh, live on Kings Hill, work on Kings Hill. So it helps us kind of promote a sustainability story that is five quite zero. Awesome. Pardon me? 50. 15, 15. 1.5. Oh, I was going to say, that's yeah, no, 50, no, no. 50 would be a <laughs> 50 would be phenomenal, nice. <laughs> phenomenal percentage. Yeah. Um, All right, no. I, can you, I, I don't want to go back into that again. I think that should be submitted as a public document yeah. for the, uh, the, um, for the examination library. Uh, so okay. I could come back on the, um, on the question about us restricting the use of the, the business park to existing um, employers within the district. What the policy actually confirms is that um, the first phase of the business development should be, uh, should be able to meet demand, including the needs of existing uh, employers within the district who wish to relocate, mm. and that is because of um, a number of inquiries that have come to the District Council um, of existing employers where we don't wish them to move away from the district. Uh, we want to be able to provide them for fit for purpose premises and uh, we're eager to do that in the first phase. It is not a restrictive policy, however. Okay. Right. I've... I don't, does anyone, I don't think anyone here um, was querying the, um, I think that was from another representative who didn't turn up, question 13. We've already touched on the key employment areas policy being justified and deliverable. The council's already made, Mr Charles will make some comments on that. Does anyone want to comment on that? Uh, yeah, if you wish. Are you against the policy? Not particularly. I'd just like to ask a question if that's... Is that okay? Um, depends what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what if I ask you? Well, I'm trying to get, move things on a bit. I mean, I'm, well, I'm testing, you know, the, the, the issue was, is that policy justified and effective? So I'm just taking this back to the um, NPPF. What, is, is your question related to that? It, it's it's um, in relation to the retention of um, key employment areas, yes. Yeah. It, just my question is, is the retention of key employment areas or the reallocation of key employment areas. We, we touched on the Novartis this morning situation. Um, but what we see as business owners is the possibility of employment areas disappearing and not being reallocated when they... I, I fully appreciate sometimes they have to be turned over to housing. That's common sense. That's development. Um, are there, is it covered that they are reallocated rather than just disappear? Well, the key employment areas aren't. I mean, they're retained as employment areas. That's the whole point of them. Anything more to add? Uh, yes, so we, we have two categories as we, um, uh, we went through this uh, earlier today. We have our key uh, employment areas and with those there is the intention that they be retained. There may be some adjustment. In fact, we'd be encouraging that the uh, uh, in, in a number of cases, their regeneration, which may involve some changes in boundaries, um, but we are expecting to see these intensify. And then we have um, the established uh, locations for employment use, which are not, or weren't previously identified in the proposals map, um, necessarily in, in the light of uh, um, uh, PPG and local uh, MPPF rather and local circumstances uh, we are required to make a uh, have a more flexible um, approach to those because uh, um, it's, uh, it's quite clear from government policy that they should not be uh, retained if there isn't the demand so the wording of uh, policy 8 does um, 
acknowledge the contribution that these sites make and puts in some tests to, or a test to, uh, uh, to make sure that the, uh, um, the market for uh, industrial and business premises has been properly tested before we would contemplate moving to another use. All right. Uh, Mr. Shostak, you've got your board up. Are you? Yes, very, very quickly, I mean, I've sir. I've said that policy eight is not justified. I'm just trying to remind myself of what your issue with this is. It, it, it's really very, very simple. And, and we have earlier today expressed our concerns about whether the 14.8 hectares of consented or allocated land is the core, should be treated as core to the employment land supply to meet the baseline or the higher level of growth. We've said that, but I really just want to reinforce uh, the way you've asked the question is that it, it's not justified because the reasonable alternatives to wholly relying on that have not been set out and explored, <coughs> Mayfield obviously being one of those alternatives. And, and we don't think it's going to be fully deliverable for all the reasons that we went, went out earlier. So this very fundamental part of, of, of the Council's economic development strategy, this fundamental building block, does not pass the test of soundness. Well, okay, it's for the council to argue. I didn't quite appreciate this, I'm afraid. Uh, that, so are you saying then that um, uh, the plan should be changed by allocating the Mayfield Market Town with some new employment in it and then Policy 8 deleted? No, I'm not asking for Policy 8 to be deleted, but I'm asking well, that we what's don't... What's not sound about it? Well, What's it's, wrong with it? it in, in terms of justified, is it, you've asked whether it's justified, and my understanding of justification is that it has to be considered against the reasonable alternatives, and it hasn't been considered against uh, the alternative of, of including Mayfields in the supply as well. That's an interesting point about a policy rather than an alternative site. Um, what's the reasonable alternative then? If, what other, well, if, if you're saying that it's not justified, I mean, presumably not sound, therefore, presumably it shouldn't be included in the plan, uh, what's your alternative? No, no, I'm... I'm it, that you're proposing as a reasonable alternative in its place? No, uh, I'm proposing, and, and if I'm misplaced in suggesting that, please, please say so, that it, the, the, the plan as a whole has to be judged sound, and the plan as a whole now relies particularly on policy eight being completely effective to meet the scale of growth. So I'm not asking that... Well, it doesn't just rely on that, does it? Well, it relies basically on policy eight and North Horsham, full stop. And, well, and some other things, but yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, well, um, and so all I'm asking. I think you are misplaced, actually. I mean, okay. I really, I, I take your point that you, you're saying. I mean, I've got, you, you know, I've got all your points about the fact that you think consider all of this isn't enough, and that Wheaton Mayfield is needed as well. If that's your main point. Um, I'm not sure that it's right to say the policy isn't justified, even even if it won't alone meet um, uh, what you say the needs are. Um, and um, if one took it away, there might be it might there might still be more needs that weren't met. I'm not sure. That's my take on it, anyway. I mean, okay. I understand what you're saying, but I'm not sure that you're, we're okay. on quite the same wavelength about the, the way I phrased the question which was in response to some representations as to whether it was actually just as justified policy stance um, to say well we want to keep our best employment areas. Uh, do the council want to comment on this? Uh, no sir, we preferred 
to let the policy stand um, as it is. There will be a discussion um, later on in the programme um, on the Mayfield situation. Um, we'd be interested to hear more about the um, employment proposals, which have only relatively recently surfaced in terms of the, uh, uh, the programme of the preparation of the plan. Um, we're pleased that um, Mayfield are participating in the uh, development plan preparation process. Um, so as much information as they feel they're able to give, uh, even at this very late stage, um, would be welcome. And then we can um, assess it in the same way as the debate earlier on today. Um, if I could just add in terms of the policy aid around the key employment areas, all of those sites were assessed in a sense for their fitness for purpose, if you like, uh, through the EGA study. So, uh, and the conclusion of that was that all of those sites that the, the council is proposing this policy would apply to um, essentially continue to have a role and function in employment terms. We didn't find examples of sites where clearly there was no requirement and therefore the policy would be misguided. They are, they are in a sense fit for purpose to meet uh, current and potentially to contribute to future needs, which I think is, is the part of the council's intention on this. Yes, right. Well, I mean, that is obviously a key, key requirement of the following on from the MPPF that, um, you know, they've got to be realistic to be retained as employment sites. It's no good just allocating them and uh, when no one actually wants to stay there or go there. Right. Uh, you still got your board up. Is that dealt with the, your point? Uh, do you want, who's got the board up there? Is it? it was only um, just um, Mr. Gilmer asked a specific question in relation to, um, I suppose it's, it's criterion two of policy eight really, which would um, seem to infer that a loss of employment land could result should it be shown to be um, unviable and would it be offset elsewhere? I'm not sure if the council really um, responded to that. Uh, redevelopment of employment sites outside must demonstrate the premises no longer needed and or viable. Well, mm, okay. How do you want to respond to that? There's, there's no requirement in the policy for reprovision, but I think the policy is quite clear that it talks about um, the redevelopment of, of all of those employment sites outside of the key employment areas. Uh, there's certainly a, a presumption there that we wish to try to retain all of those premises unless it can be demonstrated that they are simply not needed or, or are not viable for an employment use. But the intention, <coughs> I think, is, is explicit in Policy 8 that we are wanting to retain um, all of those uh, employment floor spaces that are, are fit for purpose. Well, yes, but... Um Mr. Jones has just said about, um, oh, sorry, Mr. Jones has said about um, being fit for purpose on the key employment areas. I mean, that applies to all employment areas. It does. Including the council's own offices. Indeed. So we will need to make. So you would have to prove to comply with your own plan that um, uh, it's not needed or viable for employment use, even if that use was less valuable than residential use. That, that's right, sir. If this plan were to be adopted, that's absolutely right. Sorry, if I can just add, presumably the GPDO takes precedent over that. Uh, yes, I suppose. Well, uh, um, I suppose it would. So, but that's... But it only relates to Well, it might be for some... It's the, yeah, that relates to all employment, doesn't it? it depends. No, no, no just, just to um, B1A, I do believe. So it's B B1 office use to residential. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's isn't that change of that's change of use, though, isn't it? Not redevelopment. That that's correct. You're not allowed to make any external alteration. So it's simply a change of uh, change of use, and it's only for for a limited period of time. Yeah. Um, as it stands at the moment. So they could convert all of this into flats, uh, but. Um, knocking it down would require permission and then policy 8.2 would kick in. Anyway, that's a bit, that's a bit academic but in, of some interest to, 
Interesting scenario. Uh, right, I, I thought you've got your board up, Mr. Shutt. Yes, I have. Um, Question 13. Um, well, Attention of key it's on, it's on, areas. On, no, it's on uh, regarding um, key employment areas. I just wanted to make the point. Policy 8, and this relates to what you've just been talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, redevelopment in the key employment areas must not result in the overall loss of employment floor space. Now, I, I take that to mean that the, um, say, it's effectively saying that the amount of employment floor space in a district must never fall in aggregate. Now, that seems to me illogical. Well, in the key employment areas. That, that's not all employment floor space by any means. Well, yes, but I mean, if, it's, if we're talking about an absolute sum, an absolute area, why would it be logical to uh, uh, retain um, that as a minimum level if the demand for this kind of floor space is actually diminishing over time because of the kind of economic developments I've talk, talked about well, already? Okay. Mm. That, that's my point. Okay. So, that, well, so you're saying you, you're questioning uh, policy eight then as... Um, well, okay, what's the council's answer to that? Uh, you might be trying to keep employment floor space for which there is no real demand. Well, I think it goes back to what I described earlier, which is that, in a sense, the, the key employment areas have been uh, recently tested to understand do they continue to perform an employment role, in a sense. So what this is trying to and, and the answer to that was they, they are what we didn't see any evidence was that the council was seeking to apply this policy to to sites that you know clearly were of no um, future use for employment purposes so in terms of the no net loss of floor space point i think the starting point is that that site in being identified as a key employment area essentially has a continuing role and there is a demand for that site uh, and therefore the council's position is that it will seek to try and maintain the floor space on it but uh, as my colleague described earlier there is a need to look at flexibility um, and what uh, the policy as I see it tries to do is say well essentially we recognize that occupied needs may be changing and we recognize that there may, may need to be a, a case for reconfiguring that space but what we don't see is that there should be a starting point that there can be a net reduction in space. So it might look different, but broadly the quantum space would continue to be there or thereabouts what it is at the moment on the basis or the logic following that that site broadly is a site that we are comfortable uh, has a role to play in meeting Horsham's economic needs. But the implication is that if, you, if certain key employment space um, is no longer uh, suitable to fulfil that role, it would be replaced by others, other areas, to, to, to maintain the level, or, or have I misunderstood? Well, I think this, the, the, the starting point essentially is that sites defined as key employment areas basically have, continue to have a role to play. They are, they are good locations for employment development, and those are located uh, in various parts of the district. Um, so essentially while individual occupier requirements might change or the mix might change on sites very broadly though the principle is that this remains a location that is suitable and appropriate in planning terms for employment uh, and therefore the council would like to see yes the space might be reconfigured to reflect a different business occupying a site for example but the, the starting point should be that the quantum of space accommodated on that site is very broadly similar to what uh, was on it in the past and, th and that in a sense is allowing the flexibility to change the permutation or form of that floor space but uh, continue overall to maintain that level of space on the site. Okay, well I still maintain my, my objection to that but perhaps enough has been said, thank you. Well it could be redeveloped, okay. Um, well, I don't have any other questions about that actually. Thank you. Okay, uh, You've still got a, board, a sign up, is that? So I was just going to clarify, clarify what I said there. That's really my question about reallocation of um, employment, that, employment use. Because one, one requirement may dry up because things change. You might, this building be redundant, clearly no need for offices. But there is need for other employment. The reallocation of employment space or land may have a change of use with it. And I'm not sure that that's covered. 
Well, within the Ch a change within of the key I don't know within the key employment areas. I, I, I'm not sure it specifies exactly what employment use it has to be. Ch so you could allow a change of use within a key employment area with the same amount of floor space. You would I suppose you could make a case for having less floor space if it was going to keep a business. I, you know, the council would have to look at that as a material consideration, even if it didn't strictly comply with the policy. Yeah, it's just change of use may require a change of location. Is employment area that I'm talking about? Well, then you'd have to find a site and apply for use. The policy is just talking about designated key employment areas. I think, I mean, partly the, you know, I would imagine the justification for it is that, um, you know, that protects those em em employment areas possibly for, from higher value uses so that you don't actually get, which is what some of the um, councils who've been com uh, complaining about the uh, change of use provisions in the, in the GPDO are finding that um, some valuable employment space in their areas is being changed to housing, so they're losing employment. Um, but that's, this is partly in, in response to that sort of issue of keeping, making sure that they can keep some employment. Mr Shostak says it's not enough and that more needs to be done. Um, but that's part of the suite of the policies. Okay, um, number nine, policy. Uh, Mrs Hague, Councillor Hague, have you said everything you wanted to say about rural economic development policy being effective? Policy nine. Has anyone got any, want to make any comments about policy nine? Um, forgive me, I can't remember who raised that, whether they're here or not. Uh, someone must have done. Mr. Shostak, are you? Very, very briefly, only to say that were Mayfield to be included in the plan in due course, it would provide a major source of employment in the rural south of the district in a way that the plan, as it does, does not now do. Yeah, well, okay, I take your point, but that isn't quite what that's about, is it? I mean, yours, your employment's going to be urban development, isn't it? It, it, it's going to be it's employment. A town. <laughs> no, no, no. It'll be employment that's available to I'd the people take, uh, yes, it living is, in the rural south of the district. This is a different. I think that's addressing a different policy okay. imperative. There. No other comments. Yes. Yeah? Right. Uh, well, I think that concludes the employment session. Then, if everyone feels that they've said all they want to say. Um, I'll bear it. There are some issues that are still outstanding there. Um, we'll be coming back to North Horsham. We'll be coming back to the, um, the market town. Um, my question, I, I'll ask this in open forum. It's about programming really. Um, I think something got a bit lost in the translation between me and the program officer when I was doing some of the programming and I've put you in for half a day with, um, I think it's the east of Crawley, isn't it? Sites. Um, Tuesday week. Do you, um, are you happy with that? I've not heard back from the programme officer that you're not. I mean, if, perhaps this, this could be a private, I don't think it turns for any, it doesn't matter for anyone else. Um, perhaps with the council and uh, the programme officer we could just have a quick I, just, I was just a bit worried that you felt um, we've had a couple of, you know, we've had a long day. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. Next Tuesday's going to be a big day. There's still quite a lot of other business to get through. And, um, uh, you know, I didn't want you to feel that, uh, you know, uh, or anyone else who's got an interest in this, that we were going to be um, squeezing it into a sort of three-hour session, um, you know, uh, in an afternoon right at the end of the programme. Um, any comments? Also, just to say that um, I, I could imagine that 
we would want at least a full half day and, and potentially more in relation to Mayfields. I don't know how much others want to say, but there is potentially um, a lot of material to discuss. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the related questions I was going to ask you, if I may, is, is matter 11, which is, um, and again, we may have lost something in translation. No, you haven't. That was just a, a mistake, I think. <laughs> I mean, the, the way that that program was, um, I meant, the, the, I put a generic question down. I'm going to be looking at maybe some more specific questions for other sites, um, probably over the weekend uh, for, the, uh, for the other agendas. Um, just a minute. What I intended what, under Matter 11 was um, to <coughs> find my mislaid my programs, uh, but I think I can even remember it, um, was just to sort of raise, um, as I said yesterday in opening, um, first of all I wanted to test the generic general policies in the plan on, on a sort of topic basis. Then I wanted to test the major allocations. And then I was conscious that there were a lot of other alternatives, putting the arguments Mr. Shostak just made, that um, the plan um, doesn't, the SA is not right, the plan doesn't test other reasonable alternatives properly. So that question under matter 11 was a sort of question that was going to apply to all the other alternative sites. Now it didn't west of south water um, can be dealt with on the south water day is tagged on to the south water allocation point but for everyone else including Mayfield and including the west of Crawley sites um, including other Horsham sites and including Billingshurst and rural areas sites the question under matter 11 really applies generically to all of those and then there might be some other questions so and then I was going to break up the, the alternatives into area based days or half days so then we I think um, I'm trying to remember what how I did it uh, the day after South Water the Thursday is Billingshurst isn't it matter 12 yeah so, so. <coughs> yeah that isn't the right that's not the one I want. Yeah, so, um, and some of the ones under matter 11, I've, I've basically I've, I've allocated those to other, other places, basically, all of those. Yes, that's And I'm sorry for the confusion. It's a good question, and actually it was a mistake on my part, really, or with the program. So it's just a bit not quite right. So I hope that's now clear. So I think I've understood that um, if there are generic issues which don't become too location specific in relation, for instance, to the SA and the approach to alternatives, that would be matter 11. Oh, uh, well, no, not really. I no. wasn't sort of... Um, uh, so, uh, I think I was expecting, no, no even, even something like that, I think would have to be dealt with, you know, we might, it might end up with being some reiteration but um, tested against the, with, with respect to the alternative sites on those days. That's, that's fine and that's the clarification we wanted, thank you. So in relation to matter 11 it probably wouldn't be sensible for us to um, attend other than observe and Sorry, any, any issues that relate directly or even indirectly to Mayfields we'd pick up in the Mayfield session. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously uh, Yes, I mean, it depends what you're saying. I mean, as it happens, when w what you're saying, it wouldn't be appropriate for you, I don't think, to come to any of the other sessions because you're not actually saying they're not good sites. You're just saying uh, you're not even arguing against... Some people are arguing against the allocations as yes. they've been made, saying their site's better. Yes. You're not even saying that. You're saying you know, we, we want something else as well and so we can deal with all your points with regard to SA or whatever you've got any on that day. Um, but, yeah, no, the, the, um, the, the question, that question um, really relates to um, all the sites. The matter 11 question, question 41, relates to 
sites in Billingshurst, other rural sites, that's going to be on Thursday next week. Crawley Extension sites is going to be on Friday morning, hopefully, that next week. Um, and then on the Tuesday, uh, the question relates to Horsham Extension sites, and we've got a couple of those, and your site. And, I, and the more I think about it, I think I'm just going to say um, we'll deal with Horsham extension sites on the Tuesday and you on the Wednesday. Is that okay? So that, that's fine, thank you. So I, I don't want to waste your time or anybody else's. I have two other procedural points I wanted to raise at, at some stage. Uh, okay. Can we take a break and raise them in the break with me and the programme officer with someone from the council? Does it affect anyone else? who might be attending the uh, examination. Potentially of interest, so I think the answer is potentially of interest to the examination. Okay, go on, you better go ahead now then. Okay, so, so the first point is um, a, a question for you, which is to say that uh, since the end of last week, since we've seen the statements on matter six that have been submitted, it occurred to us there may be some benefit in trying to condense some of the numbers into an agreed statement with a number of the objectors to the plan. A lot of us, as you know, are saying very similar things and whether we could reach agreement around those things. And we've, um, Mayfield's promoted a draft statement with the uh, other objecting parties at the end of last week. Uh, we've made some progress on that. I haven't got the latest update, but we have some who have signed up to it and some have signed up to it conditionally. And the question for you is, in the knowledge that your notes ask for statements of common ground two weeks before the hearings, <laughs> yes. um, do you actually want to receive it or not? Would it be helpful for it to be circulated or would you rather not have it? Um, well, I'm not going to get... Or would you I'll rather see it? I'll take it in good faith, Mr Rhodes, that you're trying to be helpful there and in sort of condensing some points of information. So, yeah, OK, I'll take it. Thanks. I mean, obviously, does the count, have the council seen it? We're going to have no. to deal with it all anyway, but if there's, a, if there's an aid memoir that helps me cut through some of the questions, you know, on the, it's going to be quite a technical session, I think, tomorrow morning. That, that's the intention. Pa so. Particularly going into some of these, you know, housing number matters, um, uh, that, that might be helpful. But the, pr the trouble is with, with such a late arrival, you know, it's... Um, it's less useful because people haven't seen it and uh, you know, then I'd have to give them time to so read it and all the rest of it. That, so that's why I'm asking the question. So if it may be helpful, we will circulate it this afternoon. Do you have any comments on that? It will give us very little time to see it. Um, but if it helps you, sir, then we're willing to accept that. Well, it's just sort of helping... Uh, helping everyone really in trying to run a you know, discussion. I suppose, it, I mean, theoretically, it, it might help you, mightn't it, if you can see what some of them are saying in a, in a, in a pathetic. Sorry, I can say it contains no new information. It seeks to well, condense. Well, yeah, that obviously, yes. <laughs> that's a critical No new information. It seeks to condense uh, the assessment that Barton Wilmore put forward on behalf of us and one other party to see the extent to which others agree with that assessment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Circulate it. Um, we'll do that yeah. as soon as possible this afternoon, so yeah. thank you. Okay. And the, so the third point was just a matter of clarification on matter 19, which is the infrastructure matter. Um, so we're not um, down to appear at that session. We've not made uh, a statement, but just something that you said yesterday made us and, and potentially others wonder whether that would become a site-specific discussion. Um, no. Uh, that, uh, sorry if I gave a misleading impression. Um, I'm going to. I think I'm just going to part that. What I, you, I don't think you have appeared at one of my other examinations, but I sometimes find it useful to deal with that at the end, and then also at that session there might well be. In my experience, invariably, there are some other matters that aren't dealt with on the day and that you need to come back to to um, reconsider and, and sort of a bit of a mopping up operation, really. But sometimes it could be a bit more major than that if there's something to do with housing. I think probably what I think I'd like to do is to say, um, 
Originally, I put matter 17 to be on the Tuesday the following week. Um, uh, I think that's the 18th, is it? No. Um, I th Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday the 19th. Uh, yes, I know. Sorry, but... Um, no, I, when I first did the programme, I had it on t Tuesday the 25th. Now, I don't know whether that's available. Um, and I'll check with the programme officer. So I think, uh, perhaps I've not been very clear in my question, if there are site-specific issues relating to infrastructure delivery, or deliverability, I'll deal they with would one, be picked no, up. No, I'll try and deal with those on the day. On the days, the other yeah, days. Yeah, on the yes, site's day. You. This was more of a generic, um, you know, the, the whole plan really. Um, as a sort of lead-in to the SIL examination almost, but uh, it's, it's So that's not, fine. Thank you very much. I can deal with infrastructure on sites. Um, okay? Yes, just to confirm that the Council have made accommodation available now for the 25th of November. Yeah, okay, thanks. So you don't have any objection to splitting these two up? No, sir. Right. And are you, uh, is your team available to come on the Wednesday instead of the Tuesday? Is that going to be a problem for you? Sir, I'll check, but we'll make ourselves available if we need to, yes. Well, I think that's what I'd like to do. I think it would be in everyone's best interest. You know, in terms of giving it a proper, having enough time, I don't want to feel too constrained. But if you've got a problem, you better, can you let me know? Can you check with the team and let yes, the sir. program officer know tomorrow morning or something like that? So we'll speak with the program officer. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. Right, uh, thanks very much. Um, we'll break for 10 minutes, and then there's a discreet uh, matter about retail development town centres, and uh, there is a, an objection about um, the sort of uh, South Water, not South Water, and Broadbridge Heath, uh, the policy for Broadbridge Heath and South Water. So we'll, we'll break for 10 minutes and resume at 3.30. If you're not here for retail, thank you very much for your contributions, and I'll see you when I see you next, <laughs> probably tomorrow, I suspect.
The overall concept for North Horsham is that it shouldn't just become a housing area. Um, there's provision there, um, substantial provision for employment, and although we can't guarantee that, the, uh, that there will be a close proximity between uh, those who live and those who work, nevertheless, uh, we are hopeful that that provision will uh, <coughs> at least enable some uh, people to work close, closer to their job um, on general sustainability grounds. And similarly, um, in terms of the retail and community facilities that um, have been included within the mix, uh, we feel that the, uh, uh, the policy makes an appropriate provision uh, for the type of uh, uh, retail outlet um, which has fitted in at this scale of uh, redevelopment quite satisfactorily uh, quite satisfactorily elsewhere and we certainly don't see this as in any way undermining the, uh, the council's um, town centre first policy in fact as discussion goes on I would seek to uh, emphasise the strength in which uh, Horsham Council considers the um, importance of uh, Horsham town centre in the future planning of the area <coughs> Yeah, I think um, do you, uh, any, do you want to come back on that, Mrs. White? I mean, I think the po it's not, um, you know, we're not having a new town centre there. It's, a, it's like a sort of district. I mean, what, what would you call it? A neighbourhood centre or as a sort of... Yes, a, a neighbourhood centre. Of the, I mean, the scale of the development would have to be uh, commensurate with the size of the development. I mean, it's a... It's a local, it's bigger than a local shop, but it's a, sort of, it's a local food store. Are we, what size of store are we talking about? Uh, well, there is a figure which I think is 6,000 metres. That's a lot. Just a minute, Mrs. Martin. Mm, I would just say... Just a minute, just a minute. Okay. 6,000. Square, square feet. Meters. Square metres yes, of yes. what? Retail? Um, gross retail, yeah. That's set out in policy SD3, um, which uses the terminology a local centre. Sorry, which policy is it? Sorry. Policy SD3, and that's on page 62. Yeah. Okay, Mrs. White. Uh, sorry, I, one point I'd like to make. People are sort of bandy about figures, and sometimes they're square feet, sometimes they're square metres, sometimes they're hectares, and it's difficult to sort of get a grasp of what exactly... But that sounds huge It is, huge I sympathise. <laughs> I've spent 20 years trying to ask developers to talk to me in square metres and square and hectares because that's what the government policy says they should do. Oh, right. Ideally, um, no old it's money. Very so difficult. <laughs> it's sometimes very difficult to get them to do that. Um, and I've got used to it, but um, that's... Uh, trying to put that into something that one would... Recognise. I don't know. I don't know Horsham well enough. Um, I haven't been here for, for. I haven't been here for some time, so I'm not quite. I couldn't pick a store to say that's a sort of 6,000 metre store. Can I, could um, try and give give the give people a, a feel for how much there is. Sorry, sir. I would describe it as a medium-sized supermarket, although we don't specifically... We'd yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be bigger than that. All right, no, don't, uh, thank you. I'll, t <laughs> I'll go to the council first. Um, Sainsbury's where? Broadbridge Heath? Yeah. Is there one there? No, there, there isn't. Sorry I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm talking to you, Mr James. Hello? Sorry, um, oh. Sainsbury's in Horsham, I'm told is of a similar order. Um, 
We don't specifically say um, that this provision should be in one unit. No, no, yeah, no. Um, I'm just trying to get a feel for what, in terms for, of so people can understand the, box, the level yes. of retail that you're, you're yeah. proposing to allow there. Yeah. Okay. Can I, could I just make one correction? Yeah. Uh, earliest possible opportunity. I, I suggested that this is gross, but um, uh, a careful inspection of paragraph 711 um, suggests well, that the policy is, says it. It's, uh, it's sales floor space area. So um, apologies for that. Well, the policy says net, Indeed, actually. Yeah. Um, so... Well, we're using the... We, again... So the idea is the local... It's, it's, it needn't be... It, I suppose there's nothing to stop it being in one shot, but um, uh, it's a local centre to meet residents' needs, pri presumably to meet primarily to meet residents' convenience needs. Um, it doesn't say that. No, it doesn't. Um, I think it should. Do you want to break it down? I, I think if we're to going avoid to avoid travel, you know, presumably that's the intention is to avoid so that day-to-day -day needs, convenience needs, can be met on site without having to travel into Horsham to do your shop. Yeah. On behalf of the council, sir, I would be happy to have that clarification introduced. It is intended to be for convenience needs, so that's day-to-day -day, uh, type shopping. Um, it's not intended that this is a comparison destination. No, you don't want an out of you know you don't want an out of centre uh, comparison retail park with next and carpet right or anyone else who might particularly want to do something like that. So, okay, right, um, Mrs. White, carry if you want to. Do you want to come back on any of that? Well, uh, uh, now that that's sort of being clarified, I, I assume that is all retail space and it could be broken up or it could be one big store. At the moment, that's how it's written, yes. Yeah, so, so it's kind of, you know, it depends on what liberties want to do with it and who wants to go into it, uh, I assume. I mean, will anybody want to go into it, given that supermarkets are downsizing now because people are ordering their food and uh, the things they buy at the supermarket, ordering online and going and doing, click and collect? Because, uh, you know, well, the, you big, the days of the big supermarket are, are, are dwindling. Even Tesco's well. at Broadbridge Heath doesn't want to um, enlarge its floor space. Uh, and that's, uh, that, again, I wanted to raise Broadbridge Heath. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, okay. Yeah, but if you've, even if you've got to click and collect, you've got to collect it from somewhere. So, you know, it would least save the residents of, uh, of the new development if it goes ahead, um, having to travel outside of it to click and collect their stuff, depending on who's collecting, whose store it is. Um, I mean, I personally would be amazed if... Um, if a development of this sort of size uh, wouldn't support some convenience retail and that a convenience retailer would want to go there. But from my experience of doing retail in inquiries and appeals, any market advice on this? Mr. Walker? If, if it would help, I mean, we, we, we've, we've looked at um, com convenience retailing and we have spoken to a number of the uh, supermarket um, operators, as you can imagine, certainly that there was... Um, uh, th th their requirements have reduced in recent times, you're totally right and uh, we're not looking to put this all in one unit but it is certainly looking to provide um, convenience retail to, uh, to, to the new development but in addition we were looking to provide um, neighbourhood stores um, and furthermore we were looking to give the area some character with, uh, with, with sort of market conditions um, local produce and um, we, we've even sort of talked about a brewery quarter as well and all of that would come under the, uh, the 6,000 square metre of net sales area. So it wouldn't be just one big unit. And for clarification, the Sainsbury's in Worthing Road has a net area of 6,576 square metres, according to the rating list, and 8,000 square metres gross. So, so the whole lot wouldn't be quite as big as the Sainsbury's in, uh, in Worthing Road. Well, okay, if you're going to, I mean, if you want to suggest a, um, I mean, I'd suggest you maybe want to just insert the words primarily retail floor space. Uh, sorry, primarily convenience primarily retail provision. Yes, I'm happy with that suggestion. Uh, if, if that's what it's intended to do. 
Okay, uh, now Broadbridge, uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Moore, you wanted to speak on, on this? Yes, if I could please, because I, I can't, I must disagree with that suggested change. If you look at clause 711 of the actual um, HCPF, it's quite clear that what they're talking about is a, a retail food store of up to 6,000 square meters. And then on top of that, there are other local retail units. So it's not talking about a split up, as uh, was suggested, uh, of the 6,000 square meters into smaller units. It's one large unit, a huge soup, food superstore, plus other local retail units. Now, well, uh, hang on. It's not, um, well, it depends on one's definitions. But sorry, in my definitions, it's not a huge food superstore. Uh, with respect they, to they're it. something else. They're, more, they're quite a bit more than that. They're about nine or 10,000 square metres. Mm -hmm. you, did, did you say you disagreed with the proposed change to insert the yes, word primarily do. convenience? I do, because I mean, I think of that size, 6,000 square metres, plus uh, whatever else in local retail needs there are, such as the small co-ops or whatever it might be. Um, it's huge in my terms. Well, what's... Okay. Well, you're, but what you're really saying is you're disagreeing with the amount of retail that's proposed, not the insertion of the words primarily convenience. It's, it's, the, it's the, the size, correct? The size. Okay. I miss, that's why I'm glad I've clarified that. I misunderstood you. Um, uh, okay. Well, does, does the council want to make any further comment on that? It's, it's way too much floor space to meet local convenience needs. So we disagree with that and consider that the uh, amount there is uh, uh, a useful amount of uh, retail to provide for local needs. Um, quite <coughs> clearly it's up to uh, 6,000 um, and the, the slight qualification where it's a suggestion that um, other appropriate local shopping facilities um, we have in mind that there's many examples of uh, uh, medium-sized supermarkets that might have some small unit associated with them. At the moment, the, uh, there's a trend towards uh, um, of print type small printing um, outlets, maybe a shoe repairers I've seen associated with medium-sized supermarkets. I would suggest that's the quantum that we're looking for. We're not, certainly not trying to um, uh, turn this into a major um, shopping destination. Uh, it is intended <coughs> primarily to provide for the new development, uh, new housing development in North Horsham, but can usefully contribute to, um, if I can describe it as the, uh, the northern part of um, Horsham. Um, possibly this will involve... Um, use of the car and very often use of the car for, uh, um, for convenience of retail is, is part of the pattern of everyday life but we certainly don't expect it to uh, draw significant amounts of trade from, any, uh, from a larger area. Um, just one point, sir, if I may, yeah. uh, which may be helpful. Um, modification, um, modification A14, sorry, A15, <laughs> thank you, um, does add a further qualification. Um, the local centre should not detract from the vitality and viability of Horsham Town Centre. And the reason for that modification is to help um, to maintain, reinforce the development hierarchy in the district. How are you going to enforce that then? Um, well, there will then be the need for a planning application. The planning application um, will be judged to stand against the development plan as it then stands, and hopefully we're going to make progress with the one here. Um, but, of course, there are also the standard <coughs> tests which apply yeah, um, through the National Planning Policy Framework. Oh, so, sorry, well, maybe I've misunderstood it. Um, you could read that in two ways, couldn't you? You're, it might be that you're saying 
we've set the size so that it should not detract. It shouldn't. You know, it might, but it shouldn't. Um, or you might read it as a policy requirement that it should not detract. But if it's if it's the latter, it, you know, it can't possibly be effective, can it? I mean, as a, you know, the way it's just a sort of wishful thinking. Are you? Is it sort of reason justification, or are you? It is. It's not. Um, not intent. It's intended is to. It tended to, to, to be to explanatory. To eleven. Yeah. Okay. Um, to amplify. <coughs> Uh, and give some reassurance to some of the concerns that we've heard uh, today and elsewhere. Well, okay, that's not a, um, I just wanted to ask, um, can you just remind me what the significance... Is there any significance in these A's and B's? Um, so I mean, I'm treating these as minor modifications and <coughs> clarifications. Then you're not exp or are you saying any of these should be made, you know, at the end of this <coughs> examination from your point of view... You'd want to advertise these as main modifications for public comment. Uh, we consider them all to be minor uh, modifications. Um, the ones in the list, which is called Mod B, are either typographical errors, or we've, so we've tried to, um, to, to pull those out, separate those out for oh, you, I see. Um, yeah. so that you can see what are the more substantive, if I can put it like that, but yeah. you can have substantive minors. Um, what, what, what are the more substantive comments um, which have primarily been made to address um, issues raised during the consultation processes? Yeah, okay. I think I need or, to or go... Or factual amendments. I need to go through these because I think there's one, there was one that I thought might be pushing the boundaries of it. Um, I'll come back to you on that. Okay. Okay. Mr Moore? And then we'll go on to Broadbridge Heath. One slight digression, if I may, just on the uh, point of the modifications. Just as an example, if you look at MOD uh, A5, that is a major modification, a major change. Not relevant to retail, but I think it should be taken into account when you look at the document. Oh, yes, that was the one. Um, I suppose Mayfield are seeking something a bit more than that, aren't they? But, uh, um, yeah, thank you for that, Mr. Moore. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Um, Ms. Fortune, um, uh, I think I'm, yeah, I'm pretty clear where, you, where you're standing on this. Do you want to introduce your point about the, um, the requirements um, for Broadbridge Heath? And uh, I think you're saying that there's a lack of... Um, Yeah, there's, there's no lack of, there's a lack of definition of what might be allowed here and there's no um, limit possibly on what might be allowed and that therefore um, one could see a fairly substantial amount of extra floor space in an out of centre location that's going to have a harmful effect on the town centre. That's your point in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, a sort of a, a good summary. I think we're massively concerned that this whole policy is fundamentally flawed because it's not been prepared in accordance with the guidelines within the NPPF. Um, the, the, the proper plan making process just hasn't taken place. You know, it's, it's very clear in the NPPF that, you know, obviously an authority needs to meet its retail and town centre uses need in full, but they need to take a sequential approach to that, which just doesn't seem to have taken place. Um, and as such, you're allocating a site on the outer out centre that, you know, if permitted with this policy, will have a significant adverse impact on the town centre where there are sequentially preferable sites, including one being promoted by our client, and you're going to divert potential investment from the town centre to this sort of outer centre centre location I think we're, 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 we're quite surprised by the policy because the, the wording includes you know opportunities for development to be seized at Broadbridge Heath which is completely against your town centre first strategy and it's completely against your own vision for the town centre and it's just completely against the guidelines within the MPPF yeah okay um, just out of interest for me um, I've had a quick look around the town centre this morning and um, at lunchtime rather and um, 
Swan Walk. So what are, your, what are you proposing to do? What's well, I'm, I'm, it, we're still at pre-application stage, so I'm not sure in terms of how much is in the, the public domain, but there is a sort of residential... Aviva owned Swan Walk, do they? Pardon? Aviva owned Swan Walk. They built it and have owned it since the 1970s, so they are a genuine long-term stakeholder in the town centre, and we are having discussions with the council, and they've been, um, sort of been a couple of years going in terms of trying to get to a position and, and we feel we're close but it's, it's just one example and it's, it, that's not even looking at all the examples of the edge of centre sites as well that could be available and Yeah okay so you, but you're planning to you've got, you think you might want to expand your floor, yeah. retail floor space there Retail and leisure floor space Yeah okay um, and which um, it's policy six. Which criterion uh, was it? I think, it, in terms of what we're objecting to, it, it's essentially most of the policy in terms of talking about the fact that appropriate mix of uses, which could include retail, leisure, you know, hotels, convenience, eating places, along with sort of the retail development sections, E, F, and G. It doesn't seem a very the way it's written at the moment, it's essentially allowing all out of centre, kind of town centre uses on that site. Okay, well, um, we might need to go into this into a bit more detail. How do the council respond to that? So, the, the policy thread, if I can take us through that, um, starts with policy two, the strategic development policy. Um, and in particular, um, the recognition of Horsham Town's role as the primary to uh, town for the district, its historic function as a market <coughs> town, safeguarding its compact and attractive character. And then there's a reference to Broadbridge Heath Quadrant there, complemented by rationalisation and redevelopment at Broadbridge Heath Quadrant. Um, there's a reference in Policy 5 um, to the particular characteristics um, of Horsham Town, Town Centre as a, as a market town um, and its key position, its historic character, high quality environment um, and the retail mix is mentioned in little c and then we go on to talk about Broadbridge Heath Quadrant. I suppose there's two main points that I'd like to make which are um, Inspector mentioned that he has visited um, Horsham Town Centre in the last... Oh, very briefly, uh, lunchtime. Very, very briefly, I, I, well. Um, and possibly you've been to Horsham Town Centre previously as well. Yeah. Indeed. And um, when one looks at um, planning practice guidance, um, indications on the health and the, the viability of town centres, I think it's a matter of common consent that um, Horsham Town Centre displays most, if not all, of the characteristics of being a prosperous, vibrant, um, affluent town centre. There doesn't seem to be any indication that there are any of the uh, stress factors, which, let's face it, in the majority of town centres, and the National Planning Policy Framework addresses in, on the whole, you know, the um, um, situation across the, uh, uh, the country, um, there are not the stress factors that possibly would exercise, um, bring, uh, cause us concern in other locations. So looking at the, at the reality of what we have at um, Horsham at the moment, I think, is, uh, is our entry point into this. And then secondly, recognition that um, Broadbridge Heath Quadrant does include a substantial amount of uh, retail warehousing at the moment. Yeah, I, I need to go. I'm, I haven't been there. I've, of course, I have been there in the past, but I haven't had time to go back there. But I will go and have a look, obviously, after this. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, when you visit or revisit Broadbridge Heath Quadrant, I think you will see that there are um, a, a mixture of uh, retail outlets. These are large space users. Um, often the terminology retail shed is used. Um, we're not particularly proud, it has to be said, of the configuration uh, there at the moment. And in the middle there is a, um, um, a large uh, Tesco superstore beyond which are um, 
a number of um, unrelated leisure and other uses. Now, in well, the for my benefit, roughly how big is the Tesco? <laughs> um, I can is give it, you the is figure, it a nine or ten thousand square meters? It's Tesco? substantially larger. Yeah, it, I it, it was. It's, um, it, Tesco's used to grade their stores, and at the time it was yeah. built, it was a it was a grade A. <coughs> um, not only has it got a sizable amount of um, yeah, convenience, okay. they've got a mezzanine in there. Um, yeah, so it's, it's I'll, go, I'll have a quick look. That'll be enough. It, yeah. At one stage, it was one of their flagship stores, I'm sure. But um, we understand even Tesco's. So there, there are current issues, obviously, more important for Tesco's than simply Broadbridge Heath. But nevertheless, <laughs> there is... I think uh, that's a bit of an understatement. Well, we wish, we wish them <laughs> well. The way that <laughs> it's been difficult to imagine... 263 the million pound hole in the accounts, I think, might be one well, of them. Well, yes, so Broadbridge Heath is not going to no. save them one way or the other on that. I think that's yeah. my, my point. Um, but certainly they, they came to us um, and have, there is a dialogue because there are, it's a shared access way and the council is in involved as a, a landowner mm -hmm. together with um, uh, West Sussex County Council as well. So there's, there's a, um, a need for continuing dialogue with Tesco okay. and an yeah. indication that um, um, can, we, can we work together to try and improve matters. And that's culminated um, in, a, in a supplementary planning document which is the Broadbridge Heath Quadrant which I don't know if the Inspector has spotted, but it is one of our core documents, and the reference mm. is um, CDCG um, 04. Sorry, can you say that again, please? Of course, CDGC 04. Um, it's down here as the Broadbridge Heath Quadrant Draft SPD, uh, which th went through extensive public consultation um, last summer. Um, that SPD is, uh, is prepared under the aegis of the existing adopted development plan. It doesn't make assumptions, certainly notes the emerging Horsham district planning pr uh, framework, but it's firmly rooted within the, the policies of the uh, current adopted plan. Um, so what's that, the core strategy or the science the, plan? The core strategy and the, the suite of documents because there are also... Um, being built out at the moment, um, a range of um, um, an SPD for the, uh, the, the general, uh, the wider area, which I believe is called. No, no, the, um, I'm thinking of the SPD for the, the planning brief for the, the wider area. Oh, the future prosperity commission. Right. Um, so it has, it has a development plan context rooted in the existing okay. plan. Yeah. Now that's. Um, I understand that went forward to uh, Horsham's full council meeting and has now been approved. So um, when we talk about a draft SPD, we're talking about one which has been approved by the local planning authority. Uh, the adoption is anticipated to take place between now and Christmas um, to go through the, the formalities of legal adoption. And that... That document describes... Well, that's just a council resolution, presumably. That's not... I mean, there isn't a... I mean, it's only SPD, so there's no examination progress, process or anything like that. No, sir, but it does ex um, reflect the council's intentions to encourage... Yeah, yeah, no, you said it has to be there. adopted. But I'm, so, I mean, were there any SPD changes... SPD were, were there any changes to the draft, from the draft? Indeed, yes, sir. So, have I got a copy of the... One that's <coughs> going to be adopted. What? Sorry, no. Well, I need to have one, don't I? If you, well, can I have one, please? Yeah. Yes, I can get that the council agenda for you. Yeah. So, okay. we can, to, be, to be specific, we'll, um, you've already got in the core documents the, uh, the planning brief. I think the additional document which will be most helpful to you is the, is the report and the resolution of the council. Oh, I thought you said I only had a draft one, but okay, I'll check, I'll check that later. Okay, thank you. Unless you want to refer to it now. Have you seen this? Um, we ob ob objected to the original draft SPD, so, um, but we hadn't been made aware of any further movement on this document at all, so actually I'm quite surprised to hear that it's been heard at Cabinet and it's got, you know, adopted as a, or recommendation to be adopted. Um, I appreciate that it's a council thing, but 
I'm surprised that given our, we fundamentally objected to it on more grounds we've objected to this policy. So that's quite disappointing actually to hear. Um, there is, as I understand it, uh, quite a, a close um, relationship between the council and Avia and Swan Walk. Um, it might help at this stage if, um, if I turn to my left and introduce the, um, um, is the correct title, Town Centre Manager. Um, perhaps if you could have a, um, give us a few words on the extent to which um, our Horsham um, Council and the general business community is um, committed to the, the Swan Walk could, could uh, I proposals. Just, if that's okay with you, just quickly respond to a couple of the comments you've made before they get lost. Um, yeah. Would you prefer? Well, I, I haven't quite finished. Yeah, before we do that, actually, I haven't quite finished. So, what well, I mean, this SPD, does that set any limit on the amount of floor space that could be developed at Broadbridge Heath? It's, it, um, there are no um, overall or indicative floor space figures. There are some uh, allocations or rather reallocations. It's a case of redistributing some of the existing uses around the site and dealing with the, the one new opportunity, which is the release of the West Sussex um, highways land. So it's in concepts. It's a, it's a concept um, um, rather than... Um, actual uh, figures for floor space. Hmm. Okay, Ms. Fortune. Um, I think just sort of going back to your first point about the health of Horsham Town Centre, I think you know you're right, and it's not disputed that it's a healthy town centre. But the point is that it hasn't no evidence to suggest that additional uncontrolled retail and leisure floor space at Broadbridge Heath won't have an adverse impact on the town centre. Just because it's healthy now, you can't take it for granted without the evidence and the whole point of this local plan making process is to ensure we've got this evidence in place which isn't there. Um, you know, you, you sort of you ref refer to <coughs> policies early on in the plan which describe your aspirations for Horsham but this policy could totally go against that. You know, it, it, you've got existing bulky goods but there's no floor space limit or, you know, limit on the range of goods which can be supplied. Um, within that policy is worded so someone could come along as you referred to um, sir earlier with regard to North Horsham and develop an open A1 retail park and you've got an allocation in place through this policy which would which would permit that um, and I think sort of going back in terms of the the SPD you refer to it being linked to the core strategy policy are um, which relates to the West Horsham urban extension and the, the only policy link really was the fact that you said that Broadbridge Heath should be redeveloped to serve a local need generated by those residents and clearly this policy goes way over and beyond that to serve much more than just a local need by a new housing urban extension. So we, we're still, I think our view remains struggling to see which policy this SPD links back to, um, you know, it's, it, even more so because you emphasise that it is linked back to that core strategy. Okay. Yeah. Um, in terms of the uh, policies within the core strategy that um, we refer to in the SPD, um, that will be set out in the Council's report that um, we're going to pass on. So we're happy to uh, um, take it in that context. We're not, um, um, we're not seeking to open uh, an inquiry into the existing adopted core strategy that's that's there for us all to see and to uh, for the council to to implement um, the reality of the situation is you've got a uh, the Broadbridge Heath quadrant um, there's one large space user which is the existing uh, Tesco's um, we would encourage some rationalization of the access arrangement some um, possibility of um, uh, some reorientation of the car parking and possibly encourage some shared car parking but that's very much a fixture so that acts as a break on, the, on any suggestion that this is uh, there's unlimited potential there to provide um, um, a substantial addition of floor space and then around the site you've got um, a number of uh, uh, retail warehouse type operations again it's a question of working together with the landowners to find a better disposition of those there's absolutely no intention on the part of the council 
We will continue to have um, um, land ownership control together with West Sussex. Um, there is no way that Horsham Council is going to try and undermine the future prosperity of Horsham Town Centre. And, um, sorry, please. Well, hang on. Um, what, have you made any study or got any idea of what, how much potential extra of retail floor space um, this quadrant area could provide? Um, there is a, a business case which is being um, advised is being prepared jointly with um, West Sussex uh, Council. That's not currently available. It may surface um, between now and the close of the examination. Uh, well, a, but I think a the business case for what? <laughs> the, the, bu <laughs> a the business case for the redevelopment and all the components within there which include um, retail and other community uses including leisure. Uh, I feel as if I'm floundering around and without, you know, I should maybe read this brief more fully but uh, um, in, in addition to the Tesco, roughly how much floor space is there at the moment? So perhaps I, I could help. The, um, the, the redevelopment opportunity that the council is interested in is looking at um, replacing an out-of-date leisure centre on the site. Um, and so that is our primary interest. There is an existing running track on the site as well. And what the um, SPD uh, identifies is um, a number of alternative uses um, it sets the principles for development and identifies areas including for residential, the new leisure centre and some retail. But the element, as Mr James has just explained, for um, significant uh, additional retail is extremely limited given the boundaries of the site which are very well defined and the limitations to car parking provision. I mean, I'm still not really any clearer. Are there any figures in the SPD? None at all, sir. It's, it's simply about principles for development. And the business case that was referred to is because the council is a landowner and it's looking at the business case in terms of its land ownership arrangements. Hmm. If um, it, it helps, we did, in our representations to the SPD, we looked at the VOA website, so it, that's the only source, but we calculated it at just over 14,000 square metres, including the Tesco, mm. but that's the Tesco store and then the bulky goods retail warehouse units. That's existing? Yeah. Have you got any worst fears as to how much extra floor space could come forward here? We haven't got worst fears, quantum? but I think um, I, I, know, I wouldn't want to say. I think what you know, sort of going back to you, you know, using the words like we would encourage, and you know, we've got no intention of having addition, you know, substantial. You want to keep it as a sort of leisure centre, so I suppose. In a cynical kind of planning consultant perspective, who's to stop the council selling this site or being tempted by a big offer? Some big developer comes along, does a big multi screen cinema, a big retail shopping centre, completely redevelop the site, and the policy is worded, it's just not going to stop that. And that, that is hence our fundamental concern. We, you're trying to develop the town centre, you've got a vision for the town centre, you're trying to encourage an evening economy. But if, you, if you're a cinema, to, cinema operator, would you look at that and think this could be a good site? And then would come the sort of associated retail and restaurant users. I think that, is our, that sort of scenario would have a significant adverse impact on the town centre and it just hasn't been assessed by the council. So there is uh, insufficient space to, 
to be able to carry out the scale of development you're uh, talking about. It's, it's um, stretching credibility, I would suggest, that this site um, could become available and fall into the hands of, um, of the type of operator that you're suggesting. It's just not realistic. But even if the 14,000 square metres, which, or the Tesco and the retail warehouse units, even if that got redeveloped to an open A1 comparison scheme, that would have an impact on the town centre. Or if that was demolished and replaced by a cinema, that would have an impact on the town centre. And this is why the sequential test in plan making is in place, and this, that's not been done. And there's no, there's no assessment, so <coughs> this, this plan is, this policy is it's not being properly tested and controlled and could really sort of impact upon the town centre. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if, you know, planning application would have to be made and um, that would have to be tested, but, I mean, you, I suppose if you're worried the danger is that would be policy compliant. Yeah, so, exactly. So um, it couldn't be, the size couldn't be restricted. And the, the, I suppose the, the, the plan-making process with allocations is to check that it's sequentially, a preferable sequentially site and as such the impact is <coughs> acceptable. That's, you know, how you come to decide which sites to allocate. Would it, um, would it not be possible to um, put a limit on, you know, the amount of extra floor space? above the existing level to um, you know, reassure town centre investors and that, uh, that there wouldn't be that much significant impact from additional floor space. Uh, so the, uh, the, the purpose of the Broadbridge Heath Quadrant policy is to, is to give some encouragement to the um, other landowners apart from the councils um, to carry out some um, rationalisation and improvement of the area. If we look in detail at policy six, I think some of the concerns that are being expressed um, start to fade away. Um, for example, little e, any proposed retail development shall ensure that it enhances and does not adversely affect the current and future viability and vitality of Horsham Town Centre and contributes towards achieving the wider objectives of the regeneration of this opportunity area. Now, if I can just finish, yeah. what I would say is that that um, is complementary to the tests that would come, uh, which would apply at the planning application stage. I just can't see it as being realistic um, that the scale of development, including multiplexes and so on, which you described as your worst case scenario, um, getting a, a, um, a foothold here, even if there is a policy which relates to the area and which does talk about appropriate uh, retail um, within a plan that um, progresses through to adoption. I think so, well, uh, yeah. Um. Okay. Our, uh, our, concern, carry on. our concern with that is that, as sort of we were discussing, that if, as soon as the site becomes allocated, it's in accordance with the development plan and there's no requirement to do a sequential or impact test. And the whole point of allocating a site is that the council's done that work <coughs> and they can be assured that it's not going to have, there are no sequentially preferable sites and the whole, there is no evidence to support that, so the, the, the policy is unsound. Um, in terms of the, the threshold, we'd, it, it would have to sort of, any additional floor space on the site should be tested before it gets allocated. So I think in response to that, we'd still say that's without the evidence to back it up, that's, it's not a, a sound policy. You know, you've got, a, you've got a food store there at the moment, you've got bulky goods retail, but the bulky goods is controlled, and we'd, we'd expect no additional, you know, until it's tested, we'd expect to see no additional floor space on that site, unless it comes through as a planning application, where then the sort of sequential impact tests are done, but it shouldn't be within the plan as a statutory document, as an allocation. It, that's, all, that's establishing the acceptability before the council has done the work to evidence it and to justify it and to know that it's going to be, have an acceptable impact on the town centre. It's, it's, in our view... What, what are you seeking? Are you seeking um, 
a requirement or criterion in the policy for a, I think we're a retail impact test or are you seeking a floor space limit? Or we, or we've, we've been discussing this in quite a lot of detail and we're, we're so convinced that the whole policy is fundamentally flawed that we haven't come up with an alternative. I think it's we, the, the fact that you're encouraging retail and leisure convenient eating places where no evidence to back that up um, and no controls in place. I think the only, only way we'd think anything would be acceptable would be no increase in floor space and it'd have to be bulky goods. But even that should be tested. I think that's, we're, we're massive, we are, we've got massive concerns about this policy because there's no evidence. And in fact, well, you we can't, tell... You've got something there at the moment. So, I mean, you've got a quantum of floor space. So, yeah. So, um, you know, you can't, uh, I mean, if, if, if the council wants to... Um, secure improvements to the area, then uh, it's hard to resist that, isn't it? Yeah, so no, no increase in floor space, but that, we'd, we'd expect the, the amount of floor space without doing the you know, test to have it allocated should, be, should remain the same. I think it, you, your retail consultants who did your 2010 retail study, in fact, say we strongly advise not to allocate any additional out of centre floor space, including Broadbridge Heath, and then said you may consider a bulky goods element but that should be criteria based and the way this policy is worded that's not anywhere close to that it's yes. well there's an issue about demand for bulky goods return anyway I would have thought but, um, yeah. uh, and the viability of that even possibly but um, Mr. Yeah, you want to comment then? well I would suggest again reading closely what is down policy 6 at the moment um, on the following page, uh, page 29, um, little, little g, redevelopment for larger retail units with extended floor plates selling, um, there's a typo there, yeah. selling bulky goods where appropriate provision can be made in or immediately adjacent to Horsham Town Centre may be acceptable under E. Um, <laughs> that that's, has some consistency, I would suggest, with the consultancy work that... Um, was referred to the, uh, the earlier uh, retail assessment, which in turn has, has uh, had its made its way through into a um, into a town centre uh, SPD. Well, yes, but I mean, I, I think just looking at that, I mean, so um, any application then for a redevelopment with larger retail units would have to be accompanied by a sequential approach survey showing that uh, they looked at all sites uh, in or immediately adjacent to the town centre? Indeed, sir. And um, that's quite apart from the sequential, uh, the sequential requirement, um, there would be the impact assessment requirement that kicks in depending on the, uh, on the size of what's being talked about, um, which is a provision under the MPPF. Oh, well, well so you're not relying on any policy here in the plan for an, an impact assessment? We're not making any change to what's shown in the MPPF and our understanding is that um, no, if you want to keep the MPF um, approach um, then there is um, specifically advice not to go around simply restating what's in the MPPF. Yeah, okay, I'm just reminding myself of what that does say. Two and a half thousand default threshold, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's only required where they're not in accordance with an up-to-date local plan. Well, I think um, what I'm suggesting is... I think is that's that Ms. point, you know, if you could say, well, you don't have to apply that test for an, an impact test because it's in accordance with the plan. Well... <laughs> so what are we talking about that um, comes forward because our reading of the wording of the policy at the moment would mean anything more than a, a minor adjustment um, to the floor space would start to fall uh, beyond the, um, the provisions of this policy what well where does it say that um, I'm relying there. I and mean, you've got all, it, all you just say, it's not going to adversely affect. I'm relying there well, on... So if some objector, if, if, so, if an application comes in and, uh, and then uh, Miss Fortune does 
um, an impact assessment um, to show that there is you know, a 0.1% adverse impact on the viability of Horsham Town Centre, then does that mean the policies... That's an extreme position, but say that you know, these things are always a bit difficult. Um, you know, what is a, a 1% impact on Horsham Town Centre would be quite a lot, actually. I, could, I would suspect could be argued to be quite a lot. Yeah, could be. Depends on the circumstances of the centre, doesn't it? Um, so, well, what, so, well, okay, so what are you, you know, what's, that, how, what's adversely affect? You know, how effective is this policy? And I think that goes back to our main point about this is the evidence should have been done at this stage to back up this policy, and it hasn't done, so it's, it's unsound. That's, that goes back. We, we, you need to be confident as a council that any retail development on this site over and beyond the existing situation with the bulky goods will not have an adverse impact and you can't rely on just saying Horsham's a healthy centre and we're not going to have uh, loads of open A1 or cinema demand on this site like this policy will be taken forward and used in the determination of planning applications and we, as you as sort of being pointed out the, the wording that you're seeking to use to control it is flimsy and will be in our view torn apart pretty quickly by any aggressive developer on the site so well it might not this fortune I mean that wasn't necessarily my point I mean uh, um, you know an adverse effect is an adverse effect it's not a significant adverse effect or even some adverse effect it's an adverse effect which is just you know worse than neutral so under the terms of your policy you could uh, you could refuse it I think, sir, that's um, helpful um, <laughs> in, it? in bringing, bringing, bringing it forward. It does very much depend on the circumstances. Um, we've been given like, a worst-case scenario, and I think um, from the discussion we've just had, I think we would feel that we have controls under that policy for the, the major develop, redevelopment that we're talking about. Um, but it doesn't, say, it doesn't say, does it? I mean, I, I am a bit concerned about this. I mean, I'll have a think about it. But, I mean, I, the, um, um, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a shame you haven't come up with anything this fortune to suggest, you know, some safeguard in here. I mean, you know, one clearly, I haven't seen the figures, but I suppose, um, you know, some five or ten thousand metres of floor space. I mean, you're, you're, you're happy to have, what is it, six, um, six thousand metres at North Horsham won't affect the health of the town centre, you're saying, aren't you? We are, sir, yes. Um, um, but bear in mind, that's a different type of um, uh, provision, isn't it? Yeah. So, a le you know, it could be that a lesser amount would, would have a, a more, you know, a more adverse effect. I would suggest unlikely, sir. It's possible. Right. It's I'm playing possible. devil's advocate here, but I'm just, you know, testing it because there's no... Um, there's no limit. I, I'm finding it quite hard to get a, a, a handle on how serious this problem could be. I mean, I'm hearing what you're saying. Well, I think, but, uh, there is, sir, if I may assist and move us forward here, I think we're all in agreement. We are all concerned to ensure that the future prosperity of Horsham Town Centre is not adversely affected. I'm a little bit concerned by uh, myself about some of the wording, uh, some of the comments that I've heard, which is almost along the lines of anything that um, happens at Broadbridge Heath Quadrant. Um, any, even a minor amount of uh, floor space adjustment um, what should become objectionable because I don't think that achieves what um, the Horsham Council is intent on doing which is to, to actually make Broadbridge Heath Quadrant work more efficiently and uh, as you say sir you will have an opportunity to go and look at the okay, of well, the have a look. at the moment um, we're quite receptive to any suggestions that um, ensure that our primary objective is to maintain and encourage, together with um, um, your clients, um, Nathaniel Richard's clients, um, to encourage um, 
Horsham Town Centre to maintain and um, thrive as a prosperous centre. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to give some reassurance via the inspector that um, we certainly do not wish to undermine any of the ambitions uh, that your clients have in Horsham Town Centre. Um, I think I referred to earlier, and I think we've probably passed over the point, but at a local level we work very closely um, with the Swan Centre and, and its operations. There are, is a dialogue. I'm not sure whether Nathaniel Litchfield and partners are in, directly involved in that, but there's a discussion going on at the moment about the rejuvenation of one end of uh, Swan Walk and what can be achieved there. Uh, there was mention of um, various uses that could possibly be introduced. Those are under active discussion with Horsham Council at the moment um, to make sure they're, they're happening. Um, I think you've given, you know, sort of, um, if it wasn't public knowledge before, you've given possibly a few hints that maybe the direction no, that you would at all. like that. that wasn't right, no, okay, we... thank you. Um, nevertheless, um, any, um, any vibrant, dynamic um, town centre related use that could reasonably fit into what's available uh, in the town centre, we will seek to encourage. And, the evidence is out there. Um, it's not just a question of Horsham Town Centre is, um, uh, is at the moment a vibrant and buoyant centre. I would go on to say that the, that's largely through the operation of um, effective town planning, that there are um, fashion and the council together should take some pride in what's been achieved um, in Horsham Town Centre. Um, own, we could only wish that there were more examples around the country of um, town centres that operate quite so efficiently, effectively um, for the general good of their, um, of their areas. So it, those words of reassurance, um, I hope, go some way to meeting your needs, but I'm sure you're going to come back and say, <laughs> well, let's see that you know, expressed tightly in terms of um, policy six. We're receptive to suggestions that yeah, how that I might think be achieved. Have, a, have one last say, and I think <laughs> yeah, we can, well. we'll take this away and have a think about it. I think, yeah, all right, the concerns are that the policy won't be effective. In, I, no, I don't think anyone's really saying the council, um, you know, doesn't care about the town centre and want, you know, that, that that is not in dispute. It's, it's whether this is effective in doing that, in meeting those objectives to... Uh, <laughs> retain the town centre as a healthy and viable town centre. Yeah, it, it, very much so. I think, um, you know, we weren't trying to be unhelpful by not coming up with an alternative word and we did give it some thought and we're not at all saying that no additional floor space isn't, is the only acceptable solution. We're saying we can't give you a figure, we can't understand the amount because going back to it, the work's not been done. So we can't be confident that any additional floor space is not going to have an adverse impact. And of course, I'm not saying that the council is deliberately trying to destroy the town centre at all. I'm, I very much believe that you're doing a great job in getting a very vibrant town centre. As you say, it's a very healthy centre and a good example. But this policy, perhaps despite any good intentions, as it worded, will not control that. And it will not control what type of retail or what level. And that's very much kind of a real threat. And it's not based on evidence, which we keep going back to. But that's why we fundamentally believe it's unsound. Yeah, okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm just sort of turning this over in my head. I mean, it, would it... Um, what, I'm worried about the, the NPPF does refer specifically to, to the impact test required for schemes outside of town centres. Now, this is... But also not in accordance with the development plan. I, I mean, even though um, it might be in accordance with the development plan, why, do, why couldn't you have a incorporate into um, criterion E a requirement for uh, a proper uh, viability test um, and vi vitality and viability test, impact test, for anything that generates more than two and a half thousand square metres of extra floor space and with a requirement that it should not adversely affect the current and future vitality and viability of the town centre. 
uh, the council's response to that is that's an extremely helpful um, suggestion. Um, we're happy to, uh, to proceed on that basis. Um, we'll well, I mean, I'm really just, uh, th you know, that I've just th thought of that off the top of my head, literally. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, maybe I'll want to reconsider that. But that, that would be a way of, um, so at least, Ms. Fortune, that, the, you know, the, what might happen can be monitored. Did you consider anything like that? We did. We talked about it. But our view is that should have been, that work should be done to inform an allocation because that's why you, how you allocate sites. So we're not, we're not trying to be unhelpful. We just, we, <coughs> we. Yeah, but what, well. It, it, it's, but presumably it's, you're it's not, better than you're not concerned about, um, you're not concerned about North Horsham, are you? And the 6,000 We haven't submitted any there? representation to that one, no. Was well, that because you just didn't think about it or you just thought the floor space was over such an amount and it was convenience that you wouldn't bother? It wouldn't was, bother. it's a, a number of things. We, it's the convenience to serve a local need by the new housing development. Um, we, you know, didn't feel the need to comment on that. We, we're sort of focusing yeah, but on... You, okay, and it's so not fine. Oh, I understand that. I mean, even though one of the things I've come across <laughs> in the past with retail development is the amount of comparison, you know, uh, uh, floor space that's actually within a convenience store. And I think you'll find yeah. in, in the old days, Tesco's used to be up to about 45% of comparison um, of floor space in, in a store, certainly like the Broadbridge Heath one. Be I'll go and have a look. Um, um, Sir, which can have helps. quite a significant effect on town centres. Indeed, sir, but I believe there is now case law on what might be described as ancillary. Uh, I think things have moved forward a bit. Oh, on right. this well, that's point. reassuring to know. Um, it, well, I mean, the figure 10% yeah. sticks in my mind. I don't know if you're there able being to... Conditions, um, 10 sounds about right yeah. ancillary. I'm not aware of this case well, law. Well, in terms of floor space? Um, the, well, the, the issue is around... Um, how much um, non-convenience floor space could be introduced within a superstore um, in order to do... And it, I th I'm testing my memory here, but I think it was also tied up with the issues around mezzanine floors as well. Yeah, it could have been. Um, yeah, yeah, you but might be right. I, I'm, but I'm fairly confident... I haven't done a case like that for some time, actually, going to be local plans. But I, 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 you know, I could imagine that might, be, that might be the case, but even that's difficult because you never know how much turnover you're going to generate out of a small amount of floor space. So, you know, because if you're selling high value goods, uh, TVs out of a small amount of floor space, you still have a quite a high proportion of turnover. But you, are you asking if it's 10% of value or 10% by floor space? Floor I haven't space. got the answer to that. No, no, okay. No. Anyway, but I think, um, well, uh, we'll have a think about that. If it, I think there would have to be a modification. I mean, you're seeking effectively a main modification that would have to be whether that would be a main modification. Um, it's certainly something that would have to be advertised, I would have thought. Don't know. Well, Maybe you should consider that. Can we, should we just sort yes, of... Yes, sir. Um, may I can suggest? I leave that thought yeah. with you as a way of possibly... We're entirely happy with that suggestion. We will give more thought to this. Um, possibly share um, with yeah. Ms. Fortune um, our thinking. I Please. understand your fallback position is, uh, still remains the issue that it's fundamentally flawed, but um, let's put our heads together, come up with something. Um, if we could then submit it informally to the inspector, would that be the way to do it? Uh, well, I think, no, it'd have to be a public... It would have to be formal. But so a, a for, formal... I mean, it'd have to be on the website and... Um, Absolutely. Um, well, that we'll, we'll proceed on that basis. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look at it and th I'll think about it as well, and then decide whether you know what, whether I think that's the right idea and reflection or whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, to put the point to you, I think is, I mean, I suppose your stance sort of is a bit sort of. Uh, doesn't sort of quite recognise the fact that there is quite a lot of floor space there already, I think. It, it does recognise that, but it's, it's quite heavily focused on a big Tesco store and then, bulk, you know, controlled bulky goods retailing. So, you know, it's a sort of... So they're subject to a condition, are they? Uh, um, I understand that to be the case. That's, is yeah. that right, Mr Jones? I'm fairly certain. If I'm wrong, I will advise accordingly. So it's a standard, normal... The, these are pretty um, 
goods condition? These are pretty old retail units. That's one, one of the issues. Um, the last time I looked at this, which was some time ago, um, when I was previously employed with Horsham, um, my understanding were, was that there were some um, restrictions um, relating to the type of goods that were being sold. Okay. Um, well, I think that might be useful information. Okay. To know, yeah, to know what the terms and conditions are, so that we can perhaps refine the policy. Might be a way rather than make, doing a major modification to make it a bit more effective in terms of what you say your stated objectives are, which is not to have any real impact on the. Um, vitality and viability of the town centre whilst recognising that some form of redevelopment is necessary I don't, you're not really saying to me that you're opposed to the principle of we're, we're not the, at all opposed to the principle I think we're improving what's, of there. improving what's there but what's there at the moment is a food store and a bulky goods retail warehouse and you know other sort of sports <coughs> facilities yeah. but what could be there in 10 years' time is an open A1 retail park with restaurant and cafe units and, you know, a bowling alley or a cinema and it's small scale as it is. And I think there's, that's a totally well, I've different... Well, I've got the point. Yeah, I so I think it's... You're yourself. Yeah. Really. Have you got anything else to say on this? No. Okay. Okay. This is why. Have you heard all that? Have you got any comments to add? Um, well, yes, if I may. Um, I, I just sort of make the point that um, uh, Horsham District Council on that Broadbridge Heath site are, for the bulk of the site, are the landowners and they would be the developers as well. Um, so, because um, the, uh, and also I'd ask that um, policy six includes the words that uh, to make, they need to make it compliant with their um, NPPF paragraph 74 and the core strategy policy CP14 and HDPF policy 42 um, to ensure that um, that, that redevelopable area provides for equivalent or better reprovision for the sports um, uh, aspect because um, we, you mentioned that we had a consultation on the draft Broadbridge Heath quadrant um, plan um, well the consultation actually led to people um, in the streets demonstrating etc because um, uh, we, the leisure centre there was going to be knocked down and not replaced so um, I think the council has form on um, not actually following through on what they promised they changed their mind and said they would provide a replacement leisure centre, but we are still battling, and it was in November 2011 they said they were going to knock it down. We're still battling to get a replacement that is, provides equivalent facilities to the ones that exist. So they're not squeaky clean on <laughs> sticking to their promises. Okay, Mr. Jones, have a comment on that? Um, Your mic's on, that's why I'm asking. You may or you don't have to. It's quite right. There, there is a long history to the site. Um, we are confident, as the Council, that the um, SPD approach is moving us forward uh, to achieve the, uh, the beneficial redevelopment of the site. And I understand that the Council is committed to ensure that there are leisure facilities available, although um, part of the reorganisation re, uh, of the uses um, will possibly involve um, the sports uses um, relocation. Um, yes, sir. The, um, the, the uh, running track that I mentioned earlier, there is a site for the relocation of it, which is immediately on the other side of the road, which is linked with the secondary school, so it would be within within their grounds, okay. um, but the council is fully committed to replacing the existing um, leisure facility with a, um, a facility that is um, fit for purpose, unlike the ageing building that exists at the moment. 
Um, if I can just mention, I think the um, suggestion was that um, Horsham District Council um, was the, the largest landowner or the majority landowner there. It is, um, Horsham District Council is one of a number of landowners, um, both public and private. Okay, so you're not the largest. Um, and uh, there are others involved, both private and public interests. So it's a, um, uh, hence possibly why the wording of the, uh, um, of the policy is there, because we're seeking to encourage and facilitate um, partnership working. So that's why it's to some extent more upbeat than possibly um, um, might be the case where we're dealing with a single landowner. Hmm. Okay. Anything more? Well, Mr. Moore, well I, it's just while you're revamping uh, policy six, could I ask you to, to put in that um, redevelopment of the, of the site will comply with, with the NPPF and that way we can <coughs> be assured that we will have replacement or e equivalent or better replacement of the leisure facilities. I know that's not really retail, but I, there wasn't any other way I could raise this during these hearings. Um, uh, for example, the, um, the local amateur dramatic um, group that uh, is, has been in, in existence for many, many years and has used the centre for many, many years um, is, uh, is going to be made homeless, really, because they, they, can't, they have a, a purpose-built area there in the current leisure centre, and uh, they're, they're not being provided for, uh, apart from perhaps, you know, another place which is not as convenient for them as, as the existing. Um, the, the, this is all well, historical, yeah, okay, it goes back. But with respect, just, that's not a strategic No, I know, matter, but it's, it? it just gives you a feel for how the, um, I think, um, the council can um, wriggle a bit and, uh, you know... <laughs> not come up with the goods when they should. Yeah, okay. Excuse me. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, gosh. Bless you. Um, I'm sorry, I feel I do need to come in there. That the council is working extremely hard with the um, existing oh. users, all of the existing users, to find alternative accommodation. Um, and uh, the, the, the cabinet member um, that takes responsibility for this is, um, has... Uh, has set out a group which includes uh, local users and uh, there is ongoing and uh, very productive dialogue with all of those. Okay. Mr Moore? Yeah, thank you. Uh, only two very quick things. Uh, firstly, on the Broadbridge Heath Quadrant front, um, one thing that concerns me is what, what the about redevelopment will be because the SPD on that, uh, or the draft SPD on that quadrant says, for example, that the, the, it can be used for family-orientated restaurant uses. Mm -hmm. Now, two, two things worry me there. One is restaurants are going to compete with the town centre. It has its own quadrant. And secondly, it suggests, and maybe it's, I know this is just words, that, of course, the ones in the town centre aren't family-orientated which is a nonsense, of course. The second point I'd like to make is that um, when, we talked, when we talked generally about retail and we talked about the 6,000 square feet food store um, at, uh, at North Horsham, it, it's been classed as not being a critical mass, <clears throat> if I can put it that way. In other words, it wouldn't have an adverse effect on the town centre. We're told that whatever will happen at Broadbridge Heath will not be of critical mass will not have a uh, adverse effect on the town centre. Trouble is, it's like making an atom bomb. If you take two or three things which are not a critical mass and put them together, they suddenly become critical mass. Hmm. Can't quite, never mind. <laughs> See it as quite as apocalyptic as that, actually. But um, uh, do, you, do the council want to comment on that? The, I mean, the restaurant uses are there. I mean, I think the... Can't yet, any comment? And then, I'm going to I don't, and then I'm going to close. I don't wish to add any further to, to this point. Okay, thanks. I'll have a look at all this. And um, 
the council is going to have a look at uh, the insertion of a requirement for an impact test and share that information uh, publicly. Um, I think there's, that's all been another fairly longish day. Um, that concludes everything on in, uh, economic development and retail, including retail, I think. Um, I apologise you've had to see and hear me snuffling my way through this. I hope I'll be a bit better tomorrow. But uh, thank you very much for your contributions, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, those of you that are coming. Um, nine, ten o'clock again. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs>